Okay, ladies and germs, we're live for the Yanni Beck versus Danny Dignam fight. Might stick around long enough for Benavidez versus Lemieux. As far as I'm concerned, those are both foregone conclusion fights. I don't expect any surprises, any thrills, or any spills. I believe those fights are going to go. How many of you out there expect them to go? I just took in the Joshua Buatzi versus Craig Richards fight. Entertaining card, solid little card. Um, I honestly thought that Buatzi versus Richards, I honestly thought it would end in a knockout. It didn't. I think both boys gave a good account of themselves, but I have to be honest that I don't yet see a fighter in Joshua Buatzi that I think is ready for the, for the top-level, top-shelf guys. There were too many quiet moments in that fight, far too many quiet moments where I'm thinking that Joshua Buatzi should at least be jabbing. You know, you don't have to set up power shots. You don't have to take very many risks and very many chances. But there were a lot of moments where I felt that he should, at minimum, he should be jabbing at least because, you know, in those quiet moments, that's what allows Craig Richards to get back into the fight or that's what allows him to amass a sense of confidence and a sense of safety that he can start mounting offense of his own. Um, I don't know that we get Bivol versus Buatzi next. I, I don't know. Uh, but if that is next, I said it on Twitter, if if they end up putting Buatzi in there with Bivol and Canelo goes with Golovkin, Buatzi goes with Bivol, give me Callum Smith versus Craig Richards. It, you know, if he doesn't get Matthew Bowderly, that French Olympian, because there's already talks that he might fight that guy in a WBC final eliminator <clears throat> so that he could fight for um, the green belt, whoever ends up with it. Yeah, Scottney was class, man. Scottney was class. Like, a lot of people had doubts, but I said she's going to boss it. Like, she's, if she was able to deal with Gangloff and Guanini, who are faster than uh, Maria Cecilia Roman, I wasn't surprised. You know what I mean? Like, I wasn't surprised. Like, if you can handle Guanini, that's very good preparation for somebody like Roman. That's very good experience to go into that fight with because they're both going to try to pressure you. And, and if anything, Maria wasn't even as aggressive as I thought she would be. Ellie was more aggressive than I thought she would be. So that was really fun. And I'll just save the rest of that for the weekend recap. Uh, the Bobbage fight was nuts, man. And I say it all the time. It's a guilty pleasure because what makes his fights entertaining is that he can be caught. You can see that, that like he not a blue chip prospect or an Olympian with the best jab or the best feed. And it, you know what I mean? He ain't one of those. But what he is is a fun fighter to watch that he's going to put on an entertaining fight, regardless of whatever he's going to put on an entertaining fight. Was Goody David? Was Goody Emma Tim? LT Mark David Grace in the building. You know what I mean? Presto Uno. Ay. El Potts. Ay. Suave. Ay. You know what I'm saying? And it'd be like that. Come in the building. Come in the building. It was a good card, but like I said, I don't see a fighter in Buatzi that I think goes all the way. Or at least I don't see a fighter that um that I think right here and right now. You know, it, it all depends on who you ask because I've heard some uh, interesting perspectives, but I think he needs a few more fights if I'm being honest. Some people are going to say you can't coddle him and you can't babysit him. And I get that. But if the idea is to groom him so that he's ready for those fights, those big fights, those title fights, I'm being honest. I don't see a guy that beats Bevo. I don't. I don't. Now um, I'm gonna open the channel to the I'm gonna open the chat to the panel. Let y'all in on this conversation. We got Adam Lopez versus William Encarnacion on the top rank card. To my knowledge, the um the Showtime card hasn't started yet. That's not going to start till later. I want to get everybody's thoughts on uh, Joshua Buatzi versus Craig Richards. It was a good fight, though. Don't get me wrong. It was competitive. I liked it. I enjoyed it. It was very tense. But if you ask me outright, do I think he has what it takes to beat Dimitri? No. He has power. Good jab. Doesn't shoot it enough for me. That's that's my thing. That's that's a big hang up for me that he's not busy enough with the lead hand. Even if you're not trying to bring over the backhand and even if you're not trying to like, you know, set up something else, at least jab and faint, do something. There was too many moments where he's just kind of standing there pacing and he's not doing anything. So it's like, bro, you can't 
at that upper echelon top shelf level, you can't have quiet moments with those guys. You got to be, you know, you got to be doing something. I right, was goody country, was goody Napoli. Gentlemen, y'all know the rule of engagement one at a time. Let each other talk and don't cut each other off. Uh, so what you thought about the uh, Buatzi versus uh, Richards fight, uh, country? Okay. Uh, I'm gonna go to Napoli. Okay, I'm gonna go to Napoli. Napoli, what do you think about that fight? Very competitive, as I thought. You know, as I thought it was gonna be, as as I anticipated. It was a 50 50 fight. Um, I would, my based on a gut feeling, I thought I was picking Richards for the upset because, as you know, he's seen in uh, Buatzi's recent fights, he doesn't move his head much and he gasses out towards the end, mm -hmm. and. Um, Craig Richards always has a very good gas tank, like very good conditioning. And I thought like, you know, as the, the fight wore on that Craig Richards was going to, um, wear out Buatzi and outpoint him, but great fight. Nonetheless, it was mm -hmm. awesome. Mm -hmm. All right, let me go to William. Well, what'd you think about that fight? I thought it was really good. Honestly, like he was saying, very competitive. Um, I noticed that Buatzi was getting hit by some interesting angles throughout the fight, but honestly, he was dominant from start to finish, just in my opinion. I'll say um, he was done for me. Uh, he was dominant for the first seven, honestly. I probably only, and it was a swing round, and it was the beginning. It was literally the first round where literally, you know, nothing really happened. So it's like, well, if you wanted to give Craig that round, you actually could because Buatzi didn't do a lot in that round, but neither did Craig. So I'll say... The first seven rounds, all seven of them, if you gave him the Buatzi, I wouldn't argue with you. The eighth, Craig had a really strong round. And that's when you start – that's really when I started to see, okay, Craig is separating himself more. He's being a little busier, you know what I mean? He's pouring it on a little bit. But I said it um, in a prediction video that the bane of Craig Richards is he don't start fast enough. He He's like a daisical at the start. And it's like, well, you – who Mike is that? Uh, 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 you he too lackadaisical at the start, and you need them rounds, bro, because those is the rounds that'll save your ass if it go twelve. So and and you know, like for me, it wasn't it wasn't like it was hard to score. Like I'm like, nah, Buatzi winning this either nine three or eight four. He's winning this fight. He's winning this fight. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna start from the bottom to the top. Well, do you see a guy that's ready for Bevo? Absolutely not. I mean, the b ball that I saw when he fought Canelo Alvarez was almost pitch perfect with his defense, his footwork, his range. I mean, I, I don't really see really too many people actually beating b ball as he is right now. I think he's in the prime of his career. Yo, Adam Lopez is – ooh! Oh, that was a slip. That was a slip. Adam Lopez, he got, a, he got his hands full tonight, and Carnacion is not playing. Um, uh, let me go to Nap Napoli. Napoli, do you see a guy in Joshua Buatzi that you think is ready here and now based on that performance for Dimitri Bivol? No, absolutely mm. not. Nope. Mm. Mm. It's too much for me. It's the quiet for me. It was too many quiet moments that I'm like, look, maybe you can afford to do that with Craig because Craig is, you know, he's characteristically tentative. He's not a gunslinger. He's not a salvo go for the gusto guy. <laughs> But with mm -hmm. them other guys at 175, they're not going to let you just stand there and not do nothing. Artur not going to let you do that. Dimitri, yeah. Zerto, not, Zerto, not even Zerto going to let you do that. Zerto is not going to let you do that. Yeah, yeah um, and Dimitri is just too fluid. He is just, you know, like he's he's so disciplined, it's not even funny. You can't even draw bait him into like a slugfest or, or whatever. Canelo tried that shit, <laughs> you know? <laughs> Yeah. I mean, I, I don't I don't really see. Um, And I don't you know, because he's not young. This is the funny part or the, the I guess the precarious part is, you know, Joshua Boatz, he's not young. He turned pro six years ago. There's a lot mm -hmm. of people that feel he should be further along than what he is based on his amateur pedigree. But I'm like, yo, look, I just I don't see a guy that beats Zerto. I'm being real. And y'all yeah, know I'm not a fan of Zerto, but. I don't see a guy to beat Zerto. I don't see a guy to beat Stamina. I don't. I think he need more fights. We need to know that he could beat a Callum Smith. 
before you know if he can actually be the Bevo, you're like, yeah, you need to fight a former champion. You haven't fought one of those yet. Whether it's a guy from 168 or 175, you haven't fought one of those yet. Why don't you get Joshua Buatzi, Sergey Kovalev? Well, no, nah, no, nah, he's not going to come down. He's not going to come down. No, nah, yeah, yeah, he's a cruiser. And and, and where was uh, Pascal's fight last night? Was That a, that was a light heavyweight contest, right? The fight he had last night. Oh, I don't know about Pascal. Let I don't even see. know about Pascal's uh, fight. Yeah, what was that on? Bro, that was on a that was on a, a website called um Pro Box. And from what I'm told, literally every fight on the card was very entertaining. Now I'm I'm mad that I didn't get it because I was thinking about getting it. But um Man, no wonder why I, I never knew about Pascal fighting because it, it was, was on an app that I don't even know about. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's some new, it, yeah, it's some new app that, that Paulie Malinaji, Roy Jones, Antonio Tava. There's some new app that they, yeah, that was a light heavyweight contest. Okay, so here's the thing. Here's the thing. You know, last night, Jean Pascal, in what was said to be a very entertaining fight, uh, he took on unbeaten Fan Long Meng of China in what was an IBF eliminator. And he he won the fight. So I'm like, look, Joshua Buatzi, if if y'all really trying to do this right, you could put him in the title fight straight away if Dimitri's receptive and Canelo fights Golov. You know, you can do it. But I'm just saying it now. If you put him in that fight, he's gonna lose that fight. I, I'm being real. Like I don't see it. I don't see it. Like I don't see a dude that you don't got nothing for Dimitri. You don't. You don't. Yeah, Pascal yeah. will be a good litmus test for Buatzi. You but, and, it's, and it's a common opponent between. It would be a common opponent, I should say, between him and Dimitri. It's kind of like, look, I'm not critical of. Buatzi for those, you know, I don't want anybody to misinterpret it. I'm not critical of Buatzi. I'm just saying that uh, it's not really there. Balotnik and Richards, those are the best guys you fought. Balotnik and Richards. Is that so I, yeah, I'll tell you, I'll tell you this. Had he taken on, um, had Buatzi gone on with the Maxime Vlasov fight, I think Vlasov would have won. Yeah. In my, in my opinion. Yeah, that, that's what I was thinking. That, like, yo, I don't know why y'all putting him in there with that guy. That guy it's like, I'm not trying to say that he not, like he's a good fighter. He's exciting. I always watch his fight. So obviously he's a good fighter. But I'm saying that for the guy that y'all lining him up for, y'all lining him up for Dimitri, right? All right. Um, he not he he, he not winning that fight. Right. He, he like not. Let me Did read the let me read the super chats and I'll pass it to you. Will Callum Smith smokes Buatzi. He looks better at one. Ooh, hot takes, hot takes. Joe Lazizi says Buatzi is who he is. If you don't think he can win, fine. But truth is, he is as ready as he can be. This is how he's going to fight. Give him the fight. That's a, that's a good take. That's a good take. That If he ain't ready now, he, he ain't going to be ready oh, later. Yeah. Especially, Callum, especially Callum Smith. The way he, spark, he took out Lennon Castillo, I could see him taking out Buachi. It could happen. Bro, I could see him taking out Craig Richards. Yeah. Uh, his torso... The thing I always notice about Craig, right? It's like it's like snapshots almost in the middle of the fight. You come back to the center, that torso is real static. You right there. If he yeah. hits you the way he hit Lennon, you going out, fam. You going yeah. out. Yeah. And and Callum Smith will make a huge statement and it will put the rest of the one seventy five on notice. That'll be a statement because <laughs> one, Watsi ain't knock him out. Two. B-Ball ain't knock him out. So if Callum can knock him out, yeah, that's a statement, fam. That's yes. a statement. Well, I, want to, I want to see Smith uh, put in against Vlasov. If he could do that to Len- the way he did Lennon Castillo, oh, my God, man. I even go front. <laughs> I even go front. That's a good-ass fight, but I don't see nobody just – I don't see nobody just deciding, yeah, we just going to fight Vlasov. Vlasov, with that Joe Smith Jr. fight, he put mm-hmm. himself in a situation where yo, he going to have to force one of y'all to fight him because y'all see a tricky motherfucker. Y'all see a big motherfucker. You know what I mean? Like, ain't nobody wanna, ain't nobody just going to want to have to work that hard unless they have to. So yeah. I could, as fans, of course, I could go for the fight. But I don't see McGirt and them and, yeah, let's go fight Vlad. So, like, nah, fam. Mm-mm. I do it, that it, when we could fight just too tricky. Just too tricky. Yep. Way too tricky. <laughs> yeah, Adam Lopez getting Adam Lopez getting he got he got a long night in front of him. Um yeah, yo, I was goody coach. 
Yo, I shoot you the link, Coach. You tell me what you think, man. Tell me what you think about um Buazzi and Craig Riches. Just watch the fight. It was a great fight. It lived up to my expectations as far as entertainment value. But like I said, you know, I'm not for the coddling. I can only tell you what I think. And I do not see a guy that is ready for Dimitri Bivol, Zerto Ramirez, and I find myself questioning if he's ready for Callum. Because it's like, you not, it's too many quiet moments where he's sitting there in that guard and not enough is happening. Well, do you think that he would be able to control the distance or at least get past the guard of B-ball? Like, do you no. think that he would have He doesn't jab enough. He doesn't right. jab enough. He doesn't jab enough. He doesn't. It's like he want to fight in bursts. He wants to set up a counter. Like, he's looking to hit you with a counter shot, and then he going to explode on you. You can't do that with all these guys. Like, you just did that with Craig. And Craig, because he's tentative and tense, he, you could get away with that with him. You can't get away with that with a busy lead hand like B-Ball's lead hand. And I don't – really, I'm wondering – Yo, I don't know if you could get away with that with Callum neither, being real with you. Like, nah. No, nah, no, nah, he's too like, – Callum is too devastating of a puncher. He won't get it's, away it's with not it. Even, it's not even the right hand. It's that, look, if you go back and you watch the George Groves fight, for example, that was a fight where the man opposite the ring of Callum was very mm. busy. He's moving around a lot. He's trying to hit him to the body. And Callum not just standing there stuck like a statue. So it's like, bro – if you just, I, I seen whole moments where, where, where Joshua was just standing there in that guard, mid up or whatever, and you're not really doing nothing. You're not jabbing, you're not doing nothing. Mm. I don't know, man. I don't know. Uh, let me go to Mark 37. Mark 37, do you like uh, Joshua Buatzi's chances against B, uh, against Dimitri Bivol? No, definitely not at the moment. He needs two, maybe three more fights. Mm -hmm. I agree with that. Okay. Yeah, I, I'll go as far as saying, yeah, two to three, to be honest. If the yeah. goal is winning, yes. Go ahead, Mark. Tell me why. Oh, I, thought, I think he, lead, he needs at least two or, two or three more real real challenges. You like to say a, a Callum Smith or – but to be honest, I think Callum Smith is a bridge too far. I think Callum mm -hmm. Smith beats him and beats him well. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. <laughs> I honestly believe Callum Smith beats all the light heavyweight champions apart from Bevo. I think he's that good at 175. I'll say, look, I'll say this, right? Um, a fight that I wish that would get made that probably won't, you know, because it's a great fight. The uh, uh, Callum Smith, Zerto Ramirez, both are former champions in the super middleweight division. The straight punches of Callum Smith versus the southpaw, Inside hooks of Zerto Ramirez, it's a great fight. And I'm telling you right now, I don't know that Joshua Buatzi would make it past those guys, especially not Zerto, who's very busy. He throws a lot, bro. Like the whole fight, he's yeah. going to spend that whole round throwing punches. And you can't just sit there and take it. Like the, the, I think the saving grace for Joshua Buatzi in this fight is that Craig is not a prolific puncher. He's not trying to hit you all the time. He – Going to pace yeah. himself and look for something. Some of these cats at 175, they going to try to fight you the whole round, fam. Zerto is one of them. And mm -hmm. if you can't really make it past the Zerto's of the world or the Callum Smith's of the world. How are you going to be ready for the better beeves and the Smith's and, and the Beavles of the yeah. world? Yeah. Yeah. What's, what's, your, what's your take on the way that Eddie's handling Callum at 175? Do you think it's Eddie holding him back, or do you think Callum's down only won a title shot and nothing else? I don't think you, – you know, I, I was about to get real critical. Before I pass it to the coach, I was going to get real critical of Eddie Hearn because I'm like, yo, dog, let me knock that dude out months ago. What the fuck is going on? But now I'm thinking it's Callum. Callum likely only want to fight for certain – I'm trying to just reconcile, yo, why are you so sparsely active, fam? Other, other light heavyweights like Zerto, they have fit in two fights – since your last fight. So what is yeah. going on with you? And I'm kind of thinking maybe it's maybe it's Callum that he wants certain amounts of money. So we got to get him on certain shows. Like I'm hearing he going to be on the Joshua versus Yusuf uh, rematch. So I'm like, all right, then maybe it's the money that you want to be on. the. You think he's used to the brand now? He's, he's, at, he's at the uh, Canelo fight and he's at the Super, you know, the super Series fight. And he's like, oh, I ain't dropping back down to that level sort of thing, yeah? 
Mm-hmm. Now I'm gonna I'm go to the coach. I want to go to the coach. All right, Nathan got a Nathan situation as well. And coach, uh, yeah. <laughs> he, like I don't like he just repeat like I don't know what you got going on, coach. You just saw uh Buatzi versus <clears throat> Richards. Give me your take on the fight, and then tell me if you think that Buatzi is actually ready to be fighting for a title. I'm gonna be honest with you, man. I like I like I like Watsi a lot. Um, but um just me being honest and objective, I, I you know, I don't think he's ready, you know, for the top guys. I'm just being honest with you, man. I don't you know, I, I, as you said, and you said he's fighting in spurts and he's waiting to waiting to counter and you know, look nice with it and pretty and stuff like that. And when you're fighting someone who's gonna constantly just not gonna give you an opportunity to do that. To try to take rest and breaks because that's what it seemed like he was doing. Like, he'll throw a little flurry, get a little rest, and stuff like that. I mean, when you're fighting those top guys, it's not going to do that, you know what I mean? It's not going to have the liberty to do that. So, he's not ready. Like, when you, I, I definitely won't pick him against Bivol, you, know, mm. you know, he won't he won't win that, but I definitely won't pick him against uh, what's what's the brother name from from um, Zerto, not Zerto, yeah, who was that one? No, 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 no. What's the, um, the unified light, light heavyweight champion? Oh, better be up. Crazy. Yeah, 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 yeah. But that's what I mean. I'm yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I'm watching the fight. Now, remember, bear in mind, because I think we, I, you know, I almost forgot that Buatzi hurt Richards in round one. So yeah. you, you found out in round one, if I touch him, I could hurt him. Right. And you really ain't. You still fighting in bursts. You still fighting in spurts. Like you looking to set up a counter, and then you gonna come after him. But the whole time you just it's real quiet. You're not jabbing that much either. Which I, I don't care if he didn't want to go for the knockout straight away. My thing is, yo, you really not jabbing enough. Like right. you do that with Craig, fam. You can't do that with Zerto. Just sitting there pacing, looking like nah, Zerto. If, if you if you don't put nothing out there. To, to keep the other guy off. Yeah, you get away with that shit with Craig. Not nobody else at this division. Not Vlasov, not Zerto, not Artur, not really not even Joe, because if you're not going to punch, guess what? He will. So you got to do it. Yeah, you're right about that. Um, Joe Smith Jr., yeah, he definitely won't be able to do that. So it's like, I, he, I'm, I'm going to be honest with you, uh, Jules. I know you probably... You know, for what I saw, I, I think he, I, I just, I don't think he's ready. He, he, he needs some more fights. Maybe two more. Maybe, yeah. let's see what he looks like in his next fight. Matchmaking is going to be key. <laughs> you, yeah. know, hey, you know, matchmaking is everything in boxing. So, it is. Uh, who, you, who, who, who do you want to match him up with next that, that, would, that would, would satisfy you? Bro, what you, would you satisfy what me, honest, honest to God, is he literally has not fought a former champion of any kind. And that's a part of the process. We see it all the time in the process that like, yeah, you need to fight a former champion or a solid journeyman. Now we could say, and I don't even want to call Craig a journeyman because what I saw was a contender. Like, no, Craig is a contender, not a journeyman. Mm-hmm. And yeah, there's mm-hmm. a difference. I want to see him in there. The, the fight that make the most sense to me, Joshua Buatzi, Callum Smith. That's what makes sense because you don't have access to all that many former champions. So you got to try to manage a situation to where it's a financially viable fight where both guys stand to make money to justify the risk, but there has to be enough risk that you can learn from it. Because so far, the most solid people that you fought was Balotnik mm-hmm. and Craig. That's that, mm-hmm. that, 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 that ain't it, fam. Like, nah, you gonna need more than that. This yeah. is like heavyweight. Hey, hey, Jules, so what, what does he – I, I just want to say one more thing. So what do you feel he needs to work on? Like, we saw him fighting in spots and spurts tonight. And you know for a fact, if he was – let's say he was in, a, in another – in someone else's backyard and trying to take their belt. Mm-hmm. Well, with a performance like that, you he, he don't have to worry about winning on the scorecards, fighting in someone else's backyard. You know, like, like what, what – like – what what so what 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 does he need to work on? Is it his stamina Vari- or variations of the jab? That look, if he, I don't know if he has a gas tank issue, but my spider sense tells me that he does. Mm-hmm. You know, like like you 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 run out of steam off a of salvo a little bit too fast for me. Like like all right, you threw a lot, of, and I dig that. Yeah, you threw a lot of punches, so yeah, you gonna punch yourself out a little bit. You look like vulnerable after the salvo. So okay, 
You probably ain't got the best gas tank. I don't know what you can do to work on that, but at least be busier with the lead hand. Different variations of the lead hand and faint more. That if you're not going to set up power shots and you're not trying to throw power shots and you're trying to pace yourself, okay, keep that lead hand busy. Just pop them with it. Like, like you know, the shit Loma do. Some jabs is hard jabs. Some jabs ain't. Sometimes I'm just touching you with the lead hand. I'm not even putting it out there, pushing out a jab. Just touching them, touch them. Because this shit was driving me crazy. Like, bro, you really just going to stand here? Just going to stand? And, and it's, it's it ain't just this fight. He does, yeah. I see, And I'm like, y'all, you, you can't. At the upper, you can't do that. They not going to let you get away with it. You know what yeah, I mean? He doesn't, he doesn't move his head much. He doesn't. And if anything, and, change, change levels, too. To like, if your whole thing is because I suspect that the reason that he does that is maybe they know he don't got a good gas tank. I don't know. But he he not – to me, it's like, you're not throwing enough. It can't just be in bursts, first off. Everybody's mm -hmm. not going to wait for you to explode. With Craig, you got a tentative fighter that is not known for activity, so you can do that with him. But all them guys up there, they throw, and they throw a lot. Zerto throw yeah. a lot. Artur throw a lot. Dimitri does what I'm talking about, that you ain't got to – it ain't got to be a stiff jab or a step, a step jab. It, it, you just touch him, though, at least with the, with the damn hand. Touch him. Just put it out there. Do something with that hand. Faint the right. Do something. But don't do this. And I'm going to just stand here. I'm going to just do this. And do it like, nah, fam. You, 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 yeah. too, you, you know what, man? Uh, that, that drives me crazy. Because to me, that, that seems like a very lazy way of boxing. Yeah. You, it's I'm a minimalist just, approach. You see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Adam mm -hmm. Lopez is getting beat like a fucking drum. Um, let me go. Let me go to country. Country as quickly as you can. Tell me what you thought about the fight, and do you think that Joshua Boazzi is actually ready to be fighting for a belt? I agree. <laughs> Makes sense. Makes sense. Leo, same question. That's a stout observation, Leo. I have to agree with that. It makes oh, Julius. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so you saw no, the no, no, fight. You saw no, the no, no, fight. I, I didn't saw the fight. I didn't saw the fight. That's oh, you didn't see the. Oh shit! Well then, shit. Well, yeah. What, what happened? Uh, yeah, what? Uh, no, no, look, uh, Joshua Buatzi won the fight. I picked him to win the fight, so the prediction stuck. I picked him to win the fight, but what I didn't like is that there were too many quiet moments, and the thing is, if you found out in the first round that you can hurt the guy, you found that out early, right? At least build upon a knockout. What I saw Buatzi do was kind of like, yo, you just waiting to set up a counter, and Unless you doing that, you're not doing much else. Like, yo, jab more, bro. You got a great – like, he has a great fucking jab, by the way. He really yeah, does. He but does. You don't use it enough for me. That's that's my thing. You don't use it enough for me. So. Yeah. Okay, Ju Julius, can I say something? Good. Uh, I know this is late, and I didn't watch the fight. But mm. I just want to share what I am feeling about what. Okay. I think – even before this fight, after watching fight, uh, what's it with Bologna? Bologna? Bologna. Mm -hmm. Okay, after watching that fight, what's is a little bit overrated. I don't think it's about his talent, he's talented, but the wing IQ, I don't think it's there. Mm -hmm. maybe, maybe it's because he's early in his career. But I don't think he's that smart. You can compare him with other guys, like I don't know, like a Dimitri Bivol, for example. Like Bivol, yeah. Yeah, I don't think he's that smart of a fighter. Like people like give him too much credit. I think. Mm. You know what's the you know what the ideal fight is, Leo? Uh, Buatzi Yard. It won't happen. That's the problem. It won't happen. But that's the ideal fight. That's the yeah. fight. You need to either be fighting former champions or guys that have challenged for world titles. Now, you just fought one guy that challenged for a world title. You know, you just fought one guy, but you need more guys like that. 
You do. Yeah. Like, if you going to be ready for a B-Vol, if that's the goal, getting you ready for that, like, his whole thing is like, I'm trying to hit you with a punch you don't see. Okay, but what's happening in between that time, though? Like, what are you doing? You not you don't jab and and I'm real big on the jab. I love a good jab. What's the most punch fuck punch in boxing? If yeah. you not you and you not jabbing is like yo that shit was driving me nuts in that fight. Yeah. You know, yo, 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 yo Jules. But this is why like this is what I mean. It's like I I would say to Josh Buatzi, I'm like, if you I'd be like Josh, if you really think that you're that good and you're ready for B ball, fight Maxine Blast off first. That's a lit. That's the nah, nah. litmus test. That's the litmus test of all litmus tests. <laughs> I, look, being real, I would not put him in there with Maxim Vlasov because it's like, all right, what am I gonna risk my O with Vlasov? If I'm down to risk my O, I might as well fight B4. Now, if I'm mm-hmm. building, you see, in other words, fighting Vlasov, you're not building because Vlasov never even fought B4. So, what I'm gonna put you in there with him for? I ain't gonna do that. Now, I will put you in there with a Callum Smith because, well, they did fight in the amateurs. But more importantly, Callum Smith is a former champion. He know what it what it's like to be up there to have that belt. So I'm like, all right. And, and two, even though Callum's real big, he's still making his bones as a light heavyweight. So it's like yeah. there's room in there for that to be competitive. And two, it'll do good business. Like it's both two UK guys. So it'll do good business. Right. Right. So. Vlasov makes no sense for 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 Buats. being real. It don't make no sense. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And yeah, with, with uh, Callum Smith, he got Buddy McGirt. So the you know Buddy McGirt has always uh, trained. You know, has always been a phenomenal trainer. Let me go to. Let me go to. I want to go to Willie. Then I want to go to Coach Willie. Do you think Joshua Buatsi at least has enough that he could beat Anthony Yard? Um. No, I don't think so, honestly. I mean, yeah. <laughs> you, can, you, can, you, can, you can say that it's, you know, it's a little rough to say that, but, I mean, I'm just being for real. Yeah, you do good in spurts. You are a pretty decent counter puncher, but is that all you have? Like, that's pretty much all that you, you saw what I saw, that he was, he was able to get inside, land the scoring shots, but he wasn't in there to deliver the killing shot. So, mm. and. Yeah. And I wanted to make a quick point about B-ball one more, thing, one more time. So, in my opinion, I think the worst matchup you can make is a counterpuncher versus a boxer. I mean, think yeah. about it. Yeah, I mean, think about it in the extreme sense, like a Wilder versus Frankie Sanchez. I mean, you're not going to get much action all throughout that fight. And, all, and if all that dude's looking for is a knockout, I mean, what, what else can you expect? You know what I mean? No, no, I agree with you because uh, – um, you you took the words right out of my mouth. If Buatzi's looking for a counter punch and you put him in there with a defensively responsible fighter, you know what happens? He never gets to land the count. He never throws the counter. Why? Because the dude's responsible. He not gonna yeah. leave, he not gonna throw no dumb shit out there for you to counter. So you gonna get beat or you gonna get knocked out. But you it's it's pretty much the same thing. Coach <clears throat> is Joshua Buatzi at least in a place where you would feel confident that he could beat Anthony Yard? Oh, damn, that's a tough one. Anthony Yard. Uh, n- ah. See, now you're twisting my arm now. <laughs> <laughs> Real shit. I, I, I'm trying to, I'm try, you, you see what I'm saying? I'm like, okay, damn. Oh, Maybe, uh, you know what? He's not busy enough, man. And, you know, he, if, if, if he was probably busy enough, Maybe, but I think I'm, I'm gonna say no because Anthony Yard was in there with Kovalev. Yeah, and he gave Kovalev all the hell he wanted until he just got tired, and uh, yeah. Kovalev dropped, stopped him with a jab because he, you know, he shot his load. You no know, pause. Uh, he gave him everything he had had um, in the round before, trying to knock Kovalev out. So I just think that you know because Yard been in there with tougher competition, um, I think he, I think Yard would have a little bit more bite down. That's what I'm looking for. Why is he, uh, the bike down, like, he, you know, he's going to have to be in a tough fight to where he's going to have to dig deep. And I just think that Yard has that advantage on, on, on him on, on with that. So I would say, no, he's not ready for Yard right now. All right, I'm going to go. I'm going to go to Leo. Then I'm going to go to JBN. Leo, do you at least think that Buatsi can beat Yard? Yeah, but like in the in this year, in the next year, no. But see, if he's going to do that, he needs a, a lot of work. 
like a lot. Some hot takes tonight. JBN, did you see the fight? Hey, what's up, man? I, I got a, I got a phone call before you ask the question. What was the question again? Uh, did you see the fight? Did you see Buatzi versus Richards? Nah, man, I didn't get to see it. I had too many clients, so I wasn't able to watch it on the zone. Who won? Uh, Buatzi won. The prediction stuck. Buatzi won the fight, but it's like, you know what's weird? I got the dude winning eight four to nine three. Like I had him winning. Like you winning, but it's like I'm underwhelmed. Is what I'm. That's, I'm so underwhelmed. He didn't dominate. He won, but he didn't dominate. No, it's it's like you know how. In other words, esta la cuestión. Un tipo gana ocho asalto o nueve asalto, verdad? So on paper, it's like, well, yeah, you know, that's kind of dominant. It's, you know, 7-5 is arguable. Or, you know, like if it was 7-5, I could see, but no, we're talking about 8-4-9-3. Pero yo veo mucha vaina que no me gusta. Like, I see a lot of things. I'm like, look, you could do that with this guy in this fight. You can, That shit, you need you need, o, need step up. Más o menos como Devin Haney, Jojo Diaz, like that kind of win. Or no, because I, I'm, I'm at least confident. I must know because this the, with Devin, I'm confident. Like Devin, Devin has the IQ and the ring savvy that I think. Like I don't think Buatzi has Devin's ring savvy. Like nah, you not like I don't even view you as being as responsible as Devin. So I can't even say that. So it's I like he at world level now. You think he can bang no, with better being than them guys? No, no, no. I don't see him beating Zerto. I don't know. No. Not even Zerto? No. Hey, boy. You kill him. You'll kill him. You'll kill him. You kill bro, you don't no kill him, bro. No mire la pelea, pero tú le sirve eso, bro. I'm questioning him. I need to watch the fight, but I'm questioning him. Questioning him. So, so a lot of people think of Anthony Yard is an iffy fight for Joshua Buatzi. And I, at least to me, what that heralds is that dude needs more fights, bro. That is a dude that needs more fights. Now, how about, Bu how about Buwati against Marcus Brown? More winnable. Definitely more winnable. His out in that fight is that he has a very good looping right hand, and Marcus Brown is a southpaw. He's an Olympian like Joshua Buwati's an Olympian. Yeah. And his fight makes sense. Probably. Who Mike is that? Who Mike is all out? Probably well, mine, I'm not quite sure right now. Probably mine. Let me, let me, let me. I, um, um, I would say Marcus Brown is that. I, I would go that direction. I would, yeah. Give him Brown because Brown is an Olympian. Brown has fought people. He fought Pascal. He fought Badu Jack. He might be coming off a loss to uh, or to a better beat, but he did challenge for a title. So to me, Marcus Brown makes sense. Is it a slippery slope? Yeah, but it's a slippery slope also because I'm not really. I don't see a champion being real. I don't I don't see one. And I can usually tell early on if a guy got the tools and the ceiling to win a belt. Joshua yeah. got me I don't know, fam. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's surrounded by killers. Yo, like like today's light heavyweight scene, it's just like how it was in the late seventies, early eighties. Cause you got a stacked division full of fucking killers. Mm. Mm. Um, back then you had you had Michael Spinks, Matthew Saad, Muhammad, Yaki Lopez. I could go on and on. Right now you got Better Be even Joe Smith Jr. All them they're punchers, just like those guys were back in the seventies and eighties. Yeah, I mean, I, I, like I said, he gonna have to show a lot of different things because if if it's a gas tank issue or if it's a, a, a and he looks vulnerable too. That's the other thing. I'm being real. I, I don't know who said it, but somebody said it that they think he's chinny. I see it like, yeah, like he don't mm. look like he take the best punch. Like he's never been dropped. Uh, to my knowledge, he's never been dropped. But it's like, well, who is he for it that, you know, that that's supposed to mean something? I'm like, I just see how he react when he do get hit. And I don't really like it. I, that's what I'm going to say. Like, maybe I'm being critical and I'm usually I'm more forgiving of Buatzi, but I was expecting to see I was expecting to see him separate himself from a domestic level guy. And wholeheartedly, I don't feel like he really, really put a stick. He, he won the fight. So in that way, yeah, you did, but you don't got style points. You yeah. Style like if, if you were to fight, if you were to fight Callum Smith, I have a feeling that Smith will blow him out in like five rounds. Possibly. I, I think that's a fight that needs to happen. 
I'm a I'm a um I'm a switch gears now. I'm a I'm a change the subject. Uh, they gave Wilder an erection in Tuscaloosa, Alabama. They erected <laughs> a statue in his name. I'm a go to the coach. Coach, just using your Capricornian instincts and your psychic power, do you get the sense that Wilder will make a comeback? <laughs> That'll be out of it. <laughs> they gave an erection. They erected a statue, bro. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, man. Um, I, I I think those two fights from out of from that he had with Tyson Fury took something out of him, bro. Bro, just just from a psychological standpoint, I'm gonna just use my psychic powers, and I'm I don't think he will come back. Like, bro, this this from a psychological standpoint, this guy. Created a whole shit storm on social media. He and he created a he he radicalized an entire uh, group on social media to push a narrative that was a lie. Mm -hmm. And it came mm -hmm. from a guy who I'm from very, very familiar with from the conscious community that pseudo as hell. And they took what he said and ran with it, and Wilder embodied it. And and you know this what happened and yada yada after you got after you got got the brakes beat off you in the, in, the, in the second fight and then when the third fight it showed that hey man this dude is beating you from pillar to post like he did in the first well you know it was a little bit more competitive but for the most part he's you know the, the end result was it was a devastating knockout mm -hmm. and all the stuff you said leading up to that that knockout if it didn't do anything else. It, it, it shut down your whole community. They couldn't say that the water this and the referee that and the judge this. It's like, no, man, no. It is what it is. So you got to live with these lies that you know you told. You know you mm. told it. You fired a guy who you knew what, he was not the reason why you lost. You fired this guy. You lied on him. Mm -hmm. You just made up a lie. Use him as a scapegoat. You know what I mean? You shit on his good name. And, 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 and you know this guy was getting death threats. <laughs> I'm dead serious. I talked. I spoke with his son, and um, now you got to come back and fight who? Face? No, nah, no. Nah, he's done. He's done, man. He's done. He's done. He made a lot of money. He's done. Because there's been a lot of talk. Uh, I feel like World Boxing News is almost a Wilder propaganda article or a news source because they print out articles almost every other week attaching Wilder's name to other fighters. Like they mentioned Wilder versus Frankie Sanchez in one article, I believe it was. I think they mentioned his name with Frankie's. And I'm like, bro, what in God's green earth makes you think that Wilder, just because the WBC might have them in their ranks, they would never put Wilder in there with Frankie Sanchez as a comeback fight. Are you kidding me? And is Wilder himself even talking about coming back? Is he? Because Last we heard, he was supposed to drink some tea with some drugs in it, and that was the news, fam. That was the news. So I don't, I don't even know. Like it looked to me, like if I gotta look. In other words, I gotta look behind Wilder. Besides Wilder and Joe Joyce and Joseph Parker, who are also ranked highly in the WBC, you have Andy Ruiz. And I'm like, look, if they can't put that title in Wilder's hands, and Fury does end up retiring and sailing off into the sunset. Maybe it goes to Andy Ruiz. Maybe. Or the winner of Ruiz versus Ortiz. And and it, it, I'll tell you what. If Ortiz beats Ruiz, oh, my God. The division is <laughs> fucked. It's fucked. <laughs> yes. you, you can't sell Luis Ortiz, fam. I, I mean, Jules, this guy hasn't won a fight since 2019. Bro. Bro. Hey, Jules, Jules, look no, at no, wait, who we, wait, wait, wait. Who we took? No, no. Who we took? Nah, 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 nah. In fairness. Ortiz beat Charles Martin in that shit show. No, Bro. no, no, no. I'm talking about Wilder. Oh, oh. <laughs> so uh, I'm saying they're, they're trying to resurrect him. You know what I mean? They're trying to rise him from the. They're trying to resurrect him and, and have him, you know, rise him from the grave. It's over, man. Like it's over. That six foot nine giant. He put a stamp on that, like dude. Yeah. And I remember the look on his face when he got knocked out. To this day, that's my that's my biggest. That's my largest viewing. Um, on um, post fight show, I got eighty thousand views on that to this day. It was like, yo, look, I'm, listen, that's my yo same number and everything, eighty thousand. And it's when he looked across the ring in the second fight, that look on his face, 
that's when his spirit broke. Like that, his spirit broke right then and there in that moment when he looked across that ring and Fury was already just beating the shit out of him. And I'm like, bro, there's some things you you don't come back from. You the don't likely, come back from. Mm-hmm. The likelihood of you coming back from two back to back ass whoopings, you don't have the um. You don't have the the stuff on the inside like Derek has it. That's why he could get knocked out, come right back and fight his ass off. Psychologically, he has it. Like, yeah, I get knocked out by Billy and White, rally back, get a couple wins, and I'm right back in the shit. Front row at the shit show. Wilder don't have that because, well, you drank your own Kool-Aid. You really started believing that that it can't be you. So, I don't know, B. Like, I... I, it's hard to imagine he comes back. What I will say is if he were to come back, it would make a lot of money, and there would be a lot of money fights out there for him, yes. not exclusive to the AJ fight. I, I, I totally agree. And I, I'm, I'm going to tell you, so it's something that I saw you say on the show a while ago. It was probably like last year sometime. What it was was, you know, you see Tyson Fury, you know, he looks fat. You see the fat jiggling. You see him, you know, have a couple of drinks. He's drunk. Oh man, ain't no way in hell let this guy's go. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna beat the brakes off this guy. You know, we gonna cherry pick him. We gonna pick him all. We gonna ain't no way in hell this guy's gonna look at him. He's fat. He's this. He's that. But then when Tyson Fury gets in the ring, it's like, damn, this motherfucker can fight. <laughs> what in the easy? Wait a minute. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Not you know bad for not bad for pillow fist Fury, right? <laughs> Because this is this is the thing. A lot of a lot of the American fight fans and the American media, they don't like to acknowledge this, even though anybody who was following boxing at the time, they will know. Nobody thought of Fury as being a puncher ahead of that first fight. And even mm-hmm. after the first fight, they didn't think of him as being a puncher. They always viewed him as a very good boxer, all right? So mm-hmm. you didn't pick this guy from the get. Because, yeah, you trying to fight the best because Fury wasn't viewed as the best when you picked him. He was viewed as a guy who's on a comeback trail. And a lot of the American media, they like to dress it up like, yo, what y'all two did? Y'all was living in a bubble, isolated from everybody else. Now, credit to Fury for actually fighting Dillian White and knocking him out. You did what Wilder didn't want to do. Wilder didn't want to know, but you did that. So much respect to Fury for, you know, he fought him. And he did that, and you got to give him his flowers for that because he did what Wilder didn't want to do. But what I know yeah. is when Wilder picked you, nobody viewed you as the best. The fight that people wanted was Wilder and AJ. What Wilder did, oh, no, I'm going to fight Fury instead. I'm going to fight. And it ain't because Fury was the best. Fury look, had a glorified sparring session with Seth and Safari. Then he had a little okay, decent fight with Pianetta. And, and he didn't look spectacular in none of them fights. So let's not revise history to where, yeah, Wilder picked Fury because Fury was the best. Y'all did not view him as the best when he picked him. For Wilder, it was, it, you know, in, you know, he picked Fury. That, you know, it was a, it was a cherry pick that turned out to be a cherry bomb. Yeah. Nobody, Fury didn't look like, like, if you go back, if you go back and watch uh, Fury versus Safari, that was a sparring session, fam. That was not a fight. That was a sparring session. Pianetta, he was a little bit more serious, a little bit more in shape. But you lying to yourself if, if you saying, yeah, but he was a world. No, nobody thought that after the Pianetta fight. Nobody thought that. Fuck out of here. Like, what are you talking about? You picked that dude because he can't punch. That's why you picked him. Or you thought that he couldn't punch. Go ahead, um, coach. Man, Jules, you had people thinking that, you know, that Wilder was was this invincible guy. Like, man, man, you know, look at him. He's 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 ripped. He's chiseled. <laughs> I, was, I was talking to some people, bro. Look, look at Fury. Look at his body. Wilder is, is ripped. He's chiseled. He looks like he looks like Ogun. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> he had the power of the Ogun. That's what they do, say, right, Coach? Hey, yo, hey, 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 Jules. The oh, shit, yo, because the whole shit was in his. Uh, you know what I always thought, Coach. <laughs> we got diff. We all got different perspectives, and I say this about Spence all the time. That when people see Spence, they see something that I don't see. Maybe they see their model of a boxer, or maybe they see an ideal of some kind. Because I don't see it. What I see is a southpaw 
who's a prolific puncher with a good body attack. That is what I see. No more, no less. Now, with Wilder, I kind of feel like that was at work that, look, when they look at Wilder, they see something different than what I see because what I see is a guy who I suspect, I've always suspected, the reason Wilder don't throw a lot of punches is because he don't got the gas tank to throw a lot of punches. He could look chiseled in his packs and his delts and his lats and his, <laughs> his lats and his trap. Well, that's your know, whatever, right? But I see a guy who wait the whole fight, be motherfucking nine rounds into the fight, not putting punches together. No, you literally waiting to throw one punch because you can't put them together. Whenever somebody try to get you to put them together, you start breathing with your mouth open. And then it come out that, oh, Wilder don't do road work. I would, that explains. I'm like, yo, I've always thought this guy don't have good cardio. What he does have, and I, I always give him credit for this, he is a good counter puncher, but he didn't develop it more. He didn't. Like, you could have been an even better counter puncher than you turned out to be because he did have that. He did have speed, and he did have accuracy, and he did know how to set up the right. It's just you only had the right. Don't have a left hook. You don't have much of an uppercut. You ain't much of a jabber. You don't throw that much. You're semi durable. Semi. Don't, don't work the body. Don't work. The, don't you don't don't know. I, I'll say this: the first round of the third fight, the body attack was beautiful. It not. It was the first. Yes, the first round of the of the third stab. The yeah, you long enough that you could throw a stab to the body. Get out of there. They can't touch you. But. That's, you know, you know, he didn't have the cardio to keep up a game plan like that. With a game plan like that, you got to make sure you stay on the outside, but make sure you busy enough and jabbing enough upstairs, downstairs to keep him out because it was actually working in the first round. It's everything after that. All right. Now you just get your ass. He had he had big, big bird legs, though. That's I don't know. I don't know what he was thinking about not making his legs more bigger and durable. I don't know why he just decided to build his body because he, he he's he's naturally strong. He should have just worked on making his legs stronger so he can just have more mobility in there. And, well, and, 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 and this is the thing too, right? It, it, it's something that my uncle taught me a long time ago. And, and, and you know this, Jules, and you guys on the panel, you know this. Yeah, you got 40 wins, 39 knockouts, but who are you knocking out? <laughs> Exactly. Yeah. That yeah. That's, a, that's, a, that's, that's, that's the one thing that everybody overlooking. Man, look at him. He chiseled. He ripped like old goon. Look at him. Look, he got he got thirty eight knockouts. Yeah, but who was he knocked out? Like, well, I mean, I, to this look, to this day, I asked mm -hmm. that question. To this day, that they put him up there with Foreman. Let me tell you something. George Foreman ragdoll Joe Frazier. That one knockout is better than all Wilder knockouts. That one knockout. What he did to Joe Frazier in two rounds is better than all the Wilder's knockouts. Now, if we're going to get into the, the, the stat pad, and let me tell you what, Shannon Briggs has more impressive first round. He got, he literally has more first knock first round knockouts than Wilder. I believe it's Shannon that holds the record for the most first round knockouts. So if all, if all you got to do is have a bunch of knockouts, over nobody really because the guys that Shannon knocked out they wasn't all that to begin with. I would right. give it to Shannon before I give it to Wilder because Shannon did it in the first round. He was knocking them dudes out in the first round. This this whole oh Wilder's up there with Foreman and 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 and, and, and fucking Sonny Liston and, and, and Ernie Shavers and Ernie Shavers. Like, that class <laughs> is crazy. Like huh? Cause cause he knocked out who Spoker? Come on, B. Come on now. Stop it. Who didn't knock out Spoker? Fucking Cesaro oh, knocked out Spilker. Yo, like fucking George Foreman picking Joe Frazier up off the can with, with an uppercut is more impressive than any of Wilder's knockouts. <laughs> like, like what he did to Joe. Remember, Joe was heavyweight champion. He was an yep. Olympic gold medalist. He had yep. beat Ali, and you know when they when they in their first fight because mm -hmm. this is between. Uh, this is between Ali and Joe's first fight and a second fight. The second fight took place uh, some years later, I believe. And when right. he did the Joe in two rounds, the way he beat the shit out, that's that's impressive. Hey, Jules, yeah. and him, remember, he did it more Seven than Seven knockdowns. Seven knockdowns in two rounds. One at a time. It, he did it more yeah. than once. He beat he beat uh, Frazier twice. Mm -hmm. Did he? They had two fights? Yeah. 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 Yes, he did. Wow, I, yo, I swear you learned something. I never knew they had two fights, bro. I literally never knew. Yo, Jules, I never, I never knew about. 
Oh, I'm sorry, man. Go ahead. The second fight, Frazier was sporting a bald head with no hair. But yeah, he got he he got smashed again. That's correct. You your your country. I swear to God, I did not know that. I literally yo, never knew that. Yo, country. Like, I oh. never knew that they fought twice until like a few years ago. I'm like, they fought twice, really? Yep, yep, <laughs> yep. I, I remember. I, I well, for when it first happened, I didn't remember it either totally. But then I saw it way like way after the fact and was like, oh, <laughs> you know. So, <laughs> so country, that, country now. Not- Okay. Country, now that you're on the panel, did you see um, Buati versus Richards? You know, I was not able to catch it in time. So, I well, you can't didn't, give you an it, it was It was good. It was good. But it, it ain't like, it but was I, good. I, I will say this. Based off the, the descriptions I've heard from everybody, I will go out on a limb, even though I didn't see it myself, and say this man is not ready for uh, Bavol at all. Uh, you know, he's not. He's not. Karma Serene says that she could beat Joe Frazier. Oh, get out of here with that. <laughs> <laughs> hey, what you talking about, Karma? Like, me and you well. Yeah, man. Uh, well, well, so, well, so, I mean, like. be ready for that type of level because he isn't that young. JBN. 24, 25. JBN, you kind of hit the nail on the head, bro. I'm wondering, will he ever be ready? I mean, bro, the way you said it, that you don't even think he can be Zerto, I don't think he's ready. I don't think he's ever going to be ready. Look, this is the nope. shit. Zerto, Zerto is, everybody knows I'm not sweet on Zerto, but Zerto has elite level characteristics. For example, he's not the greatest boxer. He doesn't have the greatest jab, but you know what he does have? A good gas tank. That dude can keep punching the whole he's fight. A, yeah, he's a volume puncher. He's a big southpaw volume puncher. He rehydrates the. T- he can get down to one seventy five and rehydrate to two hundred and three pounds. I'll say that's a, like yes, that matters. <laughs> that matters. And he's got a good chin. And really he good takes chin. a good punch. And he ta- and and you know he is a southpaw that takes a good punch. So I'm like, look, man, I'm just being real. Like motherfuckers, this this some shit that boxing fans do with boxing. They romanticize it like shit. Like like look, Zerto don't have to be the best boxer to beat an Olympian. So. Get that shit right out your fuck. Yeah, he could be. He can beat Buatzi. I guarantee it. That is yeah. a bad style matchup because you don't yeah. know enough for somebody like that. You no, know, to be honest, Jules, I, like right now, I'm just thinking, uh, like it's swirling in my head. I don't think Buatzi is gonna win a title. I don't that's, think so. That's how I'm feeling. I'm like, if if you bo- look, this is the other thing. Buatzi does not have the physique. To go up the cruiser, we could see that. Like, nah, you you wouldn't make it at cruiser. So what you should do is, yeah, you twenty nine, you twenty nine, and some people want to rush you. But if you if you gonna be a light heavyweight for most of your career, take your time then, because you're yeah. not the cruiser. You know, <laughs> that ain't happening. You know, you know what was a, su- a surprise was Pascal coming back at that age and beating that number one rated dude, man. That like, way was like, wow, Look, country. Who the fuck did Meng Fang Long fight though? That's true. I know, yeah. I know. But I mean, at, at 39, I mean, it's like, you know, that's not something you expect. You know what I mean? No, I agree. But also, I'm, I'm not going, in other words, I'm like, it's dope that he beat him. Well, I I shouldn't even say dope because Pascal, all the Pez and all of that. But it's more like, it kind of remind me of um what happened to Kansu. Remember yeah, when right. Kansu fought Lee Wood that he just, yo, he just got to, and it was like, yeah, Kansu was a fun guy to watch, but he really didn't beat shit. Or like when yeah. Donaire beat Donaire beat Bali, you know. <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah. um, um, who, who did Ubali, Ubali beat Roche Warren? I think. Yeah, I, I think he beat, and, and that was that was a decent one because Roche represented America in um, I think he rep, I think he was one of the Olympians. I think three, um, Olymp- three Olympics. Yeah, so, and that, and that kind of that kind of you know a little bit like that kind of valid. Like, look, you are fighting a good guy, you know. What I mean, like this guy knows what he's doing, so I don't mm-hmm. know. But um, as far as Wilder, what we talking about now, country is Wilder, and I'm gonna ask you: Do you get the sense that he will come back? Uh, you know, I think he will, but I think it's gonna be you know brief. I, I mean, he he'll come back for a payday or two, and then he's gonna fade off into the sunset. I mean, he, I don't think he's really got much else, to, you know, going. If he comes back, who do you believe he will fight? Oh, that's a good one. Well, uh, given his past handlers and everything, 
they're going to pick somebody they know he can beat. It's not going to be much of a challenge. Mm. Um, I, I, I'm not sure who. I'm, I mean, nobody wants to see him fight, you know, Ortiz again. So, I mean, they might try Ruiz because Ruiz is kind of on the downside now. That's if Ruiz – That see, so you, you, you getting it. You getting it. Ruiz is about to fight Ortiz this summer. They said towards the end of the summer, right? right. So who do you favor to win that fight? Oh, Ortiz. I mean, um <laughs> that's what I that's what I'm getting at, dog. If Ortiz win the fight, what are we gonna get? Wilder versus Ortiz three? <laughs> no, I don't want that shit, man. Do I you, I refuse to watch it, man. <laughs> do you doubt it, IQ? At this point, do you doubt that that would make that fourth fight? <laughs> I mean, bro, it's like there's ridiculous, and then there's like, like, would they really do that? Wild diversity. Con, con estos güeyes, ya no me, yo me espero de todo, bro. I don't. Bro, that's that I would expect be, anything with these guys, bro. Bro, that would be like y'all really going to try to repackage and repurpose and recycle that same <laughs> fight. The ideal you... thing they want is they're going to want to try to get Wilder to get a hold of that WBC belt again and then hold it hostage all over again, and we're going to get more of the same crap. Yeah, but th- but see, I, look, we know that that's what they want to do. We like we know that they would prefer that if Fury's going to leave, and they don't know if he's going to leave, but we know that they would prefer if Fury does leave to give Wilder the belt back. The shit is, okay, who you going to fight for it? If Ortiz beat Ruiz, what, what, we going to see you versus him again? Yeah. Oh, 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 wait. They going to put you in. If, if they try to put him in there with Frankie Sanchez, Frankie will bore us all to death out pointing Wilder. Mm-hmm. I think he will. Wait, 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 wait. I think the fight for Wilder is uh, Elenius. Elenius? That is, yeah, that is his comeback fight because Elenius is ancient. But... Hellenius is currently, I believe, no, right, 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 you're right, because fucking Huey Fury about to fight Michael Hunt. So, yeah, yeah, Le- you right, Leo, you right. Hellenius could be the guy. I thought it was going to be Huey Fury versus Hellenius, but I just seen the shit a few days ago that they trying to make um Huey Fury versus Michael Hunter. So that frees up Hellenius to be the comeback guy. But that's for the WBA, though. Well, they're not going to fight um. Well, they're not gonna fight the winner of Joshua versus Yusuf. He ain't gonna no, no. fight White either. And he, that would be a good one, you know. Yeah. Maybe, maybe it doesn't Chisora, matter. But nope. It doesn't matter because Wilder needs a guy that's gonna stand there and take that right hand. And Hellenius is that guy, like he did yeah. get knocked the fuck out by what you call it by um fucking guy Johan Duop. But yo, Johan Duop beat the shit out of him, bro. He left him on the ropes like this. I never forgot that shit. He was literally on the ropes like that. I was like, yo, this is some cartoon shit if I ever seen it. I could, oh, let me see. You see, Hellenius is his sparring partner, so that wouldn't make sense to fight Wilder. Well, that's not the first time that two guys that used to, like, White and Fury used to spar, but they fought. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Look at look at what's his name Hector Camacho. He was supposed to have that big fight with a sparring partner, and it turned out to be a ten round sparring session. I forgot yeah. his name, but it was just like, uh, uh, but it happened. You know, that's an example. Yeah, Usyk stops AJ and Wilder versus AJ cash out fight in early 2023. Maybe that's a viable possibility. The problem with that scenario is the platforms. Obviously. Eddie going to want it to be a matchroom show. Showtime going to want it to be a Showtime show. That's And that's always going to be the problem with that fight, that your guys want it on that platform, even though you're not obligated to fight over there. But AJ, he is with matchroom. You you don't have a promoter, supposedly. So why are you stuck on where the fight happened? If you want to make money, cross the street, fam. Mm-hmm. You want to make money? Shit don't make no sense. No, I don't. So, so uh, we got Terrence Crawford saying that the Spence fight is 100% going to happen. That's what he said. He said that on the Portaway podcast, a very good podcast here on YouTube. I'm going to go to the coach. Coach, any new ideas about that fight? Any concerns? Have you changed your pick? How do you see the fight going? 
I think he had the bounce, Jules. Oh shit! I he didn't even see. He, he said thanks for having him on. Yeah, he had the bounce. Yeah. Oh shit! I didn't even see. Um, because <laughs> I don't think a lot of us have new thoughts on that fight. Like my thoughts haven't changed. Crawford, don't not hold your thought. That's my thought. I mean, I, as much as I want to believe Crawford that it will ha- will be happening, don't hold your breath because well, it's you, yeah. But the thing, country, the, the thing, country is that Errol don't have a whole heap of options. Jaron Ennis is at his door. And Montestanionis is at his door. So it's like the only way you get around, the only way you could get around them and stay a welterweight is if you unify with Crawford. I coach is back. Coach, what do you think? Oh, hold on, wait, wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me, let me turn this off. Go, go ahead, go ahead, Jules. I'm sorry. Crawford <laughs> said on the Portaway podcast that he is 100% confident now that the Errol Spence Jr. fight will happen. So with those things in mind, and that being said, has your pick changed? Do you have any concerns? And for those that haven't heard your, your take, how do you imagine a fight plays out? Um, I'm 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 fifty percent. Um, I'm I'm call I'm cautiously optimistic because of what I heard Terrence Crawford say, as well as what Errol Spence is saying. Um, I'm cautiously optimistic. So I, I you know I I believe that zero percent chances of this fight ever happening. Now I'm at 50%. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And regardless of what Crawford and Spence are saying, at the end of the day, it's gonna come, it's gonna come down to Al Ham and Steven Espinosa and the guys who are gonna, you know, make this fight happen. So coach, I'm, I'm, I agree with your cautiousness, man. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm not jumping out the window because of what Crawford said on the Portaway podcast. Um, but but I will say this. Um stylistically, stylistically, I don't, I don't, I don't. My my pick hasn't changed. And as a matter of fact, stylistically now, I think I you know, I, I think Crawford might stop him a little earlier than I than I originally said. I said it'll probably be like a tenth, eleventh round stoppage. Mm. I think stylistically, I, I now I'm thinking, I'm like, man, you know, you should have jumped on Crawford in the beginning, but now I'm like, man, I think I, I think maybe uh he'll probably stop in like the eighth or ninth. You see what I'm saying? Mm. From a stylistic standpoint. And this is no hyperbole, this is just I see the same flat footed, uh methodical. You know, you throw a lot of punches, you go into the body, up and down. And I get it. You're from Texas. You're supposed to win because you're from Texas. And I'm not supposed to say this. I'm from Florida. I ain't, I'm not in Uncharted. <laughs> but outside of, <laughs> outside of that, you know, that's just how I see it. You know, <clears throat> we can agree to disagree on it, but nothing's going to change my mind. from, hey, from coach, as an plus yeah. not to mention, if he pulls that, oh, my mouthpiece fell out and I want to look for my mouthpiece trying to fight Crawford, man, he's doomed. Crawford, yeah, Crawford yeah. tag his ass. Yeah, Crawford's <laughs> not gonna sit there like Ugas or like Mikey Garcia or like Danny mm-hmm. Garcia. They're not. He's not gonna sit there like that. Okay, <laughs> I wanna say something like about that. Mm. We saw the Ugas versus Spence fight, and what happened in that round that Ugas nailed with uh, Errol Spence with an uppercut, and Errol Spence dropped his uh, mouthpiece. And Errol Spence turned from Ugas to find his small piece. Mm. But something I, I didn't catch in that moment because I watching the fight with you guys. Mm-hmm. And I was, the, the sound was off. Mm. That the referee, after Spence, Errol Spence did that, the referee said, stop. Stop. At the same time, Ugas was landing was that one too. The referee said, stop. And that is why you guys didn't want for the kill, I think. Let me say this. I just saw Joshua Buatzi lose his mouthpiece in the heat of the exchange. Uh, that happened in this fight with Joshua Buatzi. And Joshua's instincts, uh, uh, he did not stop fighting because the mouthpiece came out. It came flying out, but he didn't stop fighting. Aaron right. did stop fighting. Now, we right. could argue that he stopped because of the ref. But I just didn't like your reaction to the punch in general. I didn't like how you looked before that. I didn't like how you looked after that. You still in a fight, in other words. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like you still in a fight. Your situational awareness is weird to me. Whereas if that was Crawford, the flow of the fight, that you know, ref probably don't stop y'all to get that mouthpiece till after y'all finish trading. Whereas That's you a serious problem. Yeah, where whereas this guy, he gets punched in his mouth and he looked down and he go look like bro, like. And like you sure you want to do that? Like, I don't know, B. In any event, mouthpiece or no mouthpiece, referee or no referee. I got Crawford winning the fight. A lot hasn't changed for me. I want to ask the coach. You got Devin Haney, 
you got George Shish Kebab. You got to make a decision. Mm -hmm. Part of me, as an American, would like to see Devin secure this W1 because it'll set the example and a template for other young fighters that don't be a bitch. Risk it. You know, risk it. Go. You know, sometimes it ain't going to be in your favor, but fuck it. Do it. If he wins, he sets that example. Uh, uh, and also to make Javante Davis look bad because it's like, yo, like, we like, bro, who are you fighting? <laughs> yeah. Who? You know, but coach, do you like his chances or do you not like his chances? Man, listen, man, Devin Haney is Devin the Dream Haney is going to Australia. Well, he's in Australia right now to fight Killer Cam. You know what I mean? And, and, and Killer Cam is ready. Devin the Dream Haney is ready. You know what I mean? I think Church is with him. You know, um, you know, for what I'm hearing, for what I'm seeing from Yoel um, Zu, um, Judah, he's saying that Devin Haney understands the situation. He's going to have to take it. He has 50,000 Aussies in the stadium. It's going to be screaming at him. They're going to be throwing beer cans at him. And it's he, he Devin Haney has to take the me against the world approach. Mm -hmm. Listen, bro, you're going to have to do what Alexander Usyk has done and other fighters have done. This is why I'm not crying about, you know, man, they, they won't even let let his daddy go over there with him. Bill Haney. I'm like, so what? I'm like, you know, uh, Ben Davidson can't go over there. Listen, bro, you have fighters who Alexander Usyk is a perfect example. Marvelous Marvin Hagler was a perfect example. Yes, he was. You know, go yeah. on the road, go to other countries. Yeah, the cards stacked, stacked against you, but guess what? You have the power in your own hands. Why do I say that? Because all you got to do is stop them. Yeah. Knock them out, drop them, knock them down a couple of times. If they're going to, listen, you 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 have you you have control of that situation. Just like when these other fighters come from other countries and come to America, oh, they're down, they're down two three rounds too. You know yeah. they make it seem like Jules that oh you come to America, you know the judges are so much fairer than other countries. No, no, it's the same goddamn judges, same BS. As a matter of fact, hell, if you could be a fighter from Omaha, Nebraska, <laughs> and you fight a fighter in Dallas, Texas, you'll automatically be down two, three rounds. And <laughs> so I'm just saying, and that's within the United States, yep. let alone if you come from another country. So I like yeah. this perspective. Because, you know what's refreshing about that perspective? One is, is that Americans often feel entitled when everything Coach just said, that's all facts. Why they? Why does every American expect that? Oh, they gotta have it. They like no foreign fighters gotta come through here and labor and go through that. What he going through? So he ain't going through nothing that Alexander Yusek can't go through. Yeah, he had to do that five times. Latvia for Maris Breeders, Poland for Krzysztof Glavatsky, motherfucking Russia for Gasiev, motherfucking motherfucking the UK for Anthony Joshua and Tony Bellew. Motherfuckers do that shit, yo. So I dig it, but I also want Devin to win because that'll make a lot. That'll make that that'll be the wake up call, like yo, man. Y'all motherfuckers gotta stop acting scary and bite the bullet sometimes, yo. Because y'all looking at a lot of other shit, like oh, if, if it's over here, I ain't going. Well, nah, you can't be like that. That's not how them foreign fighters are. They they'll come through. Like fuck it, if I gotta go to America, you know, Josh Taylor has become somewhat of a social pariah because of the Jack Catterall fight. But before that, when he wanted Undisputed, didn't he come to America to get it? Yeah. Yep. He did. Yep. So it ain't, ain't you yeah, know. Ain't. Josh Taylor was kind of down, uh, down in the cards in the cards for, from the beginning because those, those cards, those Jose Ramirez versus Josh Taylor cards, were a little bit off. They were. Too close. Yeah. Too close. And you already knew why they was close. You know, what Bob wouldn't have given to have a fighter of Mexican descent that has a cult following in the West Coast become an undisputed champion? You know, that's, that's money signs on his eyes. You know what I mean? Mm, yeah. He's, yep. They, they would have liked that. They would have, but Josh Taylor ain't let it happen. You know what I mean? As the foreign fighter, the away fighter, this is an occupation who has it. They got to deal with it. You got to deal with it because George is the man right now. He paid the cost to wear the moose in his hair because he wear a lot of moose in his hair. <laughs> hey, 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 Jules. Hey, Jules. And also, don't forget, Usyk came to America a couple of times and fought. He fought Michael Hunter in America mm -hmm. when it was a cruiserweight. Um, if I, I think it was cruiserweight. You know it what was. I mean? yeah, cruise, yeah, it was cruiserweight. And, and he hey, fought Jules. in the tournament. You know, so. And don't forget, b lost the first four rounds of his fight with Canelo. 
That's facts. That's facts. It's weird. When I saw the judges scorecard, I'm like, all three, y'all? All three. I mean, that's not how I had it, but all three of y'all. <laughs> hey, 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 the crazy part, Jules, is this. Two of those four rounds, the first round, Bivol landed 14 punches. Canelo only landed five. And I think in the fourth round, it was something very similar. Four of those two rounds, he only landed 10 punches between two rounds, and Bivol landed double-digit punches. And I'm like, you're going to have to, okay, I'm not the smartest guy in the world. You know, my GED education is telling me that. How do you explain to me, <laughs> how does the guy that landed five shots um, wins the round against a guy who th who landed three times as many punches as he's landed? Home because cooking, those, Joe, uh, home cooking. Well, those, <laughs> those punches were more, what they, they was more defining than the 14. Yeah, 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 whatever. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I'm like, I, 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 this is what makes it uh, 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 concerning. I try to plan around the, 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 you know, the home cooking, the, you know, the homemade eggs and bacon and grits and, and every, I, I, I plan around the home cooking when I score a fight. And I'm like, nah, dog. It was not four and no Canelo Alvarez after four. No, Fink. What the fuck? Y'all crazy. Yeah. yeah. But, yep. Guys, that the Canelo Alvarez versus Dimitri Bivol, that wasn't a close fight. If you take the cynicism no. from that fight, it wasn't a close fight. It was a decisive. For me, it was, for, look, for me, eight, four to seven, five. That's yeah. how I see it. Yeah, eight, and eight, I lean okay. I lean I lean towards the eight four with my eyes. With my common sense, I'll say seven five. But with my eyes, eight four. Canelo was never winning that fight. Right. Hey, so so Jewel, so if he, so if he's down four rounds to zero, that means he had to win seven of the last eight rounds. That's nuts, bro. Uh, that's boxing. Yeah. But that's boxing, yo. Like, like and, and the shit is, once again, you articulated the shit the best. Foreign fighters come to America and deal with that shit all the time. <clears throat> all the time. All, on yep. a regular basis. So that yep. Devin now has to deal with that. No, I don't pity him, but I respect that he biting a bullet. Like, nah, fuck it. I like my chances. I'm going. I respect yeah. that shit. Yeah. I like my chances. Like, fuck it. 50,000 Australians? Fuck it. Vegemite? Fuck it. Ebony Bridges? Fuck it. <laughs> Men at work? Fuck it. Angelo Dundee? Or Cro Crocodile Dundee? Fuck it. I'm going. My dad can't come? Fuck it. I'm going. I respect yeah, yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, look gotta, yeah, gotta respect that. Gotta respect that. Yeah, yeah, I respect that. it better, man. For real. Yeah. Well, I fellas. That shit. Oh, fellas, I'm out of here, man. I'm going to watch this fight. Um, Jeanne Beck by knockout. Easy, of course. Easy pick. Easy of pick. Course. <laughs> Jamel course. Herring is coming up. We'll see how he does. Yeah, for those that don't know, Jamel Herring's making his ring return. On the... Okay, get out of here. Um, my, that's my son. Um, yeah. <laughs> Jamel Herring is in the co-main. Uh, he's coming back. It's at 135. And then after that is the Yanni Beck fight. We'll see if I feel like staying up for um, Benavidez versus Lemiao. I mean, like, that's another foregone conclusion fight. Yeah. I'm not going to be interested. <laughs> I'm just interested I mean, in like Jan Beck. <laughs> It'll be a fun fight. Yeah, I mean, yeah. If you, it's, it's one of those fights where, yo, you want to see somebody get the shit beat out of them? Yeah, all right. Yeah, yeah. What if yep. the meow knocks him out? Ooh. Bro. Bar. <laughs> so let's put it away. <laughs> you know, and I was just about to ask that. Like, y'all think it's really going to be that easy for uh, David Benavides to beat this guy? Listen, a prime le meow, prime le meow, right? He comes in at a slight crouch like this. And he don't have the sharp, he don't have the sharpness that, that 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 Tyson had. So he comes in at a slight crouch at his best. And what is he in line for? One of David's money punches, the uppercut. David yeah, Jules. That, Jules. that that shoe shine, that shoe shine that, that yeah. he question, did Jules. In Medina. Quick question, yeah. Jules. How do you see Benavidez versus Morel? Honestly? Yeah. Benavidez wins. Hmm. But he has to work for it, and he doesn't want to work. 
You, yeah. you don't think that Morrell could knock him out? It's the experience. He had to look. All right, I'm going to put it this way. Morrell has not been in a Ronald Gavril fight where he had to dig deep and, and you got to fight this guy that gave you problems. You got to give him, you got to fight him two times. I like Morrell. He's talented. He only has six fights. And if they keep him busy and groom him right, he could be some shit. But he's a PBC fighter. They don't keep fighters busy. Oh, Just yeah. When, when did yeah, that he, start? He's doomed if he's a PBC. His fighter. last fight was Casares, right? That was like over a year ago. The Casares fight. That was over a year yeah, ago. He's 6 and 0, oh, fam. Like, he don't even like, have 10 fights. That was a one round knockout, so that didn't do anything for him. Look at what, mira, mira lo que le hicieron a, a este tipo, took Sakniambi out of Mongolian. He was a prospect under 20 fights. Ahead of what was the Gary Russell title fight, the man had not fought in a year. They don't know how to groom fighters over there or you sabotage. Like, it's common sense. Yo, the dude don't got a lot of fights. He needs the rounds. You putting him in a title fight off a year layoff? What kind of shit is that? You trying to set him up to fail? So Bro. I see Morrell has it. Like, he has it to be that dude. But because no. they don't groom fighters right over there? And Morrell is like that one Cuban that has that style and he has that look that you could groom him to be popular with the, the Cubans and the, and the he puts those fans. And they're not doing shit with him. He's like the one guy that you could make a star. But you know what their problem is? They got a thing over there to where they want everybody to be a star. And this is why I like top rank. Top rank is survival of the fittest, bro. You got to show me that you deserve to fight on TV. You got to show me that you deserve. You got to show me, fam, because what this ain't is a fucking daycare center. You know, like being real, right? Morrell won that WBA Reggie belt over a year ago, right? So the ideal fight would have been Benavidez versus Morrell for the WBA Reggie. So you could then pressure the WBA to give you Canelo. No, you want to wait. You want to wait because the Benavidez team, they don't want the morale. For, well, well, fuck what they want because I'm keeping the lights on. I'm paying for all this shit. You going to fight him or you ain't going to fight. And I'm going to give the slots I was going to give to you to him. Simple as. You lost the title two times outside the ring. How much coddling do we need, fam? And, Jules, can I be that asshole who says that when you are on cocaine, you're just taking time bomb at that point? Every, every athlete I have ever seen who was on coke, you know, he burned out. He didn't fade away like some other greats in the past. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It's facts. Like, go ahead, coach. Hey, hey dude, I have, to, I have to get ready to bounce panel, but I got to say this. I'm, I'm disappointed in you, my brother. The great George, the, the, the great Floyd Mayweather had a fight. With, 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 with dangerous Don Moore. I just finished watching the fight. Brother, I'm telling you, bro, bro oh my God. Oh my God, bro. What did it, yo, Beaver, not nah, Beaver, don't fuck around. Like, what What did it look like? Like, was it like. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna lie, though. This, this fight was probably one of the most boring fights I've ever seen. Um, Don, the most exciting round, I guess, maybe was the first round. And I think after that, it was just. I don't think any either man broke a sweat really, uh, bro. It, it, it was terrible. It was it was just terrible, bro. Like uh, they should have paid us to watch it. Just put it that way. <laughs> you know, I'm, you know. Now Floyd, 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 Floyd looked like he had his reflexes and stuff like that. But the worst part of it is the commentators. They're like, oh, did you see what Floyd did? Oh, he still has those reflexes. Wasn't now, that Don... supposed to be canceled, though? <laughs> yeah, I thought well, it was. It was. I it it was. was. Yeah. They moved it from the helipad in Dubai to a hotel in Abu Dhabi. It was supposed to be canceled, though. But hey. they went ahead because they moved the shit. Sorry to interrupt you, Coach, but I was just curious on that, man. Hey, hey country. Hey, country. So so yeah. the commentators like, oh, my gosh, did you, did you see that counter by Floyd? <laughs> oh, wait, look at the jab. Look at the jab by Don Moore. He's not oh. coming to lay down. Don is an undefeated fight. Bro, it was like the hyperbole <laughs> that they was putting. The crowd was not. Listen, it seemed like they was fighting in front of an empty uh, arena. No one was lying. saying anything. Bro, I'm dead, I'm dead ass, me. Be him dead ass. It looked like uh -huh. he was just, it was a, bro, nobody was, there was no noise. No, nobody screaming, yelling. None of that. It was like. <laughs> Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something, coach. That fight 
in order to be at the fight, a part of the sales pitch when it was still on the helipad was you had to purchase an NFT to get, you know, to be there or whatever, right? So if nobody was at this, now remember that they moved it, so it wasn't on the helipad. So it's like, if nobody really showed up, you must be relying on the pay-per-view buys then to get the money. You would have to be. And what was the pay-per-view? $15? What was it, like $15? Um, I don't know. I think, no, I think, no, I think it was like $29. $29, something like that? Bruh. I want to say, you, I want to say, you maybe 20, $30 dollars pay per views like third from 80 to 30. Yo, something is wrong, fam. From something 100, wrong. bro. 100. <laughs> something is wrong. And I'm not, and I'm not saying that to, for comedic. I'm saying that man fuck around is broke or he bought to be broke. Yeah, man. I mean, it, it this, this doesn't oh, look good for him. Bro. Think, like, think about it this way he got in trouble with that, with that, you know, that coin, that Bitcoin or whatever thing scam and. Some other stuff he's probably lost money so he probably I'm, owes a ton of money country i'm gonna tell you what i think happened we all know the theory about the stipends and what i firmly believe is al has a piggy bank of all that money from all these fighters that he got and he lost that money that's really what i think because it's like bro ain't no way ain't no way you could have spent that much bread not the canelo money and the manny money and the maymac money Bro, yeah. that's a lot of money, fam. A lot. Ain't no, yeah. ain't no way. Unless, you, unless you're just the biggest jackass on earth, I guess. You think he would at least hire a financial team to help him keep it? You know. Well, who was his financial advisor, country? Oh God. <laughs> I'm just saying, probably <laughs> shit. The way he, yo look. <laughs> this the other thing. This is the other thing too, though. This is the other thing too, though. Money don't you look? I could give you a billion dollars right now if you don't have money management skills, you don't have them. So, a billion, a million, or a trillion, you're gonna burn it. You will burn it buying dumb shit and Floyd hey, buy dumb shit. Ah, but ah, but but you know what, Jules, you can learn money management skills though. Not when you not when you pay people to do your thinking for you. Oh, hey man. True. Let me ask you something. Who was the name of that producer who, um, was it Scott Starks or was it Scott um, Storch? Yeah, the guy who lost all that money sniffing coke and buying yachts. You know what I'm talking about? You're talking about the music producer, right? Yes, sir. Scott Storch, yeah. Yeah, like it's very easy to lose that kind of money, especially with cocaine, man. Well, uh, well look, but yeah, but we know that Floyd. Yeah, but we know we know Floyd ain't no cokehead. Like he don't. He, no, he, no. he not a cokehead, but his shit is. He buys a lot of shit that it's like, I don't even know why you buying that shit. Like, you can't do nothing. Like, he buys, like, look, jewelry ain't nothing but rocks and metal from the earth. That's all it is. The amount of money you spend on that fucking garbage, you could have literally brought a whole building that would have given you residual revenue over a long enough period of time. You fix it up, you get rent from people, then you sell it to somebody for more than what you paid for it. But he not... Like, yo, I don't know why people think Floyd is like a street dude, because he's not. Like, you don't have the mentality for none of that shit. You no, buy not. bullshit. You buying cars and bullshit. You don't know nothing about flipping nothing. All that, all that. This this legalized bank? No, it ain't. Hey, no, Jules. it ain't. Hey, Jules, this is serious, man. My buddy used to be a mover, right? And he'd drive, you know, big rig and move people cross country. He moved Floyd one time and moved a car for him. Guess what? He, mm. Floyd gave him a four thousand dollar tip, dude. Hey, look, like I no said, no joke. I mean, that was cool, but damn, four thousand. No, no, it's cool, but that that highlights the frivolity of the spending. That, like, yo, dog, you gotta get shit. Like, if you want a lot of, like, or I'll use myself as an example. Say that word one more time for us, Jules. Frivolity. If it were <laughs> me, if it's me, honest to God, if it's me, if I won. A million dollars tomorrow. First thing I do is I buy a house I could flip. First thing. I need to get something that they can't take away from me that I could sell it back to somebody and get a chunk of fucking money. What I'm not going to do is buy a sports car. I'm literally like, I don't have no need for that. I don't. I'm a family guy. I'm Peter Griffin. I have no use for a muscle car. Maybe once I start bringing in money, once I start getting the revenue, then maybe I'll spoil myself a little bit because I already do that on a smaller scale. I ain't buying shit till I start seeing something come back. I'm not buying nothing. I'm gonna tell y'all. I'm gonna tell y'all what Jules is gonna buy though, y'all. He's gonna get Nerf to make him some customized Nerf guns. Why not? 
Why not? The Ring IQ special. Why not? But real shit though, like not no he like whenever I see that garage that he liked to show off, bro, you showing off the same cars from five years ago, literally. I, that was already a flag for me. Like, bro, cars depreciate in value. I hope you're not driving none of these shits because if you're driving them, they depreciate in value more and more. That's not an asset. That's a liability. I don't really see you flipping houses. I don't I don't see what you're doing. Like, even Danny Garcia, who I always give him credit, and Tevin Farmer, them Philly Cats, and Julian J. Rock Williams, they flipping houses and properties. I get him like, yeah, that's how you do that. If you get a chunk of money real fast, do that. Because that's money that's going to stay with you over time, and it can only get better. But what you doing? You buying bullshit. You buying watches with rocks in them and shit. What the fuck you going to do with that? Nobody want that. Think Another about thing. it. You, you a millionaire. You a million. Let me buy this $9 million watch. Unless you're going to get another millionaire to buy that off you, which they probably won't because they don't need your watch. They can go get their own watch made that they like in whatever style they like. It's like, who going to buy that off you, fam? Who? But, you know, I make, I, make, I make smart investments, you know. I make $20 million a month from my investments. <clears throat> The more I hear that, the more I see that he'd like me. If it's me, like, okay, I got a titty bar. I want at least one titty bar in every state in the country. Every um, state. Um, now, I had a like question, Jules. Let's say, Jules, you got a titty bar. Is there going to be a night where you could suck farts out the asses? It might be on the right night. might be Thursday. It might be Thursday. Oh. Thursday suck a fart night. Why not? Sounds and, like my and, kind and, of joint. For real. And then and, 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 and it, it, I have special nights like Live Titty Tuesday where you can see the nipples. Like if you come in here, you pay. It's Live Titty Tuesday. It's nipples in here. Like we ain't even going to cover them up like they do at the strip clubs in New York. You're going to see some titties, right? Because it's like if you look at how he move, and I'm not trying to be negative. I'm being serious. The growth is not exponential. When Jay got away from rap, the growth was exponential. When 50 got away from rap. The growth was expert. Like he getting TV studio money, fam. Fuck rap. Fuck yeah, cutting 50, the record and going on tour. Fifty invented vitamin water, bro. He's man, he's got. Well, a he didn't brain. invent vitamin. Vitamin water was already around. They just struck a real good deal, and and he made some money. Yeah, no, he had them pay him in equity. Yeah, okay. before they went public, and then Coca Cola bought them. Yeah. Oh, but, okay, okay. But when you I see these guys, when. when when you see that, like, like Elon Musk and, and just these people in general, motherfucking, what's what's the other guy named the ball guy that he got swole? Bezos. Base Jeff Bezos. You supposed to move a certain way, Floyd. All you still got is is what's that shit? Girl collection. It should be a girl collection in every state in the country. You got enough. You have more startup money than your average, way more than your average small business owner. And if you was really a hustler. Fuck using my money. The bank know I'm good for the money. I'm taking out a loan. Fuck you, that. You, like, you, you, you use other people's money. Of course I got the money. But I'm not going to use my money. I'm going to use yours. Fuck you that. You use other people's money to get rich, man, and then pay them back later. That's exactly like, what Al's doing with Floyd's money. That, <laughs> that, thank you. Thank you. Because that's what I was alluding to. Like, yo, you not you being hustled. You not a hustler. You are being hustled. You earned all this money. And you gave this man access to it. You should. I don't. I don't. I. I don't know. I don't know what relationship they have behind closed doors. But I would never trust anyone that much. I wouldn't. Hey, hey, hey Jules, and, and we. And I, and I. I said this before. Like, um, in, in the fight, he could have stopped the guy in the eighth round, but it, it was. It was just a joke. I'm not. It was a joke. But um, but I said this before. Like when you look at the NBA and the NFL and stuff like that. The worst thing that an athlete can do is give a financial advisor all your trust. Mm -hmm. it, it, bro, like there's countless examples of the some of the players in the NBA who did, you know, they, they had bad spending habits, but they also trusted these financial advisors. You won't know if you're broke or not until years later. Yep. You know what I mean? Next yep, day, literally. You, know, you got a $20 million tax bill. Wait a minute, man. I thought my financial advisor was supposed to handle this and this and that. And then you get with another attorney, then you audit the books and see what's going on, and you see all kind of stuff missing. And this is the worst thing you can do. So when I hear these guys saying, you know, praising, you know, this certain guy over there at the PBC and stuff like that, I'm like, dude, man, you know, I, I hear what you're saying, but you're not gonna know what's going on, man, until I probably after you retire or right right before you get ready to, ret to retire, and you see, damn, man, um, what in the hell has been going on? You know, so bro, like these guys, you know. 
I, I, I don't know, man. We, we, we'll it goes see. Back to what, I, I coach, it goes back to what Jules is saying. None of these athletes are street dudes. So Ooh. they never had the budget like that and they know how to get it and, and flip it. And I said it. this I said this on a previous live. I'm going to say it here again. Every teenager in high school should be made to either nickel and dime or start a small business before you head out to college, before you do all these things, because these are real world skills. You need to learn how to flip shit. I don't care what it is because literally everything in life is a flip. This live that I'm doing right now, this is a flip. I'm I'm putting in time to get back bread. It's a flip. That's what it is. It's literally a flip. And if you pay attention, everything in life is a flip. Literally everything. You pay for the editing software to do the video so you get back more money than you paid for the editing software. That's how that works. T-shirts, that's a flip. You go to the wholesaler, you get you 12 shirts that cost A, so you can flip them for B. It's a flip. Everything is a flip. And what I see is you got kids going to school, learning all this garbage that they don't they don't need that shit, fam. I'm being real with you. A trigonometry, unless you're going to go into rocket, rocketeering and, and jet propulsion, I don't see what the fuck you're going to do with that, being real with you. But what you need to know is how to, you know, budget. You need to learn how to flip if you have any intention of being a business. You need to learn that. You need to know that because a lot of that's real world skills. That is yeah. not. You got guys, they'll get the bubble butt joint for the twat. And I'm like, yo, it's twat everywhere, fam. You could get twat from any old joint. What you need to do is, listen, if you are going to be my joint, I'm going to put you through this tax school shit and you are going to be my advisor if you want to benefit from my success. You're gonna. I'm not hiring Joe Blow. Joe Blow gonna try to get me. Fuck that. Fuck that. I don't need that. You're gonna be my advisor, all right? So that you're just as invested as I am. If I don't have the time to do it myself, which most athletes don't, they gotta pay attention to what they're doing. You know, you, get your family people to do it for you. If anything, like, look, a lot of these guys they got close relationships with their moms. Who's gonna protect you better than your mother? So pay for your mother to go to school so she will be your advisor. Yep. She will do your taxes or your father or a family member, right? Somebody that they ain't going to get you, you know, somebody you can trust or at least put it in their hands before you put it in Joe Blow. You don't know that man. Just like just like Malachi said, yo, it'll be two, three years before you find out they done spent all your bread. They invested it in shit and then lost it. And you didn't know. And then you find out ain't shit you could do about it. If you win a million dollars tomorrow, believe you me, a sports car should be the last thing on your mind. That is a liability. Jewelry should be the last. That's a liability. Who, who the fuck wants it? Really? This It's not 1992, bro. I, I see motherfuckers wearing chains and I always laugh to myself like, bro, that ain't nothing but metal and rocks that was in the earth. That is literally all it is. All they did was polish it. It's metal and rocks to make you feel better. Give you a sense of self. It's metal and rocks. Hey, Jules, I'm finna get ready to bounce, man. Uh, thank you for having me, my brother. Right. Um, hey, salute, uh, new country, man. Everybody on the coach, man. Salute everybody. Later, coach. Have a good one, coach. Later, coach. Hey, Later, yo, coach. Shout, Later, coach. Shout, shout out, coach. Shout out, coach. I love your channel, coach. I love your channel, too, coach. Shout out, man. Hey, hey, thank you so much, brother. And hey, what's up, AJ and Drew, man? How y'all doing? What's crack a What's up, yeah, country? Drew. I was in your neighborhood the other day. But not Drew. Hey, 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 Drew! I shot you a tweet, man. I couldn't, I couldn't shoot you no message. I would have grabbed a beer with you, man. Oh yeah, and I didn't. I gotta look for the tweet. I, I have my stuff filled. I don't know if I follow you on that. No, I was right, at the Costlin all day, though. You're, you're the only staunch, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah man. If, if that Spence proper fight happens, we all gotta go, bro. The whole panel's gotta go, man. Shit, I'm down. Hey, yeah, man. Man. hey, that would now that would be me. Me and villain were talking about that the other day. One of these days, all of us should get together and go to a fight together, man. That would be a fucking blast. That'd be epic, man. That'd be epic. Hell Probably yeah. get a group Jules, photo. Get a, get a group photo, everybody. <laughs> it wouldn't be it wouldn't be right if Jules wasn't there, man. So we all all of us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. that's definitely something to do. That's definitely something for the bucket list. Yeah, big time. But I don't know about y'all. I'm ready to see Yana Beck uh, seek and destroy. <laughs> I'm just wondering what is middleweight going to be because we know what the plan is for Charlo. And I get the sense that he might fight only once this whole year, right? And that whole year, he probably going to have a belt. Meanwhile, Gennady got two belts. He go up, he gets smacked around by Canelo. What happens to them belts? 
That's mm-hmm. what I want to know. You know, well, man. He'll like, retire if he fights Canelo because he already make all that money, and if he gets KO'd, what's the point? He'll keep fighting. Now, you know? I want to go around the board with this one. I'm, I'm gonna start at the bottom. Not should, not should, just will. Will Canelo fight Triple G in a third fight, Jay? Yeah, right. I think so. I think so. I agree with that. Drew, do you feel that oh, my, Canelo my, my bad, my bad, Jules, my bad. I, I was on the call record. We'll, we'll Hell of an it. answer, AJ. <laughs> <laughs> ahead, now, like, do you feel? Do you feel that Canelo will do the trilogy with Gennady Golovkin? Not should. Will he do it? Hmm. I think so. I mean, if he if, if he knows what's good for him, be better. Because I, I don't. I don't see a different outcome in the if he fights B ball again. I don't. Mm. Have the more and more I think about it. But so yeah, I I I don't know if he does, but if I if I were him, I would do it to show. Mm. Mm-hmm. Drew, do you feel in September Canelo will fight Triple G for a third time? I believe he will. Some time has passed. Canelo knows that. It's a good uh chance to stay sharp and make a shit ton of money because him losing actually makes this pay-per-view and this fight a little bit more relevant. It does. Like, and Canelo bounce back. Does the old man still have one last hurrah in him? All that shit. Mm-hmm. So you feel that he will. I'm going to yeah. go to country. Country, is he going to fight Gennady? Is he not going to fight Gennady? Yeah, he will at some point. And a lot of us are going to be disappointed because he's waited for so long and it's just we don't really want to see the fight anymore. But, yeah, he will. I think he will at some point. I mean, a lot. I think the loss to, to Bavol really threw him. So he's gonna. That's gonna be one of his things that he does to come back. JBN, do you feel in September Canelo will fight Gennady for a third time? I I feel like he will. It's it's a big money fight, and uh, he needs something to get his confidence back, man. And uh, it, it, it'll happen. Like I said, it'll happen. It's a big money fight. He needs something to boost his confidence. Uh, if the fight is bigger now, I think. Every single fight at 168 is bigger now, now because uh, Canelo was in that aura that he was pretty much like invincible. So now if you put him up against a Charlo or Benavides to the public, to the casuals, it looks like more intriguing, you know. So all his fights at 168, not just the triple E, not, not, not just the triple G fight, got more intriguing to me. In my opinion. Leo, same question. Do you think Canelo is going to fight triple G for the third time in September? Yes. Makes sense for him. He's mm. gonna fight him. Probably he's gonna stop him, and mm. then if he doesn't fight Bivol, I think he goes to the PBC. Mm. You go to the PBC. That's what I take. William, is he gonna fight Gendari? All right. So let me point something out to you, Jules. All right. When Canelo was with Golden Boy. We were speculating on the fights he was going to have under Oscar De La Hoya. He left Oscar, went to Matchroom. He uh, got some fights with Matchroom. He left them. He sued them. He became a free agent. And then he did exactly what people didn't want him to do. He moved up to 68, became undisputed, and then he went and fought people. I could honestly sit here and tell you what I think is going to happen, but this guy is unpredictable as all hell. I don't know if he wants to go to an easy fight. Or if he wants to continue to challenge himself. Like, that's something I really can't say. But if uh, I had to pick between the two, give me that free money, man. Triple G is right for the taking. Take the money while it's there. That's what I would do. I'm going to preach, and I hope that Canelo's listening. You don't need Dimitri. Fuck that fight. Fuck that fight. And what you do, yeah, you stay at 68. You stay an undisputed champion. But who the fuck says that you need to go to the PBC for PBC fighters? I don't. Benavidez, you want to fight, right? Come get it. Charlo, you want to fight, right? Come get it. Why the fuck would I have to come to you? Who the fuck are you that I have to come to you? That I have to fight on the platform that your boss, you have a boss. I don't. I am Canelo. And I could beat all of y'all. Demetrius, Benavidez. Charlo, all of y'all coming to the zone. Every single one of y'all where I have the advantage. I don't trust your people. Your people would love for one of y'all to beat me 
on your platform, that won't happen. You're coming here or you don't get the fight. Simple as. And especially after all that shit Floyd talked about him, like, how the fuck are you going to talk all that shit about somebody and then expect them to come back and work for you? Like, and do and do a favor. That's This is what I'm getting at, that I'm like, yo, y'all want to benefit off a fighter that Oscar built. Like, I, like, really, like, look, I'm a fan of Floyd's boxing, but this, the shit, all that other shit, yo, you a little dick. You didn't build Canelo, fam. What the fuck are you talking about? In what way did you build Canelo? You want to fight. Congratulations. But your life is so empty, you still got to talk about that, dude. You retired, right? And your shit is over. And you still getting shat on and pissed on by people. When he retired, that's not going to be him. Uh, believe me. He going to retire. He going to get the props and the, and the accolades and all that shit. Because at least he did. At least he tried. It's still, it's still a lot of people trying to spin it. Oh, fighting B-Vol was a cherry. What the fuck do you mean that was a cherry? If he's if he was a cherry, then why wasn't Benavidez going up there to fight him? As easily as he'll fight Lemieux, why wasn't he trying to pick that cherry? He said he sparred him before, right? So why didn't you pick him? You ain't got no belt, fam. You ain't had a belt since 2020. When did moving up become a cherry pick? Beats me. Like for real, these PBC dumbasses. Well, we, knew, we, we knew everybody on this panel knew everybody on this panel. That ain't no cherry. Are you nuts? He might lose. I could wholeheartedly say, Well, Leo, JBN, Country, Drew, and motherfucking Jay. We all looked at the fight this like, yo, he might lose. Yo, man, every time I came up here, I kept telling you, bro, I'm scared of this fight, man. This is a, this is a tough, tough fight. Uh, and that's what I, would I expected, have, man. I would have bet everything that I had on that fight had I knew that, known that Pernell Whitaker gave that man such praise in life, dude. That is insane. I didn't even fucking know that, bro. Until after, when they, when they showed the footage, that Pernell watched one of his fights, and he was like, yo. Isn't it ironic that uh, B ball did to Canelo what Pernell did to a uh, Chavez, essentially. Isn't it ironic that Pernell is a Capricorn? Not at all. What do you mean? Oh. That was a draw between Chavez and Pernell. Stop it. He beat him, dude. There's no way, there is nothing you could tell me. Like, seriously, he beat him. They screwed him out of that fight. Well, and I cannot say is, that anymore because I'm officially a Mexican citizen, so I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> We can agree to disagree, my brother. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you, you, you might get jumped if you're down there. So uh, Mexicans love the hell out of Chavez, bro. They will not let that guy go. Chavez is a god, man. To, and, and, but you know what? He was a great fight. Wasn't it 100,000 or 130,000 people at that Haugen fight? It was like 120-something, yep. It was a ridiculous was number, insane. bro. Like, the Azteca, right? The Azteca bro. city? There was actually a mode around the ring. There were that many people ready to hurt that guy. Bro, a hundred, a hundred. Look, look, this is, if I'm Canelo, right? I fight in Mexico and I bring Gendati down there and we're going to give these fight. We're going to make them forget about the B-ball fight because the quickest way you can make them forget about a fight is the same way it is when you get trying to come back from a breakup. You just got to jump in some new pussy. That's what you do. You gotta get get into a new fight. Bring Gennady to Mexico and knock him out in front of the Mexican fight fans. They'll forget all about. Be, it'll be like it never happened. That'd or be the most epic Texas. thing he ever did. That's good too. There's a ton of Mexicans down there. You fill up that AT and T stadium with a hundred thousand people and knock them the fuck out. I don't make everybody forget about it. Or attendance again, bro. In other words, in other words, because the other thing is. What I see is the criticisms that Canelo is facing are the people that are trying to uh, bring him down a peg. Hey, y'all got to shut up, man. The people that are trying to bring him down a peg, these are not people that buy his fights. So you can't actually have a palpable effect in his career unless you can hit him in the pocket. And from what I can see, the people that do go to Canelo fights and do buy Canelo fights, they still like him. So he's still the cash cow. So what you can do is make history. Break Chavez's record. 
Break it with Gennady Golovkin, who you can knock out. I do. That's what I would do. I'm still the motherfucking A side to all you cocksuckers. And if you want me, it's on my terms. Imagine if there was no pirating, how much he would have, how many more pay per views he would have got. You know what I mean? They say 600,000. Like, it would have been way more than that had it not been for the pirating, in my opinion. Hey, yeah, this, man, that, that, that's an ex- impressive number. 600,000 for Bevo? Like, that is a really... So I'm pretty sure he can do five or six with anybody he fights. Five I'll say, anybody that he fights. if he fights Golovkin, what five and six communicates to me is that with Golovkin, he can do nine and a million. Eight, nine to a million. I'll say that. I won't go too far, but eight to nine. If you did that with Bevo, who Americans don't know, with Gennady, you could probably hit eight or nine. On the platform, though, on the app. I feel like he'll hit a million now because he did 800,000 with uh, uh, Malibu's Most Wanted, so. Word. He did, though. Yeah. So I'm you pretty sure it'll crack like it? one to 1.5. I'm pretty sure it'll, it'll do it. I feel like it will. Or he could be a dick and uh, force Bivol to come down to 168 if he wants to fight and put the fight in Mexico. Mm, I'm going to be real, right? I'm going to be real. I don't know that Canelo wins that fight at one. That's a bad style matchup. To beat Bivol, you need something that Canelo Alvarez doesn't actually have. Zerto has it, but I don't, I'm not confident in Zerto. But he does have it. You need volume. Bevo wants to box and move and box and move. You got to be able to pressure him and make him uncomfortable and still be able to hit him with shit while he's moving. That'll really, that's how you get to him because he's too responsible for a smaller fighter who, like, bro, like, it's like, even if Canelo hits him, you won't make a dent, but he's making himself very hard for you to hit. So it's like, it's, it's, it's not there, bro. It's not there. In theory, though, if he does force him to come down, there is a chance that he would be weight-drained enough to where Canelo could put more hurt on him, though. There is always that possibility. Look, And I'm, Canelo won't gas out. I don't think he'll, he won't gas out at 168. I want Canelo to use the best drugs for that rematch. And I don't give a shit if anybody's on peds because everybody's on peds. Everybody's on peds. I'm on peds. Right? I'm on peds. My wife is on peds. Steroids. Why would I wish you were on peds? You want a damn good fight like the rest of us? <laughs> if she was on, if she really was, I'd probably be fucking dead, bro. <laughs> <laughs> well, oh, what a hell of a fight, though. He heard you. Y'all you know, would see me dead on the live, like. <laughs> the funny thing is, Jules, she's telling you that when you say that, but don't care when you say sucking farts out of Rose's ass. Hey, man. <laughs> She'll yell at you for that. Hey, this is a family show. Um, back to the point. Um, what was I going to say? Yeah, if I'm Canelo, man, fuck b You don't need that rematch, bro. You don't actually need it. If you knock out Gennady Golovkin, who's going to remember the Bevo fight? Nobody, because Gennady's never know. been knocked out. Yeah. If you knock out Gennady, you knock out David, maybe Jamal or Dimitri, nobody will remember that fight. Nobody. nobody. It'll be a set. It, it, you know what it'll be? Pacquiao Horn. It's just going to be it's, it's yeah. going to be an insignificant blip. That's it. it that's what I mean. It'd be like it's some shit that happened, and Bevo was a good fighter, and we'll see how it ages. But at the end of the day, it's not something that you have to hold up your career over, to be honest, because Manny never had the rematch with Jeff. He could have, but he never had it. Did people think less of Manny, the ones that matter? Not the ones that don't matter, the ones that matter. Did they think less of Manny? No, they fucking bought the Thurman fight. They bought the Broner fight. Fuckers wasn't worried about that shit. Nope. So I think he should fight Gennady. Do it in Mexico. Make a big deal out of it. Mr. Mexican style. Let's see how your Mexican style holds up in Mexico. And then after that, 
you ace side the shit out of everybody because why not? Who the fuck told y'all that I need to go to y'all platform? For what? The money is with me, not with y'all. Y'all fight on that platform. Y'all don't get what I get. You gonna fight on my platform. I'm a rehydration clause the shit out of all of y'all. All of y'all. You can't rehydrate more than five pounds. <laughs> What's wrong with y'all? I'm Canelo. Just because I don't like the whole lot of it. Like, look, I had an argument with a dude, and he's a good dude, by the way. So it ain't even like it's a bad argument. But I had a discussion with a dude, right, uh, earlier today in the comments. He was like, um, the guys that Canelo fought at 168, oh, those guys were pushovers. And I'm like, wait a minute. The dude you like is fighting David Lemieux. David Lemieux got beat by Billy Joe Saunders. And so we're going to talk about some pushovers. Your man is fighting a pushover. He couldn't push over Billy. Canelo closed that man eye, fractured his brain skull, right? How you, in other words, how you look like bigging up a big ass dude like David Benavidez that ain't fighting shit, but you critical of Canelo? Little motherfucker, little stumpy motherfucker. He ain't big at all. It don't make sense. Isn't it crazy, though? He's only like 5'7", man. I'm taller than that guy. Bro, he's low ass. And I'm like, yo, you really high on David for Shushan and Porky Medina? But you critical of Canelo. <laughs> I, can't, I don't understand it. Like, I can't, can't wrap my mind around that shit. Haters will do anything. They'll do mental gymnastics just to hate this guy. Even though you can point out that uh, Billy Joe Saunders got all the belts when he was in Great Britain. He was also a champion who fought better competition. And, like, he was just a more consistent 168-pounder. You can't convince him of that. He was Euro trash. No, nah, yeah, like, 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 I'm going to be real. Ward beating Kessler and Frotch, all right, that's, you know, the, I'm not even saying those are bad wins, but the only reason they get talked up is to suit the narrative. Your whole thing is Canelo went on a tour of Euro bums, but then we shifted over. Oh, no, no, that was different. That was called Fry. No, no, it's not different, fam. It's literally, no, it's not. You're saying that these fighters are not good fighters based on where they're from. That's why you keep calling them Euro bums. All right, that's what Ward was fighting. Shit don't make sense. I just got to say, bros, it's kind of sad seeing Herring go out like this. He, It's time to hang him up. I was about to ask, are y'all scoring this? It looks like he's losing not, badly, man. It like he's losing. Like even Alexis just tweeted it. Like no one, I could see why him and Bomac might have split. It just looks like it's time. You know what I mean? Yeah. Mm -hmm. He's getting worked in that corner, bro. No shame, though. I mean, you're a good dude. He always gonna be a good dude. But every, you know, it's a time. It's a time. <clears throat> no, he's got a good dude. He's got a future in the sport as a commentator. People like yeah. him across the board. He'll be fine. Absolutely, be man. Yeah, Ortiz is so strong for him. Yeah, he got too much punch, man. He was working him in that corner, man. Can't keep him off, can't keep him out. Um, but yeah, yo, I think Canelo should just ace out the shit out of everybody. Like, I like, I think he's being. Uh, Drew says it all the time. Even Floyd wasn't just giving out ten million. Like, no, fam, he was not paying not none of these guys that kind of bread. You being too gracious, ace out the shit out of these guys. Like, bro, if you want the fight, you can get the fight. On my terms, because you ain't shit. What you want a belt here? Take a fucking belt. And how are you gonna sell? What are you the, gonna sell? You said that, Jules. I guarantee you, if Bob Arum had uh, some hold over Canelo's career at this level, he'd be telling him a side the fuck out of everybody. Because that's what you're supposed to do. Bob you would be a shark are, you, if he had Canelo in his pocket. You don't do all that to be fair to these fucking bloodsuckers because they bloodsuckers. For the last two and a half years, none of y'all wanted to fight each other because all eight of y'all was chasing me. I'm the fuck out of here. I'm not catering to y'all. I feel about Canelo saying that he would have fought Hagler, he would have fought Sugar Ray Leonard. How you feel about that? That he would have? Yeah, he said that before the fight in the buildup. I, I believe him because that's what his record shows me. A 23-year-old Canelo Alvarez fought the number one pound-for-pound -pound fighter in the sport. Am I lying? Absolutely not. A, a, a Canelo Alvarez that had no reason to venture back into a, the light heavyweight division where he's a very small man, he just did that. He didn't have to. I don't care what the revisionists want to say. These guys, 
want to call B-Ball a cherry and all after the fact. After the fact, y'all calling him that. Y'all got all the insights and all, all of everything after the fact. If you thought that B-Ball was a it's like that doesn't make sense. Have you been watching, Dimitri? In what way is he a cherry? It, it don't. I don't care who it came from. It don't make sense. I see a fighter in Canelo that will win or lose, he's willing to fight. He's willing to, he's willing to fight. So I do think he would have fought that. Julius, okay. I just need to ask. I need to ask. Canelo's record shows he'll fight anybody. So how is going to light heavyweight a jet picking a cherry, but David Benavidez is fighting David Lemieux years after Gennady fought him. Charlo is fighting Suleki years after Andre fought him, years after Jacobs fought him. He fights Sergey after Gennady batters him, but they're not picking cherries, right? Exactly. It doesn't make sense. Like this is this is why this is why I'm so vehement when it comes to this conversation because everybody from the fighters to the media to some of the fans they let these guys get away with that shit. Like yo, y'all really not gonna say nothing that he fighting David Lemieux? Lit really? You gonna shit on Billy Joe Saunders that Billy ain't shit? But Billy beat David way before David Benavidez. But he ain't shit. But David supposed to be the shit because he about to fight David Lemieux. It don't make sense. Charlo supposed to be the shit because he going to fight the Suzuki that Jacobs already beat, that Andre. It don't make sense. You know what I think it is? I think it's literally because he got taken off the top of the pound for pound list. I think the haters in their mind believe that that actually means something, that he's no longer the best fighter at or around 160 to 168. You know, I think that Canelo is not only game, he's good enough to beat just about anybody at 168. Even if he wanted to drop down, he could still do that, I think. The only guy at 168 that I would say has a decent chance, not a great one, a decent one because of his size, and maybe that size will be durability, though I really I really doubt it, is David, David Benavidez. But you're not no great boxer. Let's get that right out the way. You win because you're big. That's why you be winning, because you're big. And the guys you're fighting, well, they're not very good. They can't expose certain things about you. Now, Canelo, he's a lot smaller than you are, but he is a better boxer. And I suspect, I've been saying it, your weight drained. It's just, it don't show because, well, look at who you're fighting. Fucking David Lemieux, Kyron Davis, Ronald L. Like, who are these people, fam? What, like, who are they? Did you see yeah, John just, Hedge just, earlier? John Hedge at uh, 168. He's six foot five. Bruh. What's the guy's name? John Hedge. Oh, the, the kid that fought earlier today. Yeah, I seen him. Yeah, man. Like, that's just crazy that there's that many tall people at and around that weight, all the way down to 154 with uh, the towering inferno. Yeah, uh, but you, you you could see with Sebastian that even though he's super duper tall, that dude don't carry but much, that much weight. Like he really don't. He's not a big guy. Yeah, but it's just I'm I'm seeing like all this new crop of fighters, and it's like a lot of them are way bigger than the one before that the one that we're watching. Do you, you notice that? No, I mean that's the trend for the big guys. That if you a big guy and you could get down and wait a little bit, do it so you could get more life out of your career. Like we know why they do it, I guess. We know why they do it. Kind of like a cheat code. There's negatives to it though, too. So you gotta be, they gotta be careful with that shit sometimes. You know, sometimes no, it really hurts your body when you uh like if you like like fucking Zerto, bro. He goes from 175 to fucking 200. Like what the fuck? You know what's funny, y'all? Seeing Victor Ortiz back in the ring. <laughs> Victor what? Ortiz is back in the ring. He's, oh he's, fight, what, he's, he's fighting again? Are you serious? Why? Why? <laughs> Wait, you took what you watching the PBC show? What? Victor Ortiz is fighting again? Yeah, I just saw Jake Donovan Dake, uh Donovan tweet. That he gonna have a fight? Or that he that he, what is is what you mean like, he's in the ring? What you watching the showtime card? Yeah, so I'm looking on Twitter right now. Bro, that's fucking crazy. Victor Ortiz should not be fighting. You heard it? <laughs> <laughs> Victor Ortiz should First not be fighting. Man. Fuck my, man, my man's lost to Robert Guerrero, man. Like, Bro, that dude should not be fighting, fam. 
They conjuring up all the old ghosts. All yeah, the no, old I just spirits. tagged you in it, Jules. I can't believe he's in the ring. <laughs> they conjuring up all the old ghosts. All the That's old spirits. That's insanity, man. I mean, Lemieux is I, like I, I, ancient. I tell you what, though, I'd pay for Victor Ortiz. Um, um, I can't think of his name right now. Him and they're both from Canada. Who's the guy? Who's what's his name, Gal? Victor Ortiz and who from Canada? No, from Kansas, he had beef with. He was always with a uh, on top. Oh, of you took wait, wait. Who you talking about? Bam Rodriguez. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They should have been for it though. Them dudes I don't still pay to see that shit. <laughs> nah, them, them two old dudes need to just sit down somewhere, B. Yeah, they gave the fight the motherfucking what you call it. Herman lost the fight. Damn. Time hang up. Time hang up. It might be. It might be. Face the young, strong guy. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? And we bought the it's, it's about to be Yanni back time. Let me look at this showtime card and see what the fuck going on. Kazakh style. I just hope he kill him quick and, and, and send a message. Oh yeah. Daddy, he has no idea what, what he's about to be in store. Uh, you know what's funny is what everybody criticizing Canelo. If David had kept the belt, he'd be fighting Abney and David Lemieux. That would be part of his literally. Role. That's that's the craziest part that they get mad as if Canelo picked like Avni was the mandatory before Canelo even came back down. He was already the mandatory for David. You think that shit happened by accident? He fights Anthony Durrell, loses, but keeps the mandatory status. You think that Canelo did that? No, Al Heyman did that because he wanted David to be in an easy ass fight. Shit ain't happened by accident. He just got stopped in his last fight, too. Yildrum. Y'all know that? He just had a fight where he got stopped. I don't think the Showtime card started yet, matter of fact. No, it hasn't. It doesn't start till 10. Oh, oh yeah. God. See, fuck that shit. I ain't going to be hurting my ass on this shit waiting for David to kick a can. <laughs> 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 That's too goddamn late for me, shit. Oh, wait. It's 9.33. I'm st still, I ain't going to sit through that whole shit. I'm going to lay down. Once David and David is in, I'm going to lay the fuck right down and watch that shit. Yeah, how do you think Jermell Charlo fares at 160? But one question, if he drops his belts, he's going to be out of your power for poundless, right? Yeah, that's the way it works. Because I don't know who you are at 160, you know what I mean? You was the yeah. shit. You was the shit. At 50 and I always say this. It, it Look, we literally watched it happen to Canelo. You fought a prime, young, unbeaten champion at a weight where you don't have a lot of experience. You not who you are at 168, at 175. We saw that. Motherfuckers want to, it's the skin. No, it's the fucking size, fam. It's the size. It's not just the skill. He got the right style. I said that, but it's also the size. He can't put a dent in that guy. He's too he big. It's not a, real it's big. Young, to be honest, it's, it's not people. complex at all. It's a mix. It's a mix. We all knew that Bivol had the style, and but it's that he had the... The durability plays a huge factor in it, but his sheer size. Even though he didn't weigh more much than Canelo, it's just the fact that he's used to fighting guys up there that are like that a two, bit, two hundred. A, bro, a dude, Smith, a dude like a that could eat a dude that could eat a flush right hand from from Joe Smith Jr. Right? It's gonna be hard for Canelo to put yeah. a dent on a dude like that. I kept that. telling people, I'm, I kept telling people, bro, nobody's ever hurt this dude except Joe, and it was one shot. And he, you know, he stayed up for it. He was wobble, but bro, the, when you get hit like that, it does give you a bit of resistance. You know, like there's a there's a good side to being hurt in boxing. You know, like you yeah. you're like oh shit, you used to you know you're used to more damage than this. Like Canelo will hit nowhere near as hard as Joe. That's why when I saw oh, him yeah. punch him, I'm like, bro, he's getting no reaction on the bivol. Like his head's snapping up, but he just he's just like I don't care. <laughs> like you didn't hit me with nothing. After I don't he think felt he's that shot, rematch, bro. after he felt that shot from Joe, I mean Canelo's punches weren't nothing. He was like, oh, I can handle this fine. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. What do you think and that's does, not and to me, like I said, it's not taken away from Dimitri's beat uh, uh victory over um Canelo. No, it, it's just that's boxing, bro. Look, look at what happened to Chocolatito when he had first moved up to Superfly. He was getting hit, he was getting marked up. You lose something on the way up. Yeah, it happens. Look at what sword did he had a war, I believe it was with Quadras. He had some knots, and then he fought Saw. He got knocked the fuck out in the rematch. It took time. Not like now. I feel like now Chocolatito is fully acclimated to Superfly. But when he first moved up, yeah, he's getting touched, man. He's getting touched. I think touched. that's why he's. I think that's why the one reason he's he's uh, still really good right now is because like as time is going on, he's gotten older. But he's like actually acclimated to the weight more. 
you know. No, I agree. Hey, Manny Pacquiao said once he got that uh had that uh belt from Margarito, he was like, "Fuck that belt, I'm out. I'm not fighting these big ass dudes." Real I'm shit, like bro. Ain't, ain't staying up here with y'all dudes. Y'all dudes take mad punches, be like, "Fuck that." I really, I think. Look, he need to call that. Maybe if you, if you want to revisit undisputed at light heavyweight, let the division sort itself out. Let it sort itself out. You know what I mean? Like let let Dimitri do that dirty work. Let him fight the winner of Smith versus Better Beef, and then you fight the winner because you're Canelo Alvarez. God damn it! You know what I'm yeah, saying he doesn't need no rematch contract to rematch people. Well, he could tell him, "Hey, let's rematch." tomorrow and he'll be like yeah let's fucking do it because who the fuck else is gonna pay dimitri all that money not him i'm saying well bob is banking on though and i think it was east on that tag me to the shit was it you east on the tag me to that video of bob you heard what bob said did y'all hear about what he say? he want dimitri to cross the street <laughs> right like that's oh did dimitri get paid yet i don't even know bro I don't know why he nah, can man. somebody clue me in why had why did he not get paid? So so uh it's the government bodies that uh put pusieron clausula because of the whole freaking war thing. They're that's it's because of the war thing, they're messing with his money, man. Which is really because sad. I kept hearing people like say it. Eddie didn't pay him. I'm like, what you mean Eddie didn't pay him? Nah, it's not Eddie. Heck no, it's not Eddie. Five million dollars, somebody's gonna die, trust me. Bro, you better go up there and box Mauricio Suleiman and all them cats. Like, yo, give me my money, Gilberto, or you going to be the next motherfucker end up on box rack. My next one going to be you. Give me my money. Pay that man his money. He earned every single penny of that money. Okay, I got I got something. Had. He says, B-Ball himself explained that his payment had stood out yet due to sanctions imposed on Russian athletes in the wake of the Kremlin's invasion of Ukraine in February. So, mm. yeah, I mean, Eddie should cut him a check for something at least, man. Yeah, just you know, cut him a check, cut bro, him a check, man, for like a million, two million, like whatever. And you know, just and just take it out of Canelo's purse, I guess, or what something, you know what I mean? Bro, shit. Yeah. <laughs> so, how many rounds will it take Yanni Beck to stop this dude, man? I don't think he goes past five. Eight. Do you know anything about this dude? I don't know anything about the guy. Bro, I have never him. seen Danny Dignity. I've never seen him. <laughs> That's what he's one that he or hits just right. brown knockout. All I know is he's Julius? A, he, yo. Julius, uh, is he son in the program? The show? Oh, he right there. He right there. Let me see. I got him. Thank you, Leo. Thank you. My bad. My freaking internet went. But uh, Julius, I was trying to ask you. What do you think Canelo does, man? He's supposed to be making a decision this week or next week, apparently. Uh, uh, being Not what I, you I, think I, he should do, but what do you think he does? Like, you know, that pride. Yeah, this motherfucker going to flip it. Going to flip yeah, it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Because I know what you about. You about to give me some political shit. You about to give me some political shit. I need to be real with you. Because he a man, man, I could literally see him running it back with Dimitri. Like, no. Yep. I, 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 I could see him doing that. Like, me thinking, I'm like, yo, you don't need that, but you never needed him to begin. Like, like, I don't actually want him to fight the dude again. I hope no, go fight Gennady, fam. Like, chill the fuck out. Julius, what me is like, yo, he might fight the dude again, fam. Like, Julius, wait, wait. This is not my take, but I think it's the right one. Someone say it in the Sean Porter podcast. Let's say Canelo changed some things. For the rematch against people, does he need? Does he really need to change so much? Because he lost the fight, but in the cars, he was close. So maybe he needs to do a little bit more, and he can get the W. All right, what he needs to do, this is like this is just me looking at it. You need to fight him the way you fought Danny. You were loading up on your punches. Let the punches flow. You just need to be busier. You don't need to put it down. And more importantly, you can't. So don't look to do that. You need to be busier. You need to just plant your punches. Let the punches flow. Be busier. Two, move your head. Like, like he did it in the fight, but he looked uncomfortable doing it. Now you know how much you have to do that. I was literally expecting him to fight Dimitri the way he fought Danny. And the way he fought Danny, 
he was coming forward, slipping and sliding. Like, nah, I'm gonna get it. Like, I'm gonna come forward so I can get you to throw. Then when you throw, I'm gonna slip and slide. And even if you don't land nothing, because I'm coming forward, I'm winning a round. Even if you don't like, just get the visual that if Dimitri's jabbing and boxing on the back foot, that I'm gonna force you back. Canelo, uh, I'm Canelo. I'm gonna force you back. If I'm forcing you back and I'm slipping and sliding, I'm not even gonna try for no punches yet. I'm gonna try to get you on the ropes. And then I'm going to unload. It ain't even going to be to knock you out. It's just the activity. That's what I thought he was going to do to win. That's what he needs to change. Take whatever you need to take and do whatever you need to do to throw more punches. Because that's the difference that you need. What was glaring was Canelo's not throwing. He's slipping. He's sliding. Like, I don't even like talking about the fight on Twitter anymore because unless I say he got killed, people get upset. No, he didn't get killed. He lost. He got beat. Fair and square, he got beat. But if you're trying to tell me that he got ragdolled, no, he didn't. He didn't get ragdolled. That fight, you know, Julius, you know what I was saying? That fight literally reminded me of the Triple D fight, the first one, in the yeah. sense that Canelo was moving around. And, he, like, you know, he, sometimes he's throwing shots. He came forward more than against Golovkin, but he was throwing shots, but they were pretty ineffective shots. And his arms were down. He was, every time he got hit, basically, he just, he literally come up fast, you know, have a little success early, get, to, get hit once, and then literally – start backing up on the ropes he's ineffective he's moving good good defense on the back foot but no no effective counters but the thing with this fight is is he got so outworked i think he only landed double digit punches in like two rounds in the whole fight yeah he wasn't throwing the double digits in every round yes it was just it was really more of bivol did a lot and negated a lot of what he could do and he didn't really like he just didn't he wasn't effective at all it wasn't that he got beat up he didn't get ragdolled although i remember there was towards the end of the fight it was one combination of Bevo through, and like it like pushed him into the ropes, and I was like, "Oof, man, Look, this is gonna." This there were two scary. moments. There were two moments in the fight where I look where I saw that he can get stopped. It was in the first half and the last half that he got pushed into the ropes by a shot, and Bevo was letting him go. There's something that Roy said, like round ten or something. No, it wasn't Roy. It was Antonio Tava. Antonio Tava said this shit, and it's scary because it's true. <laughs> Canelo looked like he wasn't pushing him. And Antonio said, yo, the reason he not pushing him is because he suspected that Dimitri has another gear. If you push him, he's going to push back. If he pushes mm -hmm. back, mm -hmm. he's going to knock you out. Yep. Scary and, shit, and, yo. And, it's, and, you know, I feel like Canelo, I, I think that's a big thing going to this rematch. He definitely, if he can be, I know he's prideful and everything, but, bro, you're realistic. He knows, he privately thinks to himself, like, yo, I was pretty fucking tired towards the end of that fight. This dude was started hitting me a little bit clean, and because he did, he started to get hit cleaner as the fight went on too. You know that the body movement does stop a little. Bit. Fucking Dimitri Bivol got Isa on yo. Yeah, he was yeah. giving away too much of the plan. But I saw the fight. Uh, <laughs> Damn, I saw the fight. Did, 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 did that disconnect? It yeah. did. I thought the yeah. I thought Dimitri abducted you, yo. <laughs> Giving away too much of the plan. Yeah. When when I saw the the, the repeat round after round, when Canelo was getting hit, the look of Canelo's face was this not this motherfucker really hit me that hard? What the fuck? Think long and hard, Canelo. Think long and hard. Pride comes just before the fall. It's like if we're talking about gear, it's just like it's like because I saw the fight again, like just for the second time, and I'm like, this is gonna sound crazy, but I think Dimitri, man, it's like we, it's like he was just content. Well, luckily, he he he, he was not a, like I felt that he wasn't in seek and destroy mode in that fight. Like I said, I, I said if he could just like put some punches together and like just just really really load up on his time, he could probably drop Canelo and get him out of there. Stylistically, it's, it's just it's never, it's, it's, stylistically, it's never not going to be a stylistically, it's never not going to be a frustrating fight. The only way Canelo wins that fight as the smaller man is to come forward, be busier on the inside, and do that for twelve rounds. Because what you're not going to do is knock him out. Nah, be like hey, no. Hey, Isan, AJ, let me ask you two something. Do you think? Yo. Uh, do you think David Benavides would have went 12 rounds with D-Ball? No. No. He gets stopped. I think he gets I think he gets go countered I don't, early. I don't think so. No, no, no. I think he'd go 12. I think he could land something that makes Dimitri uh, respect him. And then Dimitri chooses to, okay, box from the outside, I'm a pot shot you. 
because they, look, styles make fights. Benavidez has the height to where it's not as laboring to cut the ring off and, and try to get Dimitri, you know, but he, Dimitri, to his credit, he has the legs to spin off the ropes. You know what I mean? He's already dealt with fighters that are taller than him that want to, want to crowd him. Lennon Castillo, uh, Craig Richards. I will say that I think Benavidez is busier with his punches than they are, but he's a mid range to inside guy. You see what I mean? That would be his downfall in the fight. You want to be close to Dimitri when you let him go. And that to me is what would cost him the fight. Now, if you got a guy who's good on the outside that he could step into them straight punches, okay, now Dimitri might have a problem. You know, like, yeah, you might have a problem with a guy like that. Or if you got a guy like Artur to where he has just this ridiculous fucking power in both his, like, bro, that dude don't need no, he don't need to load up or nothing. The punch could be this far away and he'll knock you out with it. It could be this far away. That's why I say training with that man is suicide. It seriously is. You know what I mean? He's a bad man. But I honestly think, yeah, Benavidez goes 12 with b but he loses on points. He loot like, you yeah. Think he, he can get dropped. Possibly, yes, because he squares up when he comes forward. He is not accustomed to return fire. And any fighter that's like that, the, 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 warning, the warning signal is that look at the guys that David fights, right? These guys can't return fire. Like, they're not fast enough. They don't have the ring savvy or the selection. They're throwing the right punches to respond. They don't have that. So you've been fighting people like that for, I don't know, what, three, four years now? Maybe, well, no, Durrell was okay. I, I Durrell was okay. But you've been fighting people like that for like two and a half years, fam. This is not David Lemieux we're talking about. <laughs> you know what I mean? This is not Kyron Davis. I'm just being... And, and, when you keep fighting people like that, Dimitri might surprise you. That's true, man. I, I feel like Dimitri would stop him. I feel like he would. I don't know about stopping him, but I'm I'm fairly confident he would outpoint him. Fairly. Like, yeah, he'd outpoint you. And two, when when there's things that happen in a Benavidez fight, right? That won't happen in the B-Vol fight, and the same is true in reverse. There are things that don't happen in your average David Benavidez fight that will happen with B-Vol. You're going to get tired of chasing this guy around, bro, because he's, you know, the people you fight ain't shit. I'm sorry, but they ain't shit. With B-Vol, you got a guy that's hard to hit, hard to pin down, can move for all 12 rounds. His punch selection is great. He has speed in those hands, so he can hit you and keep you moving around while you getting hit. Yeah, you're going to get tired. You're going to get tired. And when you get tired, what happens? You get hit clean, cleaner. So I can see him getting dropped. Also, sorry for punching him so much because, yo, Dimitri is durable. I don't think David's power will affect him. I don't think so. I got a a tough question for y'all. I got a tough question for (laughs) y'all. Does Artur stop him? Who? Dimitri. Who? Uh, no. I don't think so. Yeah, I don't think. No, you know what it is? Is th- he has the power to stop anyone at 175 pounds? So let's get that straight. He got the power to stop. He'll stop everybody on the panel when he hits Dimitri, right? <laughs> but I just don't think he gets the shot. That's what I was gonna say. It's not enough to have power. You have to the, land. I think Dimitri, uh, I think he beats Artur pretty soundly. I, I, I keep saying that fight is going to look like Usyk Garcia. Yes. He's on the outside getting peppered with shots. This is, and thank, thank you. Because you know, Garcia has enough power to stop damn near anything at Cruzo. Okay. Yeah, he could stop anything if he I lands. Think he could hurt Katzak heavyweight, to be honest with you. Yeah, he, well, he he did hurt the Polish guy that he fought the last time, but that was remember, months. bro. These cruiser these cruiserweights are fucking heavyweights, really. Like they like they're fucking six, six five, bro. At fucking so, what the fuck, bro, So so it's it's not it's it's not can he? It's more like are you gonna be able to deliver the power? And that is where I say no. It's it's gonna be he's gonna pivot and shift around you, jab jab jab, mm-hmm. get all the way out, walk you into something because Artur is not a mid range to outside guy. He's the guy that needs to be close to you. One inch punches, bro. He got them one inch punches. Yeah, 
you know what I will say though? He has developed a, a sneaky straight right with that could actually hit you from a distance, but it's just that's not his primary shot. When he does damage, it's him right up on you, hitting you with more. He up close, he's actually has fast hands because his punches are so damn short. And they come from so many crazy angles. But with Dimitri, I think he's going to – because the more Artur puts it on him, the more Dimitri's going to turn it up. And I think there's yeah. a possibility that Artur actually gets stopped in that fight. Because if you punch Ooh. with dude, if you punch Ooh. with dude, if you punch with him, if you punch with him, Julius, you can catch him with something heavy. That's and like, and boy, that is how you, and what I like. You know what I like about Dimitri? All elite-level fighters do this. And it, it goes – it doesn't get talked about as much as the, the stuff that's on the surface. The elite guys don't take turns. They'll they'll end your turn for you. The the regular, the B and the C and the D, they take turns like uh 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 uh. uh, uh, uh. Dimitri will set up a counter while you in the middle of your shit. Like no, fuck yep. that. Shit. Yep, he's not waiting for you to finish. He's literally as you as you're punching, he's looking at what you're throwing and he's saying, "Here's my chance," and he catches you. That's how Arthur got hurt by Callum Johnson. That's how he got hurt by um Page. I think I think if anybody gets stopped in that fight, it's our tour for real. I would bet Listen, I would bet yeah. money on the, Bill. The more that I think I'm, about it too, man. The, if yeah, if, like if Artur would have won that Arthur fight, really? I wouldn't shave for three months, bro, just because that's a oh, hairy no, bro. bro, that dude hairline is like oh. right here, fam. Yeah, dog. <laughs> hairline is literally like right here. Like, bro, what are you? Do you yeah. think Arthur really has that see. much power than Joe Smith Jr.? I feel like he absolutely does. Absolutely he does. But not that much. I think it's power. I think it's heavier and like I it's just it's just I don't it's just freakish, bro. It's because he literally you see he, he, no. he doesn't load up on anything really, bro. He turns it over, but he don't load up on nothing. He throws one inch punches and they like the body shots really are what, are what really like bro, a couple rounds of, if I were Arthur Bro, I would live off the body in the first few rounds of every single fight, bro. You know it's gonna be real. Right? I do think he like a truck. Look, Joe, Joe gotta come from here with the right. Like, yeah, Joe hit hard, but he has to get his arm out for there to be something mm -hmm. on the punch. Distance. Fucking art torque, it could be this much space, and he'll knock a motherfucker out with that. Did you and see and his recent totally that one that one inch punch hits harder than Joe's best. Joe is like he needs distance. That's why I think Arthur beats him because Arthur is gonna slip his because Joe's shots hard to see. Um, Art and Arthur is a pretty good no, boxer for what it's worth. Arthur do this flash shit. Up, he can Ar see it. Arthur yep. do this flash shit now. Like he did crouches, it in the burn fight. Like, he coming forward. Side to side. He catching shit and he catching shit like now. Nah, you ain't just gonna hit me like. Bro, I think Joe is gonna get hurt, bro. Oh, he's gonna get fucking hurt. Bro. I'm gonna be there for that shit. I'm gonna be there for that shit. I can't wait to see that shit. Bro, Man, the blood is gonna, gonna fly out into the bro. audience and hit Eason right in the eye. Yeah. <laughs> bro. Oh, yo, I got two. <laughs> you get money, oh, oh, yo, yo, that's I'll gonna be Eason's profile pick. Like he gonna have <laughs> no smart <laughs> blood on his face. Hey, Eason, where's that <laughs> fight taking place at? MSG, Madison bro. Square Garden. It's a three hours from home. I'm going there, my friends. Guys, if I put my friends on to some fights, so. Joe Say it again, Leo. Jr. If I remember correctly, Joe Smith, Joe Smith Jr. got his jaw broke by Solomon Barrera, I think. Yeah. He yep. kept fighting. Yeah. But that was in the, like, the third round, the second round. Mm -hmm. It was very early. And Solomon Barrera is good, but. He's not this massive power player. He's, He's not. What do you think Arthur is going to do? He's going to kill his body. I think Arthur is going to kill his body. To be real, I think he's going to. I think he'll stop Joe to the body more than anything. You know what I think? I think now that I think about it, those guys in Joe's corner—they're not stupid. Like they're not stupid. They know what they're up against. And if Joe's getting hit too clean, they'll pull him out. Yep. They'll pull him early. Out. Early, yeah. early, because the thing is, if you get hurt versus Artur and you can't defend yourself, bro, there, there's no like, bro, he's on you. He literally is on you. And Joe just he has nowhere to go, bro. He has, and then when you back him up, he he doesn't look good at all. He has no offense backing up. He shells up and just backs up. I'm like, bro, you were gonna credit to Joe, man, because I I don't see no way he really gotta catch Artur with some with some shit, bro. He needs an Andy Ruiz punch, shit, bro. He, he gotta hit him with the same G. He got a, you remember Zangief and Street Fighter, the double lariat? He got to yep. hit him with that shit. Bro. And he got to spend the whole fight just spinning around in the middle of the ring and hope for the best. If someone asks Arthur Vettelbier, Arthur, what is the best thing in life? What will Vettelbier will say? 
I think he will say, cross your enemies. See them driven before you. Before you? Be the lament of the women? Yes. That I, I can see a bit of him saying that. Yeah, yeah, I don't even get that reference. One, that's from, um, that's Conan Lao Tzu. That's Lao Tzu. And Co but they used it in Conan, though. Crush your enemies. See them driven before you. And here's the lament of the women. The lamentation. <laughs> Lament the lamentation. Yep. Hey, y'all know, hey, know who Danny Dignam looks like? He looks like Pee Pee Longstock and Golden Brother. Yes, he does. Don't he? Don't he? <laughs> If you know, 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 know. Older brother, that's what he look like. He's making the right decision. He's making the right decision. He He's retired, so that's good. Did he lose? Danny, Danny about to get the shit beat out of him. Bro. Did he lose? <laughs> yeah, he lost. He lost. First round KO. <laughs> wow. He hey, lost, Isan. Bro. What's up? Uh, where's Polo making excuses for Mexicans today? Bro, that dude is oh man, Polo. He's he's a sad case, man. He don't he don't talk to us on he don't he don't be talking no more to me. I'm like, all right, man. Not not like, not like anymore, but he, he used I got, to I always got hop in my because I be doing those faces on my class board and shit. We used to always jump on now. That motherfucker never gets a mic. I'm like, damn, bro, it's not even that serious, man. I don't even disconnect for losing. I'm just happy I made some fucking money. <laughs> Look, man, really? shit. Look, Look, man, shit, man. It hurts, all right. I know. Hurts. That's why. That's why Jules don't like when you share the Roy Jones anniversary. <laughs> oh, oh. Shit. Floyd scored a knockdown in that shit. Let me see. Who? I'm watching the highlights of of the Don Moore fight. Oh God. <laughs> he scored a knockdown in round eight. Wow. Yay. That was a... Fucking just... sad, bro. Floyd has no shame at this point. He really doesn't. No, nah, he doesn't. He's sparring. Old, he fighting old sparring partners now because the celebs don't want nothing to do with him. Logan Paul dragging his name in the mud. Well, how much you had to yeah. Where, where more else to is uh, Yanni Beck from? Because I see the Asians holding a different flag. He's from Kazakhstan, bro. He's my countryman. No, but then the Asians are holding. A, he's he's mixed, isn't he? No, he's Kazakhstanian, like me. You're Kazakhstanian. Yeah. I went. <laughs> <laughs> and you got that Dominican flow too, right? Bro, I'm from everywhere. I've been everywhere, man. Cross desert, it's bare, man. Didn't you tell me you were part you were part Mexican too? Was that was that for I, I am I'm, Mexican I'm, in you? Tambien. Tambien. All right, let's see. Let's wrap this shit up, Yanni Beck. First round. Let's get him out of here. Yanni Beck looks like he wanna catch a party tonight. Hey, Jules, let me ask you a hypothetical question. Mm. Would you rather be there for the Max Schmeling, Joe Lewis uh, rematch, mm. or, or would you rather be there for the George Foreman versus Joe Frazier first fight? Max Schmeling. Why is mm. that? Uh, I, the way that Joe got beat, Right, since we're talking about the rematches, I wouldn't have saw a need for a second Joe Frazier fight. So I'm been like, Pfft. but the 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 unless I'm mistaken, Max Schmeling won the first Joe Lewis fight, right? Correct. Yeah, so I would want to be there for the get back. Is that this? You need to get it back. So yeah, I would want to be there for the get back. Now, yep. what if I told you that it's been confirmed that Joe Lewis actually ruptured Max Schmeling's vertebrae with a single punch in that fight? Fuck! Oh, you, are you, are you, are you wow. never knew that? Oh, you, you never knew that, Jules? Jules, you never knew that? I didn't Not know that either. Man. Oh yeah, he ain't lying. <laughs> That's insanity, man. Yep, bro. How you punch somebody in their back and destroy their vertebra? Yeah, Joe fucked him up. <laughs> they said that he screamed so loud they could hear him all the way in the back. You lying? No, I'm serious. Yeah. Are you serious? <laughs> you know what? Yanni Beck's punches look more fluid. He doesn't look as robotic. A little snappy, a little... Yeah, see? Ooh! 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 Fuck! Oh. Do you Whoa. see that four Whoa. punches? Kazakhstan, you son of a Kazakhstan. bitch! Kazakhstan. Yo, that was fast. Bro, he fucking lit his ass up <laughs> quick fit ass. Buddy <laughs> McGirt. <laughs> Buddy McGirt, baby. Got him a bird. Yeah, this ain't going five. This Jermel ain't going versus five. Johnny Beck. Oh, oh, 
2023. Oh, my God. Oh, my Come on, come on, come on. Bro, they are going to have so much trouble getting this guy fights. <laughs> bro, we're going to fight this guy. Come on. Come on, bro, I'm going to fight this guy. Nobody ain't going to want to fight him, fam, unless you offering up, like, like fucking yeah. retirement money. I'm really wondering what the middleweight division he is going to be. better. Years. He, he does look better. He does. I, I've been to two of his fights live, Jules. He does look more fluid today. He looks more fluid. The punches are flowing. Like, he looked robotic with Endom and, and, and just predictable, whereas now he's just letting him go. Like, oh, my God. That fight with Endom was so fucking boring. Bruh. This is, is much – he's he's improved. He has improved. Is it just me or do I want to see – am I the only one that wants to see Alan Babbitt on every card ever? Oh, God, that fight was so fucking great, bro. Yo, could you imagine him with Rosinski, the Canadian kid that fought Rivas? Hey, you know, it's funny, though. Leonard Ellerby been taking L's all week on social media and in interviews. <laughs> Leonard is it, though. As soon as Eddie told him, bro, who are you? You work for Floyd Mayweather. And someone just someone tagged him in that interview with Roger Mayweather Mayweather asking him, what has Leonard done? <laughs> because, that's, no, because that's real. Like yo, fam, you a water boy. Chill out. You you a towel carrier, fam. Yeah, you he, really he act like, a lot for his he, like he carries lost jock strap. That's all he's that's all he's ever done. Exactly, like yo, dog. You probably do two shows a year, fam. Like, come on, like, fuck, fuck. And it's two. all Gervonta. That's it. Exactly. Hey, remember, remember, Jules, when Floyd was all pissed off after the my Donna fight, he said my family didn't get the seats. The whole promotion was hectic and unprofessional. That was all Leonard. That was his first big show. Wow. Oh snap! Good old South Paws. I didn't realize that. Boop. Right on time. You do it at a purpose, ain't you, country? <laughs> no, nah, man. You know what it is? Is my uh, my notifications for text messages, man. So people do that, and it's totally random. But it's, he, it's ooh, the timing's been wonderful, bro. Yanni Beck got to go in the intro. You know what I love about Top Rank? They always post the ringside highlights to their Instagram. So I will be getting my Yanni Beck. He, he's going in the intro. God damn it! Because I feel it and I smell it. Now, what do we have a, a name pronunciation for Yanni Beck? Yet, an alteration like Devon Haney. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's not we... Devon, it's Devine. Oh, it's bro. coming. Julius Bundy. just hasn't thought of it yet, but it's coming. <laughs> yeah, I gotta, th I gotta think of something because his name is pretty fucked up as it is. It's Bundy. hard. To... Hey, Jules, you Bundy. do that, you might improve on his name. <laughs> I might make it easier to remember. Wait, call him up. Call him. Call him. Jam Aline. Jam Aline. <laughs> Why are you dropping? Well, mm, good straight left hand. And that was ooh. Oh, oh. Yo, did Danny take a good straight left. I give him that fucking. I mean, shit. British boys have chins though. They do because he took a couple. He took a couple of those. But he can't keep getting hit like this. This is only round two. Jeez. Yeah, it'll be an early night if he does. Oh, he's hurt. Oh. He's hurt. Yeah. Oh. I know. Oh. 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 Fucking oh. fuck. That's oh. it. Go slap him. Holy shit. Oh. shit. Yo, B. Wow. Get Buddy this McGurk. Man more fights. Wow. Yeah. I guarantee you they say they will say that Andre ducked him. I will guarantee they say that Andre ducked this guy. Oh, oh, oh. I mean, because he did. Oh, wow. Andre did duck that guy. Hell no. I mean, they already saying no, it is what I'm saying. They already guy. saying that. Like, don't blame me. I'm just telling y'all. They already saying that. I know. It, to me, it's dumb. Andre Zach Parker. Andre Zach Parker ducked. is not a lower level fighter than Yanni Beck. They're literally both in the same position. High ranked contenders, literally. Both of them, and then both of them have thin resumes. It's just that he's going for a third division. So, I mean, well, to me, no, right. Right. The fucking right. Right. no, he did. He did make Rob Brandt say no mas. He did, and and I think that that's pretty goddamn good. 
It's it's good, but I mean, how great is it? I mean, I'm ha- I'm happy for Buddy McGurr. He deserves a a, a top fighter. But he's Look at that man, dude. Yeah, he's like the replay out. on that. That just came out of nowhere. Fucking top rank need to hurry up and post that motherfucking shit. Kazakh style, baby. Bruh, that was a beautiful. That was a beautiful uppercut. This this, that was, gonna be a, this this man's gonna be a champion. He's picking up one of these belts for sure. I see right. your boy uh, Egus right there, Jules. Yeah, he, you know he handle all the Eastern Euros, bro. You know that. He got stable of killers. He knocked the shit. Let's see that one more time. Oh, here we go. Uh, off the jab, off the jab, off the uh, straight left hand, straight left hand. Wow, oh. bro, that was fucking beautiful. Wow, bro. that was the shot selection is just so much more fluid than it was before. It was just this. He was just throwing a one and a two and a one and a two. Now he he throwing different shit. Oh, he need to see that up coming. He just could, he just blindsided him with that shit. Can we seat. all just say thank you to Yanni Beck for ending it early so Jules can be Let me make everybody mad. Let me, I'm, Yanni Beck sleeps, Charlo. <laughs> well, that's I mean, yeah, that, that left hand, so. that left hand yeah. wouldn't miss. I just, I just want to make everybody mad. Yanni Beck, well, I want to get everybody mad because the PBC cast has been mad all week, so I'm going to make him real mad. Yanni Beck sleeps, Charlo. But tell me, Charlo man, got the I really, head I, to I get really, away from that. I really man. do hope we get some of those uh, DAZN uh, numbers, though. I really do. I mean, I am curious what those numbers are, but I mean, Eddie said there'll be an announcement about it. I really hope that there is, you know, some. I hope Lance reports it, some shit. That way the fucking shills can't be like, oh, no, Eddie's just lying. Let me, again, I mean, let me say, look, lying, sweet, lying. look, Eson, let me say this, right? Because this is what, and, and it's like, yo, I'm too smart for boxing Twitter. Because boxing Twitter, for the most part, is just full of fucking mouth breathers and idiots, right? Amen. Everybody's focusing on North American pay-per-view buys, right? But what they're not understanding is the fight got seen in different territories. And the fight getting seen in different territories means subscribers. It's tantamount to saying that, okay, maybe it's not it's $80 in the UK. Maybe it's less than that or whatever. It's not pay-per-view at all. But it's a subscription-based platform. You understand? You're literally getting money from everyone that's watching. It's not the same as doing a million views on Fox. You know what I mean? You ain't getting no money off of a million viewers on Fox. Whereas with this, like, and I said this about the Katie Taylor fight, 1.5 million views, you do realize that means 1.5 million subscribers that you're getting money from. You know what I mean? It gets lost in translation that even without the North American pay-per-view buys, even without that, these are all people you're getting money from. Shouldn't go over anybody's head. This is not a terrestrial network to where you just get a million views and it doesn't translate into dollars. Every view you're getting, no matter out of all those 170 territories, that is dollars. But everybody just wants to talk about North American pay-per-view buys. As if anybody in North America is selling 600,000 pay-per-view buys. No. None of them guys over there selling 300,000 pay-per-view buys. When the last time a PBC fighter, besides Wilder, that got his ass beat, when the last time one of them saw 300,000 buys? Spence ain't seen that since the Mikey Garcia fight. Davis ain't never seen it. They didn't even bother to release the numbers for Ruiz versus... um. Ariola or Ortiz versus Martin. So it's it's this little silly shit. Canelo versus well, Plant. You don't, you don't want to know what else is silly? The Victor Ortiz fight. Yeah, you got a bot in the chat. Rounds. You got a spam in the chat, I think. You got you. Good looks. That was a beautiful fucking knockout. <laughs> Yo, that's Ron Howard's daughter, fam. She is like, so bad. Guys, everyone talks about the amount of money that these guys from the PVC are, are making due to the pay-per-views they are selling, right? I don't think most of the people know how much are making at the end after all the expenses. I don't think even the boxers knows what they are making at the end because no, they, they don't. are not they are not taking them they are not getting the money right on front. They get they're getting month to month, in a year, two years maybe. So mm-hmm. I don't think they know really. 
No, they the don't. Gonna make. No, they don't. They, they, they. Uh, the promoter sees the money before they do. The event coordinators and all of them, they see the money before those guys do. And then obviously they have to pay people. But the other thing is that uh, uh, you have to like. This is what I admire about Ebony Bridges. She capitalizes off of every fight. You know what I mean? After the before the fight and after the fight, she's getting sponsors. She's doing events and meet and greets and going to places. That's literally what you have to do to get the most out of it. Because it's like it's like yeah, it's it's like when you cut a record, you don't necessarily get the most money off the record that you cut. You get the money off the tour, off of touring. You you get money. That's where you get the money at. It's kind of this, it's kind of like that in a sense with her that like yeah you get your purse for when you fight but you could do other things that get you bread a lot of other things that'll get you more bread from more sponsors and people and eventually it'll build to where people will pay you to go to shit you know what I mean but you know average fighter I'm not even gonna blame the fighter I'm gonna blame the managers because it's the managers that are supposed to work all of that out for the fighter and I see that the average manager in the sport does not. They don't do the rounds in the morning shows and the talk shows and all that. Like, I don't do it. I, I I remember this thing. They were talking about Canelo fighting in the UK. Like, okay, you can fight in the, the, the United States of America. I make great money. Maybe you are not going to make the same money in the UK, but let's compare it with artists, with musicians. Every Great, the legendary musician wants to perform everywhere in the world, in every country. That's what they make him legendary. This guy is performing in Dubai, in Indonesia, in China, in Japan, in Europe, in Russia. All the greats have performed everywhere in the world. Why a guy like Canelo, that was, I believe, he wants greatness, will be fighting only in America. Why? Why? It doesn't make sense. And and the other thing is, for a guy like Canelo, Canelo could go to the UK, get a decent-sized purse fighting John Ryder. He could if he wanted to, you know what I mean? Ali, in his day, he didn't stay in one place. He fought around the world. He fought Henry Cooper in the UK. So you can do that. Did you see the interview that uh, Eddie Hearn did on Good Morning Great Britain? Uh, yeah, the one where he was talk where, where the guy was trying to say boxing is dangerous, yada yada yada. See, that's what I'm afraid of if boxing becomes mainstream again, because people they they're only looking at it for the violence. Like, I really wanted to really say something too, because it's like, okay, these guys in the ring they're taking shots, right? We got the pay per view numbers. Okay. okay. Uh, Dan Raphael said that it was well, five hundred twenty thousand. No, I yeah, saw yeah, those. Yeah. What what people look what people are confused about is I guess they weren't paying attention to those numbers. There was a set of numbers that were released before the DAZN numbers. Before Eddie said whatever it was he said, there was a set of numbers that were released, and they were a little over a hundred thousand dollars from another distributor off the DAZN platform. So with the uh, hundred thousand. And the zone numbers, which is around 540, that's 640,000 in total. But for zone, it's only 540. Which yeah, I, I mean, think that's not, I mean, that's not a bad number to be honest with an unknown Russian. It's not. Be, it's not. To be real with you. Well, people, I'm, I think the Triple G fight still does like at least nine, to be honest. That, I, said that he, I, I said that earlier. I said that. I'm like, oh, you could no, do five. It's a million. It is a million. I think it's a million. If, yeah, like if you could do 540 on a platform plus another hundred thousand with a different distributor, if you could do that with Bevo, you could probably do eight and nine with Gennady in a trilogy. Probably more than likely. He just and did that eight, guy does if he does at least did, eight with Plant. For sure. Let's let's say if he does eight, eight he did eight with Plant. What the fuck is Plant? Gennady can definitely do at least two hundred thousand more. Yeah, you don't know how much the gate for Canelo B ball was. I mean, the rematch, the B ball rematch is going to be bigger next time, anyways. If they do yeah. fight again, it's going to be bigger. They'll probably, do, so. they'll probably do a million buys with the rematch if they do the rematch. They'll probably do a million buys. Well promoted, yes. Yeah, but it will be well promoted because now people do know who um Dimitri is. Yeah. 
They know who he is. And look at the ring girls. That's real yeah, nice. Awesome. It's real nice. And the thing about people don't understand about the Golovkin fight, Canelo versus Golovkin. The Golovkin fight is a exciting fight because Golovkin, because this guy is still to this day, 40 years old, is still knocking motherfuckers out. Still knocking motherfuckers out, fam. So there is an element of danger, and it's going to be a fun fight. It's not going to be a boring fight. You got Charlo going a distance with Montiel. And Golovkin out here 40, fam. Fucking 40. Still well, Golov- knocking people out. Golovkin said before that he knew some sort of secret on how to beat Canelo. So I, I want to see if that's true, you know? <laughs> Real shit. He he said, I know, he, he did say that. He said, I know the secrets. I have the keys, but I'm not going to yeah. share them with you. That's Listen, what he said. Golovkin, he, he towards, the, t- towards the end of the second fight, he he got he had just said he learned how to land multiple punches on Canelo combinations, which you don't really see. Now he's older, so I'm not saying he can't land them. I'm just saying what he's talking about is the fact that to like the second half of that fight, he won most of those rounds to me because he was able to start like he turned Canelo and landed multiple punches. And that's what really was having get him success. So I think that's what he's talking about. Not not loading up on shots, he would just touch Canelo and move around. Kind of like what Bivol B- B- did a lot of what Golovkin did, just in a different fashion. He just mm-hmm. touched him with shots, you know, and he but he he was turning Canelo, moving him, not standing right in front of him. It's just that Bivol is a different style, but that's the base game plan he's talking about, in my opinion. Control, at control the distance. He would do Charlo just like that, just mom. <laughs> all the peroxide Charlo right now, bro. All the peroxide will come right out his I hair. Wish could fight. It, it will turn his natural hair color, which is gray. Guys. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine <laughs> Charlie with a great top. <laughs> oh shit! I want to ask you, ask you this because I don't remember. I saw the fight and I didn't see it. But Canelo landed one counter punch in the wall fight. The whole no. fight. No. No. Not one. Not one. Not one. Not one. He looks so Which is... more limited compared to when he was at one sixty. Man, I swear. Like he's not using his tools anymore that I know he had. Down there, Wait, like, let, me, let, let me address. Still. Can I address this cliche? Floyd already showed the blueprint on how to beat Canelo's footwork. Okay, what's the blueprint, bro? Break it down for me because he showed it. I, I love how everything always goes back to Floyd, so I want to know the boxing knowledge. Give me the skinny. What did he show? That's the blueprint. I want to know. I think we'd all like to know that one. Yeah, because if, because if he I showed know. the blueprint, Canelo should have lost. I know. What is what it? you have to be? You have to be in a similar with a similar size to Canelo. You have to be the vex the best boxer in this generation. <laughs> be, yeah. Jules, I got a question. If you are. Probably in the top ten all time right, you can be Canelo. Yeah, thank you because that's that's the blueprint that I see. Now, what's the question? What's the question? Jules, uh, going forward, now that what you saw from Yanni back today, I know it's only two rounds. Do you feel Buddy McGirt's tutelage is finally um, rubbing off, and we're going to see better boxing from him going forward? Yeah, like he's only he's only going to become. Um, I had one hang up with Yanni back. And it's that he seemed real he seemed real heavy on landing the straight. Like you just keep trying to land the straight, and I wasn't seeing variety. In this fight, I saw the straight, I saw it as a setup. I saw the straight, I saw him set up the straight. I saw him shoot the straight as a counter, and I saw him hooking off, and he added a nice little uppercut. So all the things that was hang ups for me, he didn't fix them. He can only get better. The beatings can only get worse. Did you, were you surprised at his hand speed? He finally like showed it off a little bit today. Uh, to be honest, yeah, because I never looked at him as a speed guy, but it, it feels like if he looks faster now, it's because he's not loading up on his punches. He's just letting them flow. Like, just throw, bro. Don't, don't, don't try to tense your arm up before you throw it. Just flow. Let the punches flow, and there'll be more on them because they're coming out faster. That was a beautiful ass whoop. Yeah. 
was beautiful. Two lazy punch, two lazy punches, and the third one with power. I, I mean, he, Johnny Beck cares about your sleep, Jules. He got you out of there before uh, eleven o'clock. I should do an interview with Yanni Beck. I should do like like you know we big fans of you over here. You know that, right? Get Yanni Beck on here. Who else you gonna, who else you gonna beat the shit out of Yanni Beck? Let's talk about it. That'd be cool as hell. He probably don't speak no motherfucking English, fam. Hey, he can I get don't, an interpreter. Don't. Say it again, country. He can get an interpreter, man. That's what they do on, on the interviews. Why not? Why not true. yours? He, he, needs to learn English if he wants to be appealing, man. He needs to learn English if he wants to be appealing. I would ask him a bunch of loaded questions so that everybody get upset. Why is he yellow ducking you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, Joe, Joe, try to, uh, yeah, yeah, Joe, try to, Andre is ducking him. By the way, Jules, try to get Anthony Fowler. I always try to decipher what he's saying. Bro, I can't. I literally don't know what language Anthony is. And I fuck with Anthony's fights. They're never boring. But I literally, I don't know what language he speak. I literally do not know. Like, bro, is that English? Like, what the fuck are you saying? But yeah, I should, I should get Yanni back on here and just ask him mad loaded questions. Why do you feel Charlo is afraid of No, Why is Charlo afraid of you? <laughs> no. hey, Victor man, Ortiz man. got the win today. On point, what? they gonna he's feed him the boots in as well. <laughs> <laughs> he's gonna get a Jules. He's gonna get a big fight now. <laughs> hey, Nunez and, feed... and Fierro is kind of scrappy this first round, man. Let me go to Showtime. I still got it on ESPN. Let me go to Showtime. They probably hey, go. Feed... They oh, probably go feed him the Keith Thurman. Drew had he went on points or did he get a KO? Who? Mm -hmm. Drew, uh, no, Drew, did I, I did Ortiz went on points or he went on he went on points, yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. Well, you, know, what? you know what I was laughing at in the lead in the little promos for Cambosis Haney. Haney's like, if George ain't careful, he's gonna run into my power and gonna get knocked out. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh. I can see he legit oh, said that. He power. said that with a straight face, y'all. Oh, you never know, oh, man. Hey, yo. hey, yo, Jamel, he called the quits. He put out a tweet about a half hour ago. Yeah, he's hanging him up. Yep. Yeah, I see. I see. Okay, yeah, yeah. No? Okay, I, but why Victor Ortiz was fighting now? Why not uh, Guerrero? That's the point. He lost, he lost against Mario Guerrero, right? Yeah. Yep. Jules, he called it. Leo, Jules called it. He's going to be a uh, food for uh, Ennis. Mm -hmm. But they, when you see they rolling out the old timers, bro, they about to feed them to somebody. It's just a question of who. Yep. Hey, I got a question for you guys. Ennis versus Stan Yonis. What do you how, What do you think? Ennis. Yep. Great fight. But I, got not that I don't like Stanley Onis, but Ennis has more variety, and now I know for real, for real, that fucking power is real, bro. That I fucking mean, power, it's real. No, it's real, bro. It's, it's real. real, but I want to see him land <laughs> not on the back of the head. <laughs> I ain't mad at that, bro. I ain't We ain't no bitches around here. But it's, but I ain't what, punch him right in the back of his head. In the back. Let, let me Fuck say that. this. Let me say this. Everyone here knows that Errol Spence throws those, those body shots just in the belt line. Mm -hmm. so, so, can Boots Hennis punch these guys just one inch to, uh, away up from the back of the head? Yeah. I ain't mad at that no, shit. He's gotten, don't bother me. He's gotten perfect at hitting that right spot on the back yeah. of the head. Three in a row. Like, he's targeting it. I'm not mad at it. No, because it's not a rabbit punch. It's not in in the cervical core. It's just at the end of the temporal lobe. I'm still high so off it's that. Not a rabbit punch. Is the main event after the Fierro fight? I think so. Yeah, so, I think this is the co the co main event, and the main event. Are you sure? Guys are undefeated. Finally, finally, 
pushing this, someone. This is an all right fight this, against this each other. Yeah, they're pretty scrappy. Mm. Yeah, they're scrapping. Nunez caught Fierro in that first. At, Nunez you know caught Fierro at the end of that first round, man. He kind of like you know made him do a little dance for a second. Mm. Did he cut him like on the side of the ear or something? Like, it looked like that. Right. So real talk, how far do you think that um, Crawford is willing to go at welterweight before he moves up? He already laid out the plan, bro. He wants to fight Spence and then go up. He not he he not staying at one forty seven beyond that fight. Well, there's him, nothing man. for him there, man. There is no reason to stay there. You're like if he fights Spence, think about it. Who you stay there for? For Thurman? Why not? I think PBC. Listen, I think I think PBC is gonna keep Mel at fifty four for a bit because really think about it. He goes up to say, let's say Jamal goes to sixty eight, vacates his belt. Mel moves up and get it and gets it. After that, what's he gonna do? What fight Lara? Okay, then. Ah, listen to me. Listen to me. I don't think Mel is gonna fight again this year or Jamal. I think they're only gonna fight once. Right? Upon Mel's return, Maul's return, maybe they put him in there with Plant. Maybe they put him in there with Plant on a pay-per-view or whatever. Maybe a pay-per-view. I don't know. But I get the sense that we're not going to see Mel again this year, bro. We're not. And we're not going to see Maul after the Sulietsky fight. So on that schedule, right, he comes back next year. He, like, probably in January or February, and he has his first fight at 168. They need to work it to where Mel can move up and get Maul's belt. That's what. The, that's what, how they got to work it if they want to have a champion at their weight. Yeah, but I just don't think yeah, that the, I, I don't think I don't think that he should move up. There's more money to be made. I feel if you stay at 54 and fight like <clears throat> wait for the winner. Oh my God, you um, think he wants them Fundoria problems. problems? You think he want to deal with the Fundoria? Vacate, fuck that shit. Who cares? Fuck the belt. You know. became undisputed. Vacate and fight like a your fight the IBF mandatory. That's been waiting forever. And then fucking dump the BC if they're on your nuts about it. Fuck it, who cares? You're already undisputed. You're gonna go up to what? You're gonna go up to sixty. You're gonna fight a random. Bro, but how you gonna look ABC. vacating the title and you stay there though? Then everybody gonna say you duck Fundoria. Bro, no, the, no, they're gonna say you chose to fight the winner of Crawford versus Spence. That's what they're gonna say. Some I do so. They, they, ah, bro, bro, it. listen. The same people, ball. the same people that are gonna, this people that are saying, people that are in love with Crawford. I mean, I love with Spence. Are in love with Crawford. I love with Charlo. If just Crawford beats Spence and he goes up and it's still a PBC, the, the people are gonna be fine. Well, there's nothing to say. What the fuck is? Oh, you ducked, you ducked from Dora to fight the best pound for pound fighter in Crawford, who just came, became undisputed at welterweight. What, what the fuck? I don't know. I think it would be smarter for him to stay at fifty four and fight them rather than go to sixty and fight Lara. I'm telling you, he's not going to stay there because Tim Zhu already told him. He has four months to make a decision, bro. With the WBO before he got to vacate that one. Listen, man. Crazy if Crawford thing, wins, yeah. if Crawford wins, Mel stays. I'm telling you. I honestly think that Mel would give uh, Tim Zhu a good fight. I don't think he's gonna stay there, bro. That's all I'm saying. I'd like to see them have a fight. I think it would be a good one. No, well, yeah, I would like to see them fight too. I'm just keeping it real with you. Do you get the sense that he want to fight Crawford? Because I don't. No. Sometimes I think he's crazy enough not to care anymore. Okay, I'm annoyed. Know. There's one more no fight after. Problems. There's another fight after Fierro Nunez before the oh, new. Yeah, hey, you're right. Well, I'm about they to go got fucking... uh, Gomez versus Cota. Jorge Cota, they still getting that man fights? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> is... Don't start, Jules. Stop it. <laughs> <laughs> Jules can't help himself, man. <laughs> Shout out to Leonard Sterling. Leonard says. You know if PBC cancels UK on the YouTube for Benavidez versus Lemieux, 200 plus Brits wait and supposed to start at 3 a.m. I don't think they're going to show the prelim stuff, bro. I think they're only going to show the co-main and the main. I don't know why Brit Brits are up waiting to watch Lemieux versus Benavidez anyways. Because Look, they're man, more hardcore guys... boxing fans than we are. Yeah, That's why. Well, That's right. That's right. They must not have like. They must not have a misses. They like if they're that up, up that late. 
<laughs> man, we hey, as boxing fans, we ain't got shit on them, man. They 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 are they are definitely hardcore. I'll give them that. And and if Mike Tyson says he's the Mexican monster, you know people are gonna listen to him. Hey, Jules, who's that hot chick <laughs> sitting next to Tom Brown now? Let me see where Tom Brown at. I see Samson Lukowicz. Where, where Tom Brown? Next camera well, angle. I see, see him. Oh, I see a blonde. I don't know. I look like Christy Swanson from Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Remember Christy Swanson? Yeah. Oh, yeah. The old heads. All my old heads in the building. Yeah, that's that's oh, she's sandwiched right. between uh, Samson and yeah. Tom. Mm-hmm. Jeez, look what you got tagged on Twitter. Look what you got tagged on Twitter. <laughs> Yo, check <laughs> Let me see. Hold on. <laughs> oh, 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 shit. Yo, I just saw that shit. <laughs> this shit got me cracking oh, up over here, bro. <laughs> that shit has me dying over here, man. Oh, Yo, shit. Just do this, just, man. You've been killing everybody the whole for the last two weeks on Twitter with that, though, Issa. <laughs> oh, shit. Wait a minute, what's those fucking goals? Why Andre Rosier his train? Mm. Yo, is it me or those two guys look like soprano characters? Jules, what you munching on, man? Ham and cheese. Ah. No pizza? No, no, I ain't feel like ordering that shit. That mo- Yo, look, I ordered that Papa John shit. I think that shit was like my stuffed crust shit, the one that the loaded crust with all the cheese. Yeah, bro, yeah. That shit was like damn near $40 for that shit. That's crazy. It like, yo, it's not even, it's it's that it wasn't nothing left over. And I'm like, bro, for, for, for spending $40 on one pizza, I could have got Chinese food, fam. It would have had time. least better. And you would have had better had food. Least- <laughs> Not that, but it would have lasted longer that I want to be able to go back and eat more. I ate, I inhaled that shit, and it was like, yo, that shit was like forty dollars, and I inhaled that shit. Now, like, what's nah, better, New York, York or, got, or Chicago got, deep dish? I never had Chicago, but being real with you, I heard from a lot of people that Chicago pizza is like uh, from a lot of people that Chicago pizza give New York pizza a run for its money. It wouldn't surprise me if New York fell off in terms of pizza because I don't think there's as many pizza parlors as there used to be. That man, that deep dish is good, dude. I gotta try that. I never had pizza from Chicago, yo. I would love to try that shit. I heard it's good though. You're a better man than me, Julius. Last time I had Papa John's, it gave me food poisoning. Oh, Sorry out here, that. look, in this, in this, in in where I'm at, it's nothing but chain restaurants. It's not real restaurants. If you want to eat pizza, it ain't a pizza parlor. You either gonna order Papa John's, Domino's, or Pizza Hut, because it ain't no like real for real pizza parlors. And really, it's kind of like that with everything. I can't believe this main event's not gonna come out to like nine o'clock, Jules. You ain't Listen. lying. Bro, it's 1034. I'm about to shut this motherfucking live down after the cigarette. <laughs> <laughs> motherfucking right. ass hurt, man. Shit. Hey, man, I feel it. Like you do you, man. Shit. But real shit, yo. Um, I wish they would, because that's what I miss about home, that it, it was restaurants, like real restaurants, not just like chain restaurants, like Papa John's and shit. They don't got real pizza parlors out here. See, I feel for you on that one, man. That sucks. Yeah, that fucking shit sucks, bro. I'd be pissed. <laughs> fucking shit sucks, like. And it, same- let me guess, you gotta drive hella far to like find one too, huh? Well, it's because it's not a metropolitan type area. It's mostly rural. It's it's residential more than anything, and the restaurants that are here. They ain't, like, I'll say they got a good Jamaican spot here. Obviously, it's not a chain restaurant. They got a good Jamaican spot and a good Peruvian spot. Nice. But the rest of what you see is all franchise shit. It's, most of it is franchise shit. They got Chicha Morata at the uh, Peruvian place? Nah, it's it, I forgot what the name of it is. It's like a name. But it's not a franchise place, you know what I mean? Like, no, it's no, not. No, Chicha Morata is a drink. It's that purple corn uh, Peruvian drink. It's really good. 
Well, I don't, I don't know nothing about the drink. I know they got a spot here that serves Peruvian food. So I guess if I ask for that, they should have it. Hey, Jules, when you go there, ask for Chicha Morada. They usually got an alcoholic version and a non-alcoholic version. They're both hella good. It's well, made you know, with like pineapple, you... purple corn, and a number of other things. But it's like a fruit juice drink. It's good, man. Well, I might have to look into that. Give me the alcoholic version. I Hell hope yeah. Lemulin's a clean left hook. Yo, that'll be the funniest shit ever. If he would, <laughs> that would be the funny, bro. If if he would to do that, bro, that shit would upset the whole universe. It's not, but okay. <clears throat> Benavides has this habit that he give he give up his wish mm -hmm. to fight in the inside. Sometimes he doesn't get the fight in the the proper distance, the best distance for for him. That is middle range. He likes sometimes he likes to crawl the guy and throw uppercuts and throw cooks. Maybe Lemieux can Lemieux. Yeah, but do you guys actually think that Lemieux can hurt him though? At sixty eight, you think he you think he packs a big enough punch to hurt Benavides? Yeah, honestly, I think, so. I think so. yeah. That'll be some shit, bro. Now y'all got me wanting to stay up for this shit. The Why not? We chilling. The My ass hurts sitting in that goddamn chair. I want to lay down and watch the fucking fight. <laughs> hey man, fuck him if you got him. The thing about Lemieux, he has power. He has real power. At 60, power. bro. At 60, not 68. Who he knocked out at 68 since he moved up? Who? Well, matter of fact, he did knock out. I think he knocked out yeah. the last guy for it. He did a couple rounds, yeah. So. <laughs> But that guy wasn't shit. Yeah, 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 that, yeah that's yeah. How good was he? <laughs> he not, not like, bro. I would love for him. Don't get me wrong. I love a good upset, and I would love for David Tennebe. No, I'm not. I'm not saying David Lemieux can knock this motherfucker out clean, but he can hurt him. Yeah, he can bro. if he land clean. But I don't. I don't think. I really don't think. Uh, Benavides is going to give Lemieux the chance to land clean. Bro, what, all right. What if it goes to distance? <laughs> oh, God. No, it's not going to go to distance. I mean, I don't I think mean, so not. either. I don't think so either. But what if it does? Like, what if you can't put away Lemieux? Mm. Bro, that's bad. That's not a good look. No. Man, I hate to be that asshole, but I don't. I can I can honestly see that happening. Like, I mean, people will tell me what a good fighter David is, but I really don't know what the hell they're looking at. All I, mean, I see I is a big guy, right? What makes him formidable at 168 is he's a big guy. That's that's what I see. It's not like, oh yeah, he's so great at setting up his punches or this otherworldly. Nah, you just big. That's what you have on everybody. That you big and you throw a lot. If Lemieux were to, bro, I'll fucking go to Canada. To be honest, if, to be honest, Lemieux, it's it's not a hard fight for Lemieux to win, really, style wise. All he needs is like to faint those lefts to the body a lot, and then come up top with a left hook, really. And I think he could really, really do David in. But he just, it's so simple. But David just is not. He's not well, David, smart enough to do that, David bro. David comes in not. at a slight crouch, hunkered over his lead foot, and he is right there for uppercut. He is right there. That's why I'm like, bro, this shit, he better wrap this he up. He shells up. I do. I do. don't punch with guys. Yes. He shells up. He shells up and backs up. He don't punch with guys. And takes yeah. the punishment. All right, how many rounds does it go, then? Mm. I think it was four rounds. Maybe five. If it goes past three, it'll go to 12. You, if it goes past three, it goes to 12? Yep. I, I say eight or nine. dramatic, bro. Eight or nine, bro. I say eight or nine. Bro, if you, yo, I swear to God, eight or nine rounds of Benavidez versus Lemieux. Does he at least, all right, does he have the haircut? <laughs> the the mall haircut? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he but does. That, he does. Let, let right. me ask you this. Do you consider David Lemieux durable at middleweight? Middleweight, yes. Yes. Yes? You think? Uh uh durable, all right. Durable 
to the B's and the C's, just not the A's. Billy because could knock him out, but he knocked know, out man. fucking Coceres at 68. But he could knock know, David out. Should I put something on David Lemieux or what? Just a little, little twenty something. What do you think? I mean, if it's, I mean, if the odds is high, yeah. But you gonna you're probably gonna lose it though, fam. Yeah, no, it's, it's plus two thousand. Like, like, look, uh, Leo, Leo, Billy could knock him out, right? And you see what he did to Curtis Stevens. And Curtis Stevens could punch, bro, but he cold slept him. See what he did to Gary Spike O'Sullivan. Yeah, but I don't think Billy Joe Saunders was really worried about knocking this motherfucker out because he was. But he probably wasn't worried about knocking Cole Service out, but he slept him. Yeah, because Cole Service has, has no power. Bro, Cole Service knocked down Berlanga. Berlanga? Who is Berlanga? <laughs> what the fuck is that? <laughs> I'm just, I'm just, if the question is okay, I know what you mean that David doesn't seem durable, but I'm saying that. To the C, to the to the B minuses, not the B pluses, to the B minuses and the C's and the D's. Yeah, he's durable. Like he ain't just you ain't just gonna sleep him. Yeah, for me it's it's this. David Lemieux makes his offense is different because you're not gonna get there and just punch this guy in the uh, like four, five, six combination punches because he might catch you with a hook. Yeah. So you're he not gonna, with you. He's going to punch with him. And that happened in the Stevenson's uh, Curtis Stevens fight. The Kurt, yeah, because that's how he and caught him with that short hook. Yeah. And the, and the, uh, the Spike O'Sullivan fight. Yo, y'all really got me looking for the upset. I, y'all hate y'all. <laughs> y'all really got me looking for the, like, yo, what if he pulls it off? Well, Doug, he's a Capricorn, right? Yep, I think so. He's he's, he's a, no, he's a Capricorn. David Lemieux and Gabe Rosado. Upset of the year, I call Bruh. it. I, I'm, I'm gonna say it right now. Bruh. Oh man, if, if Benavidez lost to, to to Lemieux, man, that would be the end of the world for him. Bro. Oh my God, I really hope we get an upset tonight. Every everybody would want to fight him after that. <laughs> Bro, everybody <laughs> gonna want a piece of him after that. Y'all was yeah, just giving the yellow shit for going the distance with a light heavyweight. This dude got slapped by a middleweight. <laughs> let, let, let me clear this. Let me get this clear. I will not be surprised if David Lemieux can can crack this guy, but knock him him out. I I don't know about that. I think hey. David Benavides is gonna win this fight. Whoever what what happened, whatever. But. If David Lemieux cracks this guy, even to the body, I will not be surprised because David David Benavides is not that good defensively, and he gives up his, his hate, his reach. That is why he has the haircut. He's on screen. He has the haircut. He's in his fight robe. Y'all should have say next the main event. Yeah. Oh yeah, no, he said. He said. Yeah, yeah, he said. He said. He said tonight I'm about to wake them up. Why does? Like, why does his hair look? <laughs> Why does his hair look like it's pasted or glued to his head? So that it doesn't flop around when he gets punched in the face. <laughs> <laughs> they probably put mad moose in that shit, yo. Looks like it won't move, man. He may use him as a doorstop. <laughs> bro, I don't know why he took this fight, bro. He could have got the good domestic money in Canada. I don't know why he took this fight, bro. Because he knows he can knock the fuck out of David Benavides, bro. That's why. Yep. But <laughs> no, but that shit. He's a Capricorn. He is. That's why I, that, that got it like, yo, you like, you crazy, yo. Like, why you took this fight, man? You should have fucking fought Steve Rose or somebody, yo. <laughs> Real talk, if it really is an upset tonight, Julius, oh. would you say that he's in the top ten? He would have to be, dog, if he knocks out David. Fierro just ate a good one, too, man. Yeah. Well, he oh, smacked yeah, he's the shit out of him with them with that one, too, fam. <laughs> yeah. Ooh. But he cracking, too, though. Yeah, they're going back and forth. It's been scrappy. I like this, but nah, Fierro got hit, man. 
Well, if David's number one, what would that put him if he actually beat him? Would it put him in eight or more towards a well, – Just an eliminated – wait, wait. We talking about divisional or WBC? No, I'm talking about divisional. Okay, if he was to knock out David, that would at least – I mean, like, as odd as that is, bro, he top five. Damn. If he knocked out David Benavidez, two-time yes. WBC super middleweight champion, it's just yeah, hypothetical. He, just he, definitely five, five. Would, he definitely would take his. If any of y'all know some know. black magic or some Wait, voodoo or some kind of spell, y'all could put on <laughs> this shit. <laughs> huh? Greatly appreciated. What were you guys saying about what top five was? If all right, Isan, if David Lemieux was the knockout David Benavidez, where would he be on your pound for pound list? Come on, bro. Come on. Come on. Like, where would he be? <laughs> Nowhere. What the fuck? You don't have no. Come on, bro. Come on. <laughs> he'd be number. he be number number eighty in my top ten. <laughs> Listen, that's a better win than Oscar Valdez. That's all I'm saying. It is, but I don't have Shakur on my list either. Bro, you a hater? Yeah. You a fucking hater, bro. <laughs> Come on. I, I think he was his Twitter. Maybe he was Twitter. Yes, he upset. I think. Uh, Crawford will lose his spot. Yeah, he would lose. Yeah, I would have to take Crawford off the list if that happens. Yeah. What? <laughs> Crawford hasn't even lost, but I will take it. I will. I have, yeah, I have. I, I would have to. I would no, have you're to. fucking stupid. <laughs> <laughs> Julius, you trolling now, man? <laughs> if he lose, if 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 David knocks out Benavidez, I would have to move Inui down three spots. <laughs> I'm because because take, I have to put David. Because I have take, to put David in there. He takes Usyk's spot. On my list. Easily, fucking Usyk. Who is he beat? <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, Fiero just ate one in the chin. <laughs> Dang! Every time he ducks and comes back up, he gets hit with something. Nunez loading up too much, though, man. Let him go. Just let him flow. Nunez loads up a lot. Shit. He could be hitting this guy a lot more if he just lets him flow. So, Isan, if, like, let's say David Benavidez gets knocked out by David Lemieux, right? Could David Lemieux knock out Canelo? Probably. Bro. I wouldn't need to see that to think it. Bro, I don't like Sugar Ray Robinson's chances against the prime David Lemieux. I'm going to say that. Bro, you're bugging out. Oh, I don't my like God. Against the prime David Lemieux. Cut it out. I'm being serious. I don't think Carlos Monzon goes 12 with David Lemieux. <laughs> Bro, oh, how do we get stopped? Go. Yeah, stop? look at his face. You see how Mugabe is doing? You see how Mugabe is doing? Bro, I can't even see the shit in the street face. I can't even see the shit in the street face. Hey, what was it that prevented Hagler and Monzone from fighting? I don't know. I think weren't they from di weren't they in different eras though? Different eras, I think. Kind of right? where you in the world? Sure. Handily, handily, handily. There was no one before Hagler, bro. Monzon. Yeah, because remember the guys. The guys that Monzon had the belt first. were they, they weren't they, Monzon didn't have when Hagler was trying to get a belt when he had to fight 50 fucking fights to get a title shot. Monzon was far removed from champion. There were like other guys with belts at that time. Yeah. Uh, I'm pretty sure he was like about like 10, probably like 10 years. My Marvin probably was coming up while uh, Monzon was champion, but that was like first 10, 15, 20 fights. Yeah. They were removed. They were uh who do you think uh, would have won that fight? Who do you think would have won that fight? Prime I don't Prime. bet against Hagler, bro. Yeah, it's hard. It's hard to. I don't, you can't bet like like being real. It's not. gotta be a great. It's gotta be like a great, great boxer and like a second like fight too. Like you, hey, you, know, there, you know, there would have been three fights. Yeah, yeah. There would have been three fights. Well, I was reading the thing for, on about Monzon the other day. Like he got popped for like a bunch of domestic violence and stuff, and he ended up in prison too. Yeah, yeah. He killed his he, wife, man. Yeah, he did. Yeah. yeah. He was killed on a weekend furlough when he was out of jail. He was in a car crash. That's car, what killed car accident. Him. Yeah, yeah, car accident. Yeah. Yeah. He was on a he was on a furlough. But but it said that he hit every woman he was with. But I do. Oh, an I animal. believe it. He was an animal. He do was an animal. Hagler. But I think Monson had the right style for Hagler. You think? Yeah. Because I don't know, Monson. Man. Monson wasn't the brawler. People think Monson was a uh, kind of a brawler, a pressure fighter. No, Monson was a really good boxer. 
he could fight on the fly really well argentina has a great legacy for fighters man yes, i gotta they say do. that they provide uh, they've provided some great boxers and some great opponents and great fights man it's like honest geez. to god like it's it don't get talked about enough from nicolino loche to monzon to motherfucking madonna to maravilla Juan uh, Rodan. And even the women, they got a, they've had a lot of good women. They still got a lot of good women fighters. The, the old generation and the ones coming through, they got some good ones, man. Argentina has a great legacy that don't get talked about enough. Hey, if you th if you didn't know that Monzon was a good boxer, check out his fight with Jose Napoliz. Trust me, it's a damn good chess match. Well, now that's a, a Johnny C in the uh, comments says the better question are what prevented Carlos Monzon and fighting Bob Foster when they were both undisputed and Marvin Hagler fighting Michael Spinks when both were undisputed. Well, Those well, Mike, would have been you know I mean, you can't look, look, look. There was no soup. There was no way to bridge the gap, bro. It was 160 and 175. It was a huge jump. Look at Bob Foster when he fought Joe Frazier. He, Joe Frazier literally broke that dude's leg when he knocked him out. Oh, yeah. dude, that was a fuck, man. But, yeah, I mean, it's just like Jules right. Like, you need I mean, that te bridge. Technically, Bob Foster was a cruiserweight in that fight by today's standards. By, he was. Uh, he was under 200. Yeah. He was like 200. He, if he, he was hovering at 200 or he was 200. I think he was at like he was his weight was in like the 180s and Frazier was like two in the 210. Well, I, I heard all he like gave him a fight just so he could get some money because they were yeah, friends. That, that. Yeah, it was boring as hell. If the main event ain't next, I'm shutting this live down. I'm just saying that now. It ain't, man. It ain't. Fuck. One more fight and then then the main event. Fuck. All right, man. But Don't I'm shut it shit. down, Jules. Come on, you can make it. Jules, go take a seat on the couch back. We can still see you. Go, 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 go yeah. sit on the couch. Right that shit, yo. Yeah, he'll fall he'll asleep. Lay down. <laughs> it's just a shame I'll miss your reaction when Lemieux knocks out Benavides. Yeah, I know. <laughs> exactly. I would, hate, I would hate to get. I would hate for that not to be on camera. You know what I mean? Oh, oh I know. Happens, the whole Canada would explode, B. The whole Canada. Hey, speaking of Canada, um, remember that boxer I told you about, Scotty the Bulldog Olsen? Mm -hmm. He came out with a book not too long ago. Mm. I'm surprised you don't remember him. He fought on Tuesday Night Fights a lot, man. Bro, I'm old, and I forget shit. He's on my uh, Facebook friends list. He's actually a cool dude. Mm. I know my man Ryan Rositsky from Canada got a gift against that Argentinian. Now they got to run it back. But he went back. I, I want him to fight Alan Babic, but he went back down to Cruiser, so that probably won't happen. Didn't Babic get destroyed lately? Um, you know what this shit is? His humanity starting to show, bro. They're like he's fun. We love him. I love watching him. But it's only a matter of time. And we saw that today. They're like, yeah, it's only a matter of time, bro. Like it was a great fight, and he showed, like he he need to start off doing. What he started doing later on, they're like jab though, don't just wing the shots, jab like pressure the guy, yeah, but yeah. jab and punch him in the dick, <laughs> punch him in the fucking dick. Is why all that well other shit he be doing, the ref ain't gonna see it. <laughs> punch that motherfucker right in the dick, b. <laughs> Julius, I think you would have loved fighting back in the day, man. Did you ever see that photo I posted of Henry Armstrong versus Brixy Zivic? Mm -mm. Bro, I wish you would have. That thing, it's so brutal. Like, they actually had to put a censorship on it because it's so brutal. Mm. Wow. Oh, I kid you not. Like, uh, all throughout the fight, Zivic was trying to fight clean up until he got clinched in the sixth. And the uh, referee told him that if they wanted to do a little bit of rough stuff, that it was all right with him. So he put, he, Poked him in the eye so many times that he actually had, uh, what do you call those uh, pockets of blood like that? A hematoma. Yeah, he had several hematomas all over his eyes. Bro. Oh, jeez. That's horrible. Fighting. Yep. But out and in, though. Good Lord. Yep. Salim Bobina is looking on fire. He just People talk yeah. about uh, guys like, for example, Floyd Mayweather. If, uh, able to compete in any era. Look, if you if you look at like 
Okay, Floyd Mayweather was a great boxer, but can you imagine? Ooh. Red is so her color, it really is. Yeah, there you go. Nice. Oh, yeah, oh, 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 I'd get in trouble <laughs> yeah. with that. <laughs> we all need a Ten slam them. that we understand. The family channel. Family channel. <laughs> all right. Yeah, too late for that, myself. Jules. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, guys. CPO. Can you imagine Floyd Mayweather fighting in the early early twenties? No, nope. with those no nope. with those gloves. No, nope. that uh, no nope. horse hair gloves. Nope. How many nope. fights imagine. do you have? Look, I used, honest to God, honest to God, I used to think that Floyd uh, that Floyd could fight in the Robinson era. I used to think that. But honest to God, the more I think about it, I'm like, nah. Too small. Imagine him having to fight Sandy Sadler or Willie Pep, man. It would, and, and the oh, other man. thing is, when we think about the fights that we want to see Floyd in, we tend to talk about welterweights when we all know that's his what fourth weight. Yeah. You know, that's not that's not even him at his best. So it's kind of like when I think, you know, because that was a conversation: Mayweather versus Leonard, Mayweather versus Robinson. That's not it's fair. Not. Those aren't fair. Those actually aren't fair fights when you really think about it. They're not. Those guys, just, those guys started at 147 and they were in their fucking 20s. But I'm going to also tell you this. May, the older I get, and, and this is probably one of the few things that I've ever gone back on, the more I think about it, Mayweather versus Duran at 135, Duran beat the shit out of him, bro. Yeah, thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank the more you. I think, and, and that's not a, like, I'm not trying to shit. I'm being real. Like, yo, if I really think about that fight, I'm like, nah, you wouldn't have kept Durant off you. You wouldn't have. He's a 15-round fighter, fam. You're a 12-round hey, fighter at the, at, the, at the best. Hey, Julius, have you ever seen yeah. Sugar Ray Robinson as an amateur? No, all I've seen is middleweight footage. And I remember I actually saw sparse welterweight footage, but I've never seen him as an amateur. They got videos all over YouTube, dude. I actually checked some of them out. Wow. There's no way. Like, even like, even though that's before he became a professional, he was so quick, man. Yo, but he, that's what I mean. And like, if you look at, if you look at the middleweight footage, just his dimensions, I'm like, yo, this dude is too big and too quick for Floyd. And he got a dog in him. Like, he's trying to knock you out. Man, you want to see Bruno look at his fights with him crazy. and uh, Jake LaMotta, dude. Man. Beat the shit out of Jake LaMotta, bro. bro yeah, but you know what? Jake, Jake got beat the crap out of, but you know what? He still stood in there. I mean, that that takes some doing to do that. But in, in a nutshell, in, in a nutshell, though, like the more I think about those fights, you can't – like I used to think that like maybe he could finesse those guys, but the more I think – I'm like, nah, you wouldn't have finessed. Not Leonard. No. Like I, I think he has a better chance with Leonard than he would have with Robinson, being honest. You have, if, he, if he was going to beat one of those guys, uh, better chance with Leonard. And that's not even saying that he wins, but better chance. But I'm like, them dudes was – like, Leonard was a real – a true welter. You know, like, he's a true welter. Floyd was never a true welter. He was a smaller guy that moved up. I don't you, know, though. I don't know, though. Do you really think he has the power to get the respect of Leonard? No, no. What know. I was, what I, I meant know. was, I've seen Leonard nope. throw seventeen punches in eleven seconds. Like, there's, like, I don't know how you can put those two together. Like, yeah. Leonard was something else. Bigger, yeah, stronger, fast, okay, faster, same level like you. Taller, longer. It's not just that he's fast. Like, he's he's longer and fast. And Leonard. Even though I feel like his back foot boxing ability gets heavy overrated, to be honest. He's better on like when he's close coming forward, to be honest. Him coming forward on Floyd would be hell. He, Floyd wouldn't be able to hit the dude in the range he'll be at. If we talking about a prime landing. Floyd, we got to talk 35 fights, 40 fights at those weights. I'm I mean. Floyd versus Costia. Yeah, like, like, yeah, because if we, you know, you, you know how the conversation is. You bring up the fighter in his prime, and I'm like, you know what, Floyd wasn't in his prime as a welterweight. So throw the Leonard and throw the 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 Robinson out. You really got to think about the guys at lightweight and the guys at super lightweight. That, that about, those would be. What about Floyd versus Duran at 135, man? Bro, I just said I, when I think about it, the way Duran I was. Like Duran versus Chavez, much you much would, you, better. You wouldn't be. Floyd wouldn't keep Duran out. No. 
No. He no. wouldn't keep him out. Like, no way, bro. You wouldn't keep him out and you wouldn't keep him off. Yeah, Ch- Chavez be, and Duran would be a great fight. I would have loved to have seen yeah, that. I think Duran would have beat him, but that would have been a far burner. I think I think Duran uh I think it goes like like Chavez versus every good boxer, but I think he just I think he he did a lot of what Chavez did, but better. The upper body movement and like the way he'd wrestle inside, but phew, that's a great fight. See, now a lot of people talk smack about Chavez Sr., but you know what? His record, like, oh, he fought cab drivers, blah, blah, blah. I mean, I he did his, co- country. Went, he did, went, though. No, he, he did. did. I went I went through his record, okay? I did. Yeah, because he I was fighting like 15 times a year for track. his first couple years. And the thing is, his I, 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 t- I took out all, like, the cab drivers and everything and tallied it up, and it was, it was right around – his legit record was right around 60 to 65. And like wins, and the rest of the wins were like you know, pretty. I'm, I'm just all, all I'm saying is that he fought guys that today he had no business fighting. Yeah, that <laughs> they wouldn't allow. They wouldn't even sanction those kinds of fucking fights, bro. Like no way. Right, right. Yeah, his record was a bit padded, but the thing is, people you know people talk trash about him, but he was still a great champion. He no, he was a lot of great fight, a lot of great champions. It took a yeah, lot like of don't get it twisted. Like a lot, like if you took that job, like it's it's to the point. If you took that Chavez and you brought him back here today to campaign at those same weights, bro, he'll kill some of these guys. Yeah, yeah, kill some of these guys, bro. I loved Chavez Senior. He was one of my great favorite fighters, man. I I loved watching him. You hear? Just, listen, you hear bro, me say that shit about even even Oscar fishnets and everything. Put him in today's welterweight division and tell me he don't beat ninety to ninety five percent of the division. Right, and that's why right. the only person that gets the only person that gets in trouble, I think, is Crawford. To be honest, that's really it. Think, think about it, like Oscar versus Thurman Garcia, Span, like really, sp- bro, like he. And, and I'm not an Oscar De La Hoya fan. I never have been. I've always hated him. But being real, you took that Oscar, you took that Tito Trinidad, you brought the old dog. It'll be a mess. It'll be a mess. They'll beat the shit out of like 95% of the division, bro. Yeah, the division be running scared of them fools, man. Hey, Julius, hey, did you see his new profile picture that he posted, Oscar De La Hoya? I see, I see he changed it, but I ain't paying no mind. The, honestly... If this was 15 years ago and you seen that photo, would you really have thought that was one of the best fighters who ever lived? No. Seriously, but though. Being honest, I didn't give him the credit that he deserved in his time because I always thought he was a, a, like a pretty little bitch. Like, you just a bitch. But Seriously? No, honest <laughs> to God, in his prime, in his prime, I fucking hate it. It was because he beat Chavez, though. That was why I hated him. Right. That was why hey, Chavez was my guy, and I never forgave him for that. But also, it's because I really thought, like, yeah, this dude is a bitch. And I like, I really didn't give him the credit. That I ain't, nah, this dude is a dog, fam. Like, say what you want. Yeah, he talk a little weird. He act a little weird. But that motherfucker is an animal, dog. Yeah, I felt the same way about Leonard and Hagler, man. I was still pissed off about that one, too. But Let me ask you this question. Do you think in the early days, I'm talking about the early 900, mm-hmm. durability and stamina were more important to even become a professional fighter? Yes. At that time. Yes, I believe that the fighters back then were better physical specimens, but not better technically. And their, their game was a game of attrition, of wearing the guy out, right? But they weren't necessarily better boxers. They were tougher, more durable boxers if we're going all the way back there. Now, what today's athletes have that I see is, yeah, they're very technical, but they're like modern cars almost. Damn. (laughs) Dude crying, walking in the back of the room crying because he lost. Wait, what? (laughs) Fierro, man. They just showed him on camera walking with his girl and I guess his brother or somebody. He's oh, like, I ain't gonna get mad at that. They really wanted to win. I ain't gonna get mad yeah. at that. But he's tough country. He's twelve years old. He's in high school, so <laughs> he looked like it. But I mean, I just I didn't expect him to be crying. Bro, M- M- Yanni Beck would punish Mungia. That shit is not even a question. He would fucking punish that dude. You know, put him in, put him in there with Chris Eubank. That'll be a fun fight. 
You wild to laugh. Bro, I would love every minute of that <laughs> shit. <laughs> yeah, you guys can't stand Chris Eubank, right? <laughs> what the fuck? Yo, dog, he's calling out Kel Brook out of retirement. Yeah, That's I know. Oh, I God. agree. It's, it's ridiculous. It's fucking ridiculous, bro. Like, you don't want to, you don't, like, really, you going to chase around an old welterweight that just retired. How you look? Yeah, it's like, leave dude alone, man. He, he did his thing. <laughs> Bro, I ain't about to take you for no motherfucking Gomez versus Jorge Cotta, bro. Why is Jorge Cotta still getting fights? <laughs> Just to tick you off, Jules. <laughs> it must be. It must be. It's fucking 11 o'clock. This guy, Chris Yuvan Jr., this guy, I I have never seen something like that. Me neither. No, no fucking chance. What's hey, wrong? Julius? I was wrong. I think David Lemieux would be number one because they said he's WBC number two. Mm. Is he really? That's what it said. Oh, there's David Lemieux. Number two WBC super middleweight contender. They got, they got him as the number two contender. Oh, shit. I told you he'd be number one, yo. But, but those... WBC rankings, they're always a joke. Listen, Every time I see a WBC ranking. Right. Listen. I see something off. How high on your ATG list would David Lemieux rank if he wins this fight? I I would put him right next before the <laughs> I'll put him next to Pacquiao. Probably. Oh damn! Because, I easily. Because, no, no, no. Okay, Duran beat uh, Sugar Ray Leonard, but David David Benavides. I think we're talking about something very different. Who's that guy who beat Tommy uh, Morrison, who was ten and out? What? You don't know about the the guy who took Tommy Morrison's title? He was ten and out. It was his first title fight. Oh, that was uh, who was that? That was uh, what the hell was his name? Um, yeah, he's an actor now. Uh, Michael Bent, that's the guy's yeah, yeah, that's yeah, Michael that's, Bent. yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, Michael yeah. Bent, yeah, I remember that. He would be up there with Michael Bent if he knocked out yeah. Benavides. Yo, how long did that fucking um, oh, this is from five hours ago. I was about to say, Julio G says Lemieux coming in the Jose seat with the Jose Cito bar. <laughs> 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 I mean, Mark Ramsey's a good trainer, but he ain't a fucking miracle worker. <laughs> he's no, he's honestly a great trainer, but he like, bro, this he David would need a. He has a good connection with Arthur. They work well together. They work really well with each other. They do, bro. The shit he be telling him, and then Arthur goes out there and does it. Oh my sheesh! Damn, I just I hope David lands a fucking crazy left hook, bro. But it's not gonna happen now. Don't he own that rival company? Uh, does he? I think he does. Or he does something with it, heavily sponsored or something. <laughs> Mr. T says that you been called out Crawford. He has no shame. No, we did it. No, we did it. Please tell me that's real. I think he's joking, but if it's not, man, that's that's an all lose. Oh my god. <laughs> no, I think I, he's. I, I think he's right of it. I think he did call him out. Now that I'm, yeah, he. I think he did. Oh my. Wait, who, uh, call, wait, who uh, called out who? You been called out Crawford. Called Crawford. You y'all lying. Yeah, y'all are fucking lying. <laughs> y'all lying. I think it was after he beat Sean Porter. I think, I, think, I think it was after he beat after he beat Porter. I think if I recall. I hope yeah. that's a joke, man. That dude is and this is round. why I need him to fight Yanni back. This is why. Like, bro, <laughs> somebody needs to do something with you, man. It would be the quickest wow. knockout ever, I swear to God. So I remember I remember something vaguely related. Do you remember Anthony Douglas? Antoine Douglas, Action Douglas? Yeah. The guy that got knocked out about, uh, by um by Chris Day. Yeah, I remember him. Or Sullivan. Oh, he Sullivan. Retired, yeah. He retired after that. I, I know that. Yeah, he retired young, bro. He, re he retired after. Damn. 
You got the shit beat out of him, yo. I like it. I mean, that, 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 that guy. Oh, damn. Mr. Cheese says that he did actually call him out. You are fucking kidding. Holy I want to see no, video I footage you. of that. I told you. I told you. I want to see. I want to see video footage of that, man. Dude, you he got deserves, to be so desperate. He deserves to be cracked on if he if he if he did that, man. I mean, damn. Imagine how bad he get cracked on if uh, fucking um, if he won. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. wow, the, the shit out of him, dude. There's no coming back from that. No, man. <laughs> But I mean, how's he? He's a freaking what? He's like a middleweight or junior middleweight, man. Yeah, how's he he's gonna... that super middleweight, bro. This or is what I like. Middle. This is why somebody yeah. need to get rid of that dude. Like he that's is disgraceful. What I, that's what I meant. But I was like, damn, man, he's called out a welterweight. But like, why are you looking at welterweights, bro? Like, what's wrong with you, bro? Like, <laughs> oh fuck, guys, it is true. It was in my uh, boxing scene reported on it back in March of this year. He says, oh, yeah, uh, uh, he, he goes, he's yeah. open to fighting Crawford. I'd love to. It would be an, it would be an awesome fight. <laughs> it's it's a a <laughs> he was saying that Crawford could come in at 160. <laughs> oh. Why do you oh, pick on Crawford? Why, why, why do you pick on people your own size? Like, I, I mean. Know. Fucking ass beat. That's yeah. why. Jules, I think that deserves a mention a mention in one of your videos as a, like, you know. You know, I didn't even know he did that. I'm ahead to talk about that. He calling yeah. out Brooke. He calling out Crawford. Like, bro, type of <laughs> shit are you on? That dude needs to be clown big time for that one, man. <laughs> Next thing you know, he's going to be calling out Connor Banner or something like that. Bro, they did talk about that. Yeah, they did. Damn, oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> he, he did, man. He's wilding, man. I swear. <laughs> yo, he, he calling on all the welterweights, yo. You right, Jules, Mr. I, Jules, Jules, I no sent you the link. I, it, Jules, I sent you the link in your DMs to the article. Bro, the oh, nerve of this Mr. fucking Mr. job, right, bro. Man. He had that one right. He, I agree. No shame on that, man. It's like, oh my god. Do we have any Brits in the house? Not right now. I was just gonna say, like. How do the Brits feel about Chris Eubank Jr.? Like, what do they? How do they look at this kid? I don't think they look at him as anything, bro. They're real honest about when the motherfucker ain't shit. They really you know, are. Now his dad was a you know a legend over there, but not oh hell yeah, them, but but not not him. I heard they talked a lot of shit about his dad when he was a uh, champion. Well, that's Actually, his dad was like super arrogant, but that was that's what made him so funny because he'd sit there and pose and talk hell oh, yeah. Bad. You know, the trippy yeah. thing is him and Nigel Benz to this day still can't be like in the same area together because they end up going at it. Bullshit. What? They've been on tour. They were on yeah, tour. Yeah, they, 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 they buried tour. the hatchets, country. They buried the hatchets because they didn't. Did really? They're cool. Yeah, they've been cool with each other yep. for like the longest okay, time. Okay, yeah. because the last time I saw them, they almost got into a fight with each other again and had to be separated. So. They buried. They buried the hatches. They did. They did. Yeah, they cool now. Yeah. Cool. Okay, I stand. Hey, I stand corrected, then, man. But shit, hey, the I'll other thing is, motherfucking Nigel live in Australia. I think most people don't realize that Nigel ain't even in the UK no more, bro. He been moved to Australia, and he's wow. a born again Christian. Real shit. He's a very good man. I think he's got like eight, ten kids, something crazy like that. Hey, man, fucking is good. Y'all, what, y'all, what, what is up with horror coated shorts, like? <laughs> Bro, that dude came in with swim trunks. <laughs> uh, Steel, City, swim Steel trunks. City says he's a Brit and that Eubank Jr. is truly embarrassing. Are you, Bro, you that, that, this Eubank. dude wore boxer shorts to a boxing match. If them ain't the highest and tightest, yo, look at them shits. <laughs> yeah. Bro. Bro. <laughs> Like, we ain't supposed to be hands able hands. to see your inner thigh, bro. Yeah, he look, he look like if he squat down anymore, they're going to break off of him, man. Yeah, Coda needs to get knocked out for that. I'm sorry. <laughs> Wait a minute, Jules. You ain't never seen a fight from the 1900s? They were wearing nah. fucking thongs, bro. Nah, matter of fact, those look like Charles Martin shorts that he wore to the fucking Joshua fight. That motherfucker wore swim trunks. Those is what, what what weight is this? What division is this? Junior? Junior middle? Yeah, I think so. This dude wearing lightweight trunks, bro. No. 
Shit's a Vasilo Machenko size. <laughs> Do you wear featherweight trunks? <laughs> Those two. Julius, I have a question. Go ahead. I, I would like your take. An explanation of we have four sanctioning bodies in boxing that recognize each other. Mm -hmm. Why we have four? Why? Because um I think Don King made the IBF, unless I'm mistaken. I gotta reread that shit, but I believe he had a hand in that. And and it's kind of obvious why you would want to make your own sanctioning body so that you can monopolize title fights. And that's what they're all really trying to do. It's not necessary or a necessity for there to be four. It actually isn't. It would be better if there were one, but that doesn't favor but that doesn't favor the networks and the different promoters that want to put their guys in a title fight. For them, it's more beneficial for there to be more titles in circulation. But that's why there are four. Do you okay, remember when... The, no, go ahead. I'm sorry. The WBO was a primarily uh, British title. Uh, it used to be, yeah. Well, it was more like the WBO was kind of like what the IBO is today. It wasn't always recognized by the other three. The first two, the WBA, which was the first, and the, well, sort of the first. The WBA, then the WBC, and the IBF, which came later. That was the third one that came out. The, they didn't always recognize the WBO. So you had guys fighting for the WBO title to kind of like not have to fight the other guys right, that have right. the major three. Hmm. It's like it's like Estelle Mosley. The perfect example is Estelle Mosley and her career. She's been at lightweight with Katie Taylor for about three to four years now. But the only belt that she's fought for is the IBO. She hasn't fought Katie, and she hasn't even fought the people that Katie fought. But, you know, you won't call yourself a champion or something, right? She fought for the IBO. That's what the WBO was. That's what it was. If you don't want to get in no shit, you can fight for the WBO. But you can't say that for everybody because Ray Mercer held the WBO. He held, and he fought. He fucking fought people. So, but that was how it was being utilized, more or less. Okay. And then at some point it changed, and now they recognize it, you know. It's one they of the major things. To that, seven, that's what it became official, like the others. Yeah. When did it become yeah, official? Man. 2007. Does anybody know? 2007? Yeah, man. 2007, yeah. Wasn't it during the undisputed fight of uh, Bernard Hopkins and De La Hoya? No, I mean, well, well, Bernard, he was already the undisputed champion going into that fight because uh, when he won that tournament, when he beat Felix Trinidad, he was crowned the undisputed champion. The WBO was around, but it, like like Jules was saying, it wasn't recognized as the other belt. Even though I yeah, had the WBO belt, it, it, you know, and, and he got all four, he was already undisputed. Yeah, and, like in, in, in Lennox's time, he didn't, in Lennox's time when he was undisputed, he didn't have it. But to be undisputed at that time, you didn't need it because it wasn't recognized. Right. But it was such so bullshit. So technically, man. there's been no heavyweight undisputed with the four titles, right? Not nope. in the four belt nope. era. Not yet. Not in the four belt era. Yep, not yet. That's why I want to see it so fucking bad. <laughs> well, it's mainly because of Wilder that... fucking everything up, right? Oh, yeah, mostly, yeah. Yeah, he's a, he's a big... Yeah, now they're giving him a statue, so go figure. So, Imagine if he did get the belt back. Oh, God. Don't say isn't that. He, please. Isn't he twerking on the statue? Right. <laughs> <I> mean, <laughs> he may as well be. I mean, God. oh shit! He's the only the only heavyweight champion in boxing history to exhibit female behavior. Man, what what an embarrassment! Nah, come on now. Oliver McCall cried during the boxing match because he's getting his ass. <laughs> yeah, but that was that was because of drugs, dude. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. Was... I, I think why the why the twerking tops that shit. Yeah, wait, with the combine that with Wilder saying he wanted to be pregnant at one point if you were if you recall. Oh shit. Oh my god. Oh yeah. I oh, about, yeah, between I remember, the twerking and saying he wanted to be pregnant, that's an embarrassment to the <laughs> whole history of boxing right there. Oh shit. You know, dead champions were rolling over in their graves when they heard him say that shit, man. Bro. Oh, oh. still not worse than Yusuf Mack, bro. Who? Don't you don't even want to know, bro? But if you know who Yusuf Mack is, because you, you don't you don't want to know. Seriously, you don't want to know, it. bro. Yeah, I, I, I'm, yeah. Let's just leave it there. Leave it there, bro. <laughs> <laughs> you, 
Don't Google that shit. <laughs> okay. I believe you. Country, do not Google that shit. I won't, man. I, I imagine it'll make you more, more outraged than, than Wilder. <laughs> I don't know if you're going to be outraged, but you're going to wish you didn't Google that shit. It's, oh, it's that kind of shit that I... It's that, that kind of shit, bro. What, what you see, you can't unsee it? That kind of shit. All right, I'm not. I won't look it up then, I promise. <laughs> Is me or the Sonny Edwards look, kind of look like a rat? <laughs> Shall I leave Sonny alone, man? <laughs> <laughs> Motherfuckers hate some Sonny Edwards. Nah, my fucker moved though, man. He's a, he he can move. Shit. This Cotter dude is wearing the, the skinny jean equivalent of boxing shorts, man. Jeez, bro, that, that dude wearing a speedo, bro. Okay, but Cotto Cotta looks off, but it's not the trunks. It's something about his face. How does he look? Reminds me of something like the from the seventies. He do. He look like he from a different time period. Like the dude. those gangster uh, movies. He looked like a Dick Tracy character. Yeah. Who does? Exactly. Carter. Oh, yeah. The trunks are cutting off the circulation. Hey, Johnny C, that's true, but while, um, Oscar's not a heavyweight, though. <laughs> he says, I still think Oscar posing on the on fi in fishnets still tops Wilder twerking. I, I, no, I mean, I, I mean, yeah, but we talking about uh, heavyweight disgraces. But yeah, that's pretty, pretty bad. Yes, yeah, it's it bad. Is. I, it might be even. It might be a tie. It might be a tie. If Roly <laughs> wins, if Roly <laughs> wins, he's pound for pound number A. Pound for pound <laughs> number A. If he does, I'm gonna cheer for Roly, man. <laughs> Something about that fight just makes me laugh. Oh. What the hell do you say if Roley actually wins? Do you say that he's awkward anymore? Can you say that he can't box anymore? I mean, no, I, I think saying. that would expose. Look, that listen, to, listen to the things that Roley said, which, as as odd as it might sound, he hit a lot of valid points. You know, since he got the lightweight, the power hasn't looked the same. He, it took him 12 rounds to take out Gamboa. He didn't take out Isaac Cruz. And we could talk about, yeah, he went to 40. and Well, who was that dude? Nobody. Nothing. His you, got, shit. you got another spammer in the chat. Yeah, you got a bot, man. That yeah, porn bot. Fucking bots. Yo, they love this channel. But for real, what what what, what would you say if Rolly actually pulled it off, though, Jules? I would, say that he, I would say that Javante got exposed. Yep. Well, somebody's getting exposed. That's what's going to happen. Kata getting, Kata getting fucking. Yo, he literally threw it. <laughs> yo, he threw him like that, yo. Yo, he threw that motherfucker <laughs> like the book bag. Come on, Graf. What the fuck? Like, bro, did you, you see think, how he threw him? Yeah. Do you think all the doofuses that have Gervonta on their pound for pound list will put Rolly on the pound for pound list? Probably. No, no, no you know they wouldn't. They, they wouldn't because they'd be too pissed off if if he won. <laughs> I think they would stop watching boxing if that. Honest to God, I think they would stop watching boxing because they're not going to know how to process that. Swear. Yo, wow. Roly got fucking bang, dude. You think that was about steroids? <laughs> he got yeah, man, he's <laughs> solid, bro. I'll he's give solid, him that. Bro. That guy's solid. He's solid, yeah. That'd be a massive upset. Javante B looks looks kind of fat too. I seen him a little bit. He looks kind of big. How do fighters usually do off a handbrake? That's a good question. Look, Roley ain't no boxer, but he's a decent sized lightweight. You gotta give he ain't little for the weight. So I mean no, he's, if, gonna, if, he's gonna quack his way to victory. <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> he, just, he just hit the ref in the face. Oh, you lying? Oh, Did I miss it? Oh, no fuck. way! He just hit the ref. I think he bite him. Oh shit! I think he's good though. I yeah. 
swinging too yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll be with a flush it. shot. Yeah, I'll be with a flush shot. But I... oh yeah, he caught him right in the chicken. <laughs> <laughs> That's all. He... Oh. Uh... <laughs> the ref got yeah. hit in the chin. Man. <laughs> He looks bad right now, too. <laughs> and the, even the audience is laughing and clapping and shit. Bro, that old motherfucker could take a punch. Yeah. He looked mad, though, dude. Seriously, he looked mad. What a channel. A ref will give him a talking to, but like, all right, motherfuckers, you ain't gonna be. Hey, motherfucker, you gonna punch me in my face, you motherfucker? <laughs> yeah, he just, he just crept him and threw him down like he was like a, a beanbag or something, man. They're showing the replay. Oh, yeah, that ref, the ref took one right to the jaw, dude. Bro, that right ref got It's a cast iron ref, B. The way he threw Coda, <laughs> he picked his ass up like a sack of laundry. Hell yeah, he did. He mad at him for wearing those shorts. Bro, Carter looked like he from the seventies. He really don't look like he from this this era. Maybe it's the hair. It is the it's the hair and them tight ass shorts. You know who he looked like? He looked like that dude that slapped the girl on the train. <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm talking about? They had the eight books. <laughs> he looked like that dude. Oh, shit. Bro, it felt like these dudes been fighting for eight fucking rounds. The audience is laughing at this shit. This is hilarious. Yeah, man, come on. They're giving us great material to make fun of, man. <laughs> is that? What, yo? what is this the co-main event? I oh, for God. Say, it's on me. I know, man. It's like, what the hell? This is one of the most pathetic co-main events in the history, man. They knew they would slog it out for the next 10. Dude, swinging all wild and shit. He trying to get that knockout, man. He trying to go home early. He don't get paid by the hour. Cobb is an awkward dude. He looks like he's doing really? Pilates poses and, and also boxing. Real yeah, shit. Man. You got him in the corner. Hit him in the damn body and quit smothering him. Shit. Man, if them shorts get any higher, they're going to have to stop the fight because his balls will be hanging out. <laughs> <laughs> I swear. They're cutting off my circulation. I'm serious. I'm getting lightheaded just from watching this. <laughs> Holy shit. Nah, though, he really should punch him in the dick. Tight ass shorts. No, he shouldn't, because if he does, they might they might explode and drop off of him. <laughs> <laughs> because they're so tight, man. <laughs> He'd be left dead in there with the jock strap, man. They'll have to, like, cancel the rest of the fight. Is Benavidez Puerto Rican? Venezuelan, I think. Or Ecuadorian, Ecuadorian. He's half okay. Mexican and Ecuadorian. Oh, there's David Benavidez. He looking ready. I mean, he looked ready. He looked hydrated, Frank and Vidas. The boogeyman. Ooh. Yo, I really hope David got some, just some, some. He got to hit him with, every, like, the biggest punch that a Canadian has ever thrown, B. With the spirit of Jerry Quarry. Jerry Quarry was from Canada. No, Chavalo was from Canada. Chavalo it's going to be an upset, I can't. Bro, Jerry, why is... Yo, they got the same haircut. 
I don't think Chavalo ever tasted the canvas once in his entire career. No, never did. Never George Chavalo? No. Uh -uh. Nope. Never did. That guy was a freaking statue. You could pound on him all day. He wasn't going down. Just like Vitaly Klitschko. Kind of wonder, which one do you think would win? What, in a fight? Yeah. Of the brothers. Vitaly Klitschko so versus Chavalo? Oh. Oh, 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 I thought you was talking about Klitschko versus Klitschko. Nah, man. Nah, we'll pick Vitaly. He had dog. Pick you know, Vitaly, I, yeah. I was thinking just the other day when I mentioned um, the fight between him and, um, oh, shit. The South African. Uh, what's his name? Oh, uh, uh, you're talking about Corey Saunders. Yeah, Corey Saunders. Now, I can't remember another fight where Vitaly Klitschko actually backed up from anybody but that fight. Yo, Corey was a bad. That's what I. You, we were talking about that. They're like, yeah, Vitaly got it back for Vlad, but it wasn't like, it wasn't like he beat the shit out of Corey. Like Corey was still, still giving him some work. Corey was a bad dude, man. Corey, Corey would be a Corey. unified champ today. He would oh, beat good. the fuck out of Fury. I really think he'd beat Fury. I think Larry Holmes would beat yo, Fury. He, yo, Polo was really mad at Eason. He said, right. I'm giving my opinion. Shut the fuck up, pussy. Nobody was talking to you. <laughs> he was sure, really sure. mad yeah. at you. That's not nice. What, what was that about? Like, why are you so mad, fam? I don't, take Polo, I don't take Polo serious because I know deep down... He, he and I both know his Twitter activity has not been the same since Sal was lost. <laughs> that motherfucker does not touch spaces no more. I think he, he was picking. He, he had was a, picking up. Bro, he had, a, he, he, had a, he had a he had a space at like fucking 5 a.m. one day. I don't know why the fuck I was up. He had a space at like 5 a.m. one day with him and like three people talking about some random shit. About about Canelo, was, bro. bro. Yeah, probably, bro. Yeah, they were. No, they were. I hopped in. This motherfucker kicked me out like in one minute when he saw me. Why though, bro? He, Canelo man fans, bro. I don't know, bro. I mean, I haven't even talked a shit about Canelo. Like, of course, I talked a little bit of shit to troll. You know, I have to. But like, besides that, like, I've been defending Canelo, saying like, nah, he ain't. He just lost to a bigger, better fighter. That's really it. I mean, that's it ain't, it ain't nothing more than that. But I mean, Polo been acting like a female with this shit. That's why yeah, I keep talking shit to him. Uh, he motherfuckers is mad on Twitter. Why were they mad about now? Bro, he was, nah, so, um, he was Polo so mad, mad that he to make a Polo was see. mad that Esau won all that fucking money <laughs> fucking the Bevo. That's literally why he mad. Niggas wow. mad get my bread, bro. They mad him get my bread. Hey, Esau. How are you going to hate on a man for winning? You know, winning a bet, man. That's just, you can't do that, man. Shit, he actually <laughs> took some of mine. I ain't mad at him. Shit. Polo <laughs> got chill, man. Congratulations, no, man. you ain't That's mad, awesome. but you just give the occasional F you, Esau. <laughs> yeah, but Esau's still my man. He's still my man. You see? <laughs> Polo real man. Not his fault. He knew who the better fighter was that night. Oh, shit. Win oh, some, you lose yeah, some. You got, you got hurt against Dumiesky. What the fuck is Wait, what's the big deal about, like, how, why are you getting mad at me over that shit? Cause Zerto don't man Zerto don't beat no motherfucking better beef, bro. You go ahead, come forward, Zerto, and do your Zerto like you wilding. This ain't fucking Dominic Bosell. We what, talking what, about, bro? Look what look what Polo just said. <laughs> look what he did. That don't even make no damn sense, bro. You sad as fuck when Loma lost and Crawford left top rank. Shut the fuck up. Well, he's mean. Bro, he's Who's mad, that? man. What the hell does that have to do with anything? I have that? no idea. D do Polo on Twitter, bro. Really? He mad at really? Esau, man. Wow. Polo's, Polo's cool. He just gets in his feelings over the red flag fighters. He tripping, man. <laughs> he hey, Suwab just, just, in Suwab just chat, entered man. the chat. He just entered the chat. Was good, Suwab. It's a lot. So while Chris Eubank Yo. Jr. Chris Eubank Jr. What do the Brits think about Chris Eubank Jr.? Like, is he a disgraceful? Because here in America, we kind of look at him as a disgrace for calling out Brooke, for calling out Crawford. Do y'all look at him the same way over there? He's a fucking clown. Nobody likes him. He's a fucking retard. He, brother, Kel Brook, he's a fucking champion. 
Have you ever been a uh, champion except the WBO, which doesn't count? Not so, you, the, exactly the IBO. That's the only IBO, belt sorry. you ever held. The IBO. Yeah, that doesn't count for shit. You need to hold a proper one of the four uh, main uh, main titles. First of all, how's everyone doing? I hope you guys are doing well. Just what finish up, up from a party, going home. Yeah, good, hope you guys man. are good. I know you guys are here. Uh, man, he first of all, I'd like to say about the Boatsy fight. Oh, my God. And the other one, I forgot. Savage. Babbage the Savage. That was a good fight. That was a good fucking fight, man. Well, that was it a really fucking was. good fight, man. That but amazing you see, fight. you see, Sawab, that he going to get caught one day, bro. He is going to get caught one day. <laughs> he, he's reckless. He, he needs to learn from this. He's, like, he's coming. He got caught in the first round. But good on him. He has, he has, he's tough. I don't know about his chin, but he's tough. Well, he's I mean, look, guy. I guess I guess we can say that because he weathered the shot for what it's worth, he did take the shot and it did hurt him, but he weathered it. So I guess that means he got a chin, don't it? Yeah. That he survived, that um, he rolled it out and um, made it. Craig Richards and Boatsy, they have fucking chins as well, man. They, uh, they've they been landing on each other. That was a good Yeah, bro, but fight. I'm going to be real with you, bro. Boatsy don't beat Bebo, bro. I'm just gonna say uh, right now. hundred percent, hundred percent. From that, from, him. from that fight, of course, uh, you can clearly see that he, he needs to work on more. It's probably the inactivity. Um, hopefully, he works on it. And um, yeah, all well, the best to him. But I don't think he's ready for Bebo. I swear, he's I meant think to be, he, I think he needs to Ramirez fight. next door. He should fight if he can't get Callum Smith. He he do, he don't need to fight B Wall next. That's all I'm gonna say. If he fight B Wall next, he's gonna get his first loss. Oh, I would love to see the yard fight. I would love to see the yard fight. Me too. Yard fight. We know that ain't gonna happen. We know Devil, that ain't gonna happen. Devil's yard gonna be the new executioner. Yard is waiting for for the winner of Better B versus Smith because he supposed to fight them at the end of the year. Yeah, <laughs> but wait, that fight hasn't even happened yet. You don't know what's gonna happen. In from that uh, uh, Batavia yeah. fight and uh, and uh, who's that man? I'm so bad with names. Batavia and they're gonna and fight. Smith. Smith. And Smith, and Joe Smith Jr. They're gonna go. They're gonna have a fight, and that's gonna be a brutal killer fight. You don't know if anybody's gonna get injured. So you're looking technically, you're looking to fight in 2023. So no, you have wasted a whole fucking year doing what? Listening to your uh, promoter. You should have took the offer from Eddie Hand. Oh, at least have a fight. Oh, at least have a fight. Stay busy. I'm not telling you to go fight uh, Boatsy. Fair enough. You, you're the so-called number one. Fair enough. He go listen. I don't even. I don't even know. Like, like I don't know why he doing that dumb shit. Like the most you could do is tell Frank, "I, right, Frank, I don't want a lot of money. We ain't gotta give me a ton of money. Matter. Ain't nobody gonna say that. But he need a fight, bro. If you going from the Linden Arthur rematch. Straight into that, you gonna get beat. You gonna get wow. beat. Hundred percent. Hey, Swab, what'd you think Yo. about the Yanni Beck fight, man? Who's fight? Yanni Beck. I'm not. To be honest, I'm not even watching the fight because I've been busy with my friends after work. You need to chill a bit. I've had enough of boxing for today, so I'm looking. You missed a good. You missed a good short ass second round knockout. I like Rokeo. I like Rokeo. I like Rokeo. Like he he. Oh, Yanni Beck knocked him out. Knocked him the fuck like sleep out, bro. Not he even said, like said, like said, referee said, out. He knocked them sleep out like uppercut yeah. him and went to sleep. Wow, well, what well, I'm telling is good that <laughs> Andrade ducked him. Then isn't it? <laughs> Andrade was smoked as well. Ain't nobody, ain't nobody gonna want to fight that dude, bro. Ain't nobody gonna want to fight that dude. Back. Is he the it's next the Kazakh GGG? Like that, except he is Southpaw. Yeah. What about but the biggest fight of the year? That's what I'm uh, waiting for. The Coca Vidas and the other one, David David that's Lomachenko. What, bro, that's what you're waiting for. That's what, literally because they convinced me that David is gonna upset Benavides. Is that on pay per view? Because it, it has to be on pay per view. That's the greatest fight of the century, bigger than Muhammad Ali and I mean and Fraser. Bro, I'm what? just waiting. I'm just waiting to see if 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 what they say it is for real and David Lemieux. I just want to see if David could hurt him. I don't. I don't actually think he stands a chance. I think he gonna get knocked the fuck out. But fuck it. That's why was expected. Yo. Hey, can I respectfully ask you a question? Yeah, man. Go ahead. Who do you think would win, Christy Bank Jr. or Terence Crawford? 
Oh, uh, mate, uh, he, you, come on, bro. You know Chris, he's the best, man. He's the best when it comes to it, man. You know what I mean? He can, he can come down to all of it to one thing and smoke Lomachenko. He can go up and be uh, uh, Usyk at heavyweight. I mean, just like Errol Spence. <laughs> AJ, I was going to say, um, at 135, oh, yeah, at yeah. One, listen, at 135, I think Chris Eubank could beat Lomachenko at 135. Yeah. Oh, all the way down to flyweight. <laughs> It's a watch, watch. Tell, go ahead, go ahead. Tell, tell Julius what that dude hey, was saying. Oh, Julius, man, this is this. <laughs> uh, so man, I was on Lady Chad's uh, thing panel one, thing one day, and this clown called Ben Israel or something, man. You know what I mean? He comes on. He's saying Errol Spence is the pound for pound number one. Yeah, what? and he can go. Yeah, yeah. He's above. I think uh, all of them. He's the pound for pound number one. He can go and fight. Uh, in any in any way, and he'll beat anyone. He can go up to 168, beat Canelo. He, he can go to 175, beat Bebo. He, he can go to heavyweight and dominate Usyk and Joshua and Tyson Fury. But I do have to be a troll. <laughs> he must have been a troll. <laughs> no, 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 Jules. That's what I thought. But no, he's a proper hardcore Errol Spence Donny. Like literally, man down, lay down, bum licking ass all the time. Bro, that dude, that dude has the weirdest fucking fans, yo. I swear, he has the weirdest fucking fans. What does how that do... Errol Spence look like? <laughs> what? <laughs> what are you saying? <laughs> if he could go all the way up to heavyweight, what the fuck does a fat Errol Spence oh. look like? <laughs> <laughs> right now, he looks at the hospital, bro. Davis. <laughs> 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 Shit, bro, like, go ahead, let Arrow go up to heavyweight, bro. <laughs> By all means. <laughs> By all means, let him go up to heavyweight, bro. Why not? I tried Fuck to be you. sensible with him. I was like, listen, the, the last fight he had, my man landed two punches on him and he he almost went out. So imagine what Bud Crawford is going to do to him. And you're talking about going up to heavyweight. Fuck that! We go go up to it's going take it's it's going to take for it's it's going to take for Arrow to get knocked out for these cats to wake up. Like yo, they really on some real just weird shit when it come to Arrow. They're still gonna make excuses for him. Uh he was drugged. The referee hey, was BC. bad. Uh, the gloves had the metals in it. Uh, you know what I mean? It wasn't bad. It was a gin there. He did voodoo a voodoo on him. He's gonna talk bare nonsense like that. What as long as they long as they have to watch him get knocked out, that's all. Because I want to see his spirit break when he do. Uh, mate, I, I don't know what's gonna break their spirit. Nothing can break their spirit. Motherfuckers will stop watching boxing be behind that shit. Fucking hell. Motherfuckers will literally stop watching boxing and go to the UFC. Start watching MMA fights. That's just ridiculous. Like, how can these brothers be thinking like that, man? Come on, man. Like how delusional do you have to be? Like, what's so good about Errol Spence that you guys love him so much? Swap, swap, swap. Right. swap. They, they want that truth. I've always been saying it. Man. They want that truth. <laughs> Mate, I don't die enough. From why I had that nonsense I had that day, uh, like, bro, just, there's no point even talking to them. There's no point if you're that deluded to say that like, he can go all, all the way up to heavyweight and dominate everyone at heavyweight. Come on, bro. While it's true he is unified champion, did they forget about how he got there? Oh shit, Chris Colbert talking shit to Jamal Heron. Oh. He said you need to stick to your military service instead of boxing. Wow. Chris Colbert prick. ain't got room to say shit wow. to nobody. Barry, also, he, just, also, he just got the shit beat out of him and he talking yeah. like that. That's also, crazy. Also, also, he came out of hiding just to say that shit. That's crazy. Wow. As embarrassed as he made himself look, and he want to talk shit to somebody else? If I got to compare losses, bro, Chris got the shit beat out of him. Jamal lost a boxing match. You yeah. got the shit beat out of you. He quit. He quit N -n near the end of the fight. He gave up. And he, and he got embarrassed. I love it how these people can talk so much shit, but they can't back it up. Well, damn, they already making posters. <laughs> they already make it. Nah, 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 it's some other shit. It's some other shit. It ain't going to happen, though. It ain't going to happen. I'll when talk is the about next it biggest fight happening, Roley versus Tank? That's, yo, dog, I've been waiting for that fight all my life. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yo, is that shit tonight or next week? Yo, hey, what, what's, what's, what's wrong with Leonard Ellaby? What's wrong Yo, with what him? what is that fight? Next week. What's wrong with this? It's next week, fam. Man, I'm strongly pulling for Roly. I don't hate tanks, but I'm pulling for Roly. <laughs> what's wrong? What's wrong with Lennon LAB? You want to know what's wrong with Leonard? He's lived his whole life off the bullshit that comes out of his mouth. It's literally what's got him paid. And now he's about to lose it all if his fighters lose. Well, the, biggest thing, the biggest thing wrong with Leonard LAB is he's actually, actually an employee, but thinks he's bigger than what he is. He Honestly, yeah, he act off. like Mayweather Promotions is his fucking company or some shit. Yeah, <laughs> and he's not. And dude's an employee. Don't shit to any head. Like, come on, bro. Like, know your spot, bro. Know your spot. You're an employee. You're a worker. You get wages. He doesn't, he doesn't though. That's the problem. Yeah. <laughs> I, think, <laughs> I think I saw it over on Twitter where like, Roger Bay was saying, like, when he don't do shit. I mean, I see, oh, that's just like... Yeah, they, they, I got no, tagged to that shit earlier today that, that Roger himself said, yo, he don't do shit. <laughs> All right, good. Top rank posted the hot... That highlight ain't good enough, man. It's the camera too close. Well, you got to include that in your, in your, in your intros, man. Yeah, so I'm, I'm going to gonna do it, but it's that you can't actually see when he land the uppercut. Do this. From seeing that Boatsy fight, um, how, how do you think you would, you would do with the yard... Uh, honestly, I would not count Yard out of that fight. Honestly, because my thing with Buwazi is he's fundamentally sound, but he don't jab enough. It's too many quiet moments where you can let yeah. the other guy start throwing. I didn't like, like, I love the fight. The fight was great. But in the fight, Buwazi, there was moments where it's too quiet, bro. Like, you need to jab at least, a jab and faint. But you can't just stand there in the guard and not do nothing. It was a lot of moments like that. I'm like, bro. <laughs> these scorecards were a bit close. The scorecards were very close. I didn't see it that way. I'd probably give it 8-4, eight, eight, maybe. That's um, funny. 8-4, I think Boatsy. Listen, no way Craig Richard did not get schooled by any way. He was there, bro. He was there, but just um, Boatsy did. I just think a little bit more always just to win the round. That's how I had it. That's literally, it was always, it's a competitive round, but Buwazi did a little more. That was literally how I had it every round that I gave him. Uh, Richards didn't get blasted out. He didn't get out class. It wasn't like that. It's more no. like Buwazi's doing just enough to nick the round, and he nicked more of them, so he won the fight. But as far as everybody else, he needs work. He needs work. Filipino Eagle says they aren't fans of Spence because of the boxing. Them fans like him because of how Spence like Yellow Beezy. That's what I've been saying. <laughs> <laughs> what I've been saying. That shit is so you disturbing know? to me, though. Every single Spence fan has a copy of Brokeback Mountain on their show. So I'm, I'm pretty sure, bro. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> they kind of get their back broke on the mountain. <laughs> <laughs> they, they want Errol to take them on a high horse. They want Errol to break their back on a mountain. <laughs> Fucking weirdos. And not one of them even admit to how weird his last fight was, but claim that he can actually go out and beat parents. Like okay, I found a good highlight. I found a good highlight in the stories. Good, very good, very good. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. I got a good fight for Chris Eubank. He should fight Yanni back then. He should go for a fight. I Yanni would back. love every oh, minute that. of that fight. Be a slaughter. I would love to see that fight. I, 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 need, to, I need to watch every the replay. Of that fight. You think Yanni Beck would break his jaw? Yes. Eubank has survived this long. By being very creative. Remember, one of his biggest wins is a very past it Arthur Abraham. Um, he couldn't get past a, a war torn George Groves. You know, like he got you got like the George Groves you fought wasn't in his prime. Yeah, he was a champion, but he was approaching the end. He retired the fight after that. Uh, uh Abney Yildrum, that's one of his best wins, and Raynald Quinlan. It was two and fights to get a thing with the front. In Wembley Stadium. Mm-hmm. Stop both times. Yeah. 
I don't know what's who the fuck have you been so far for you to be acting. You bank ain't beat shit, bro. Like he literally has not really like he, you really ain't and, and you calling out welterweights, bro. You disgraceful. Like you have no shame. Well, that's it. That, that, we don't one thing we don't do in England is pick on you know what I mean people under you. You need to pick on the people your way, your height. Forget yeah, about we call him Kel Brook. He done his thing. He, he became a world champion. He fought uh, top, I think, top fighters. And he fought a prom Gennady Golovkin. He ain't lose his pen. You fought the top Errol Spence at a time. So, what are you complaining about? You mm-hmm. make it great. The real thing is, he's in a bind because Sky, neither Sky Sports or Wasserman they don't have middleweights for him to fight. They they don't have shit unless he want to fight German guys from Wasserman. <laughs> they, don't, they don't have nobody for him to fight. I mean, his last two opponents before from before the uh, with the Leon, I've, I've I've never heard of those guys. I I don't know who the hell they were. Flairless Blair Corn Cobbs got cooked so bad he threw weak. Yeah, I remember that he was hitting the ref. After, I remember that. Is that guy officially retired now? I mean, we ain't. I mean, I don't think he ain't announced it, but I wouldn't be surprised. The way he got, the way he got the shit beat out of him. Yeah, that was was an embarrassing loss, man. He got fucked up, man. This agency situation is pissing me off, man. Come on, why are you pushing him back so far, man? What are you doing? They worry the about fucking the fight already. You know why they doing that shit, bro? They doing that shit because of the fucking money, bro. Because they know that's the most money is out there, so they were have a way to do it out there. That's what the fuck it is. Well, and it's gonna be hot as hell in Saudi at that time. Even going front, that shit pissing me off too. Because I'm like, yo, dog, that rematch was. I mean, that first fight was mad long ago, fam. Like we don't see mad shit since then. What in like December or something? What was it? December? Or was it November? November, December, around that. Yeah, September, long time September, ago. September, September, October, around there. Bro, yeah, bro, almost coming up to a year, and you've been out the ring, and you're expecting us, you're expecting us to think that you're gonna be Usyk because you had a year out the ring again. The shit is, if if AJ been out the ring that long, Usyk been out the ring that long. That's the shit. Yep. Yeah. And he has, bro, are you mentally, picking, are he you went through AJ a lot of shit. Is? Are you picking AJ or what? I'm, I'm picking decided, AJ. I'm, I haven't, listen, I haven't decided yet because I haven't seen nothing from AJ that shows me what are you going to do differently. Bro, he just been posting a bunch of vacation photos. I'm like, bro, <laughs> you're not even training right now? Bro, he should have been. He sleeps shit in boxing, he's been, right? He's been in camp, bro. He's been in camp. I'm always going to back my boy no matter what. But. Come on, AJ, man. You have it's to see that fight good, earlier. Man. It's not looking good, bro. It's not looking I'm good. Being, look, I'm being real. I ain't, I ain't riding the fence. I'm like, I don't see what the fuck you doing differently. I'm not hearing shit. I'm not seeing shit. I, I would he, like he, for him to win because I think... The day. I, would the like, day, though, like, I would yeah. like for him to win because if there's a cash cow, then the division stays healthy. Usyk, God bless him, is not no cash cow. Like, nah, you're not. I love how he box. Don't get me wrong, but it is better for the division if AJ wins. It's better for the division. It's better for the sport. Hundred percent. But even if AJ loses again, we know there's still much, much bigger fights out there, and people are so love yeah, to I see. Mean, it. Like if we, if we when do we don't draw versus, AJ versus like do AJ versus like Joyce, Daniel Dubois, even AJ versus and look, like AJ uh, is always gonna have big wagon. fights. If White he wins, if he loses, yeah. Like look, even if he loses, he could fight White again. Yeah, I guarantee you it sells out. I guarantee it. Hundred percent. They will sell out when we say that. Yeah, gotta, listen, look, I'm going to stop this shit. Stop bringing up Wilder. He's not coming back. Fucking Wilder. So, 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 I'm sick of hearing oh, about that shit. <laughs> He's gone. He's finished. Nerve, man. He's up in the clouds. He's bro. in the Himalayas. I kind of disagree with you, though, Julius, because I do think that a lot of sponsors would get behind a Ukrainian right now because of the war. All right. I'm going to put it another way. Can he sell? Can No, no, no. Can he sell to a degree because he's heavyweight champion or he would be, you know, I, like I'm not saying that he can't sell shit. He's not a cash cow fam. He's not. 
first of all, fuck every single person who's like, you know what I mean, who thinks they really care about Ukraine. They don't. They care about fucking Amber Heard and the other, you know what I mean, the boyfriend who's that guy, that pirate. They care more about that shit. They care about the Kardashian breaking up with Kanye. Don't give me that shit, man. Nobody cares. I'm sorry. Nobody cares about the Ukraine. So if people really cared, they would have cared about people in Palestine, people in Iran, people in Yemen, people in, in other countries. You know what I mean? They will, bro, fuck this politics shit, man. You know what I mean, nobody cares. Nobody gives a shit. When it, when, when it come, shit comes to shovel, people want to see entertainment. And I don't think they're going to be entertained with music. No disrespect. He's a great fighter, but he's not going to be a draw. I'm going to say this. Um... You got to think about it. Let's just say, I'm going to give you a scenario, bro. Let's just say, okay, Usyk wins the rematch. However he wins it, he wins it. Fury doesn't come back. What's Usyk's big fight? Where is he a draw? It's mandatory. That's it. Whoever, whoever gets the fight, who's he going to fight? Eddie, Eddie can do fights for him. Like, let's just say, you know, that, okay, he wins the fight. Fury doesn't come back. Undisputed. You know, it doesn't go down because that would be the biggest fight of Usyk's career, the Fury fight. That's the only way he could be in, in, in like a big stadium fight. You know what I mean? So Damn, Fury they... don't. Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. I, I Fury don't come back. Um, Eddie will probably give him UK fights, but what you think that they're like they're like forty thousand, fifty thousand? Nah, fam. At best, you know, ten thousand. The old arena. That's it. The old tier arena, maybe. Yeah. And, and, and it would have to be against the other thing is it, it'll depend on who we fighting. You know what? They interviewing yeah. dude now that he won the uh, beat Coda or whatever, man. Like, get him out of the yeah, ring. Sure. I think it's this guy. If Husek is uh, fights on Matro, his options on fighting Joshua again. But before that, he will have to fight Okolia. Yeah. yeah. That would be the. They would build that up. They would build that up, but that would take time, though. Like I was saying, if Usyk wins again, and I think Joshua loses, Joshua is still gonna have big fights. Like he's gonna go with White. He can fight uh, Joe Joyce. Uh, he can fight any anyone. Name the I think the big uh, the big heavyweight. Well, he can Joshua fight any of them. Fight. Any Joshua fight afterwards would still be the biggest fight at the weight if Fury stays retired. I'm talking about Joshua versus Yoka. Joshua versus White too, Joshua versus Hergovic. All those fights are still money fights. Or if Joshua only because of Anthony Joshua, no, nobody else. Only because I, of AJ. I think, I think AJ and Wilder would still be a big fight. Yeah, but Wilder's bro. Wilder's not coming back. I'm trying to tell you that Showtime and the Zone would not come to no deal. That's why I'm like, why are we talk? Why, like, I'm, in other words, I'm like the situation. That no, prevented the, the, the situation that prevented Undisputed, it hasn't changed. Showtime going to want it on their network, and the zone going to want it on their network. And because of that, it ain't going to be no fight. Is Wild assigned to the Showtime or that's the, the stupid TV. part. So what? That's the stupid part. No. Yeah. You don't have no idea. You exactly. So why the fuck do you have to be with them? Listen, the only way I would know that, okay, Wild is coming out to have big fights. If he signs with top rank or if he signs with uh, Pink Matthew, fuck it, don't even sign with them. Have one fight deals. Be a free agent the way you, you claimed you are. But you ain't. The way you claimed you are, you're not with the PBC. So the only way I would see, I would respect you if you come out, uh, all like, okay, fair enough. Now he's on his shit. He left the PBC. He's going to have good fights. Fair enough. Have one, two, anyone. Pick fights, attack him, whoever. Doesn't matter. Gatekeepers. I don't think you would survive with um, being not, honest. Del Boy, it's not this. You, the you thing. won't survive with Del Boy. I look at what's out there, right? That okay, well, you could probably get a little bit of money with Ruiz, but that's if Ruiz beats Ortiz. I don't even know if Ruiz beats Ortiz. Being real, like bro, Ruiz ain't even been fighting like that. The last time we seen him, he got knocked down by fucking Ariola, and that was way back last year. So let's say. Let's say Ruiz, he fight Ortiz, and he don't win. What, Wilder going to come back and fight who? Probably, um, I think Leo said Hellenius. All right, cool. You come back and fight Hellenius, but what you going to do after that? Are you going to fight Usyk, or are you going to sit on a baby belt? 
<laughs> Baby like, wipes, Bill. Uh, yes. I, I Wilder just, is out of the picture for the time being. Until we, we see something good, he's out of the picture. So let's not, please, let's not mention Wilder anymore. I, I don't think he's coming back. I hope he comes back. It's going to be good fights. There's very good fights out there for him. If he's man enough, if he found his balls after getting beat twice by Tyson Fury, I hope he comes back. But till then, I don't think he's coming back. So we should just forget about who are Right now, AJ, Usyk, Tyson Fury, uh, you know, Dillian White, uh, Joe Joyce, uh, Joseph Parker, big fights out there. The heavyweight you know division. Well, Nobody cares about Wilder. Yeah. yeah. I'll never forgive Wilder. It's because of him that I have to say that Fury two times beat a domi- dominant champion and held all, all the belts. Well, great. You picked the cherry in the, in the first fight. And then again, he could have went into all this. We could have had an undisputed champion already. And Anthony Joshua wouldn't have lost if it wasn't for fucking Dillian, Wild, uh, Dillian White. <laughs> Deontay Wilder. <laughs> See, I'm so fucking. You know what I mean? I'm so annoyed. I'm, I'm getting mixed up with names. Deontay Wilder. We didn't get undisputed like almost three times because of him. Three well, fucking so, times. Well, Swab, I think I, people. I count at least five or six. I think people are way too hard on AJ because didn't he become a champion at 16 fights? Yeah. Yep, he did. Yeah, I yeah. mean, you know how how many heavyweight champions really do that? Yeah. They're always, they're always going to hate on the person who's always sitting at the top. Everybody's going to, is trying to climb up there and trying to get uh, Anthony Joshua. And who got him? First time, Fluke, wherever Ruiz got him. Second time, beat him convincingly. I box him, wherever masterclass, wherever you call it. Fair enough. Second time, he lost with Usyk. Hopefully this time, Anthony Joshua beats Usyk. I don't see it personally. I don't. I don't, I'm always going to back my boy, Anthony Joshua, but I don't see it. From what I'm seeing from Anthony, the way the fight being delayed, he's going for the biggest money again. Nah, man, come on, bro. How much money do you need? I don't know, but I'm always going to back AJ, too, because I see how far he's come in such a short time, what he's accomplished. He's the only throwback fighter. Only th- He's been fighting the best after the thing, best after the best after the best. Seven of the top ten, bro. How many other? I'm gonna say this. I'm gonna say this. That win over Pulev is aging real nice. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah right? <laughs> literally. Well, it is, is though. He, he drew with a uh, big for, uh, forest. Whatever that guy's name is. He, with the Jerry Forrest dude, Jerry and Pulev Forrest. just he and Pulev Pulev just beat the shit out. Yeah, he beat the shit out that dude. B like. And I mean, do people know just how hard these guys up at heavyweight actually get hit? I don't know how I could stand somebody who's over 220 pounds punching me in the face, man. Like, yeah. uh, realistically. No, nah, I'm cool. <laughs> I'm cool. I'm just saying. Bro. I'd rather sit on my couch and watch and critique. <laughs> what if Roly really does the unthinkable, yo? It'll be a miracle. That's the boxing gods telling us something. Yeah, I think he has that retard power. You know, retard power. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he has that retard power. Y'all know that? Y'all remember that cartoon that uh, Nettie Memory Ed was like super fucking strong, but he was a dumbass? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's, <laughs> like, that's, that's Roly, more or less. Well, we have to put him up there with Jackson? Uh. Yeah, 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 yeah. Damn. For sure. What are we waiting for? I want to see the greatest fire of history. We're waiting for Coca Vides. What's happening? <laughs> Bro, this shit is taking so long. He's still warming up. Like, yeah. Something's really <laughs> off, man. I'm just saying. Man, talking of Coke. Yo, man, dog. Is, yo, you playing well? Well, you playing? No. You feel <laughs> no. we about to see we you you feel that we about to see something spectacular. Look, man, can I just give you my logic? Okay. Who of the top ten has Benavidez actually beaten? In today's top ten, nobody. The only real top ten when he has is Anthony Durrell. And how well is that fight aging? <sighs> like cheese. People- yeah, exactly. So he lost the title on the scale. He popped a, a drug test. And I already told you about how I feel about any any athlete I actually hear about on Coke. 
I feel the same way every time because I know. Like, mm. you just never know. He could be great today, but tomorrow he could be absolute shit. And, you know, everybody's saying he looks great. You know, he, you know, he made the weight and shit, but I just don't know. Like, everybody Look, says he's he, I, I want you to be right, bro. I want you to be right. You know how incredible I would feel tomorrow morning if he got that and I scored it? I wonder if there's a rematch clause in the contract. Is there a rematch clause in the contract? I'll tell y'all what, though. David Lemieux don't make it out of Arizona alive if he win this fight. He don't. He, 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 oh, I'm shit. I'm so, I'm so annoyed about why do we, you know what I mean, like the real boxing fans get to see that uh, upsets. Why can't these clowns see a little bit of upsets? I don't care whatever. I know they're fighting D-level, E-level fighters, but I want to see one one or two upsets so that at least we could feel a little bit happy. I mean, well, I AJ would, lost, I, I was destroyed. I would love, I, I, would, lost, I was destroyed. Yeah, I mean, bro, I would I, love for him to lose this fight, bro. Just being real with you. And, and he doesn't see you know what's sad about Benavidez? He could be so much better than this. You know, and I'm not saying I'm right, but it's just my logic, the way that I'm looking at this. Like, yeah, I see what you're saying. He's a big, super middleweight, but, like, what has he really done to be, like, so high up there? I don't I, see it. I don't, all I see, look, what I see, this is what I see in David Benavidez, all right? Uh, he's a good specimen. He's a good physical specimen. He's big for the weight. He's got a little bit of speed mid-range to inside. He can put them together fast there, mid-range to inside. That's that's a good quality because a lot of the long guys, they actually can't do that. Usually they're no good on the inside. So that's a – what the fuck is that? I got to kill a bug. Somebody sing a song. I'll be back. Yeah, I'm talking about Coca Vida. I, I'm just upset because I, I I can see he has some, some talent there. He, well, I don't know what's holding him back to, to do his best. I mean, himself. why did he lose? Why did he? Why? Himself? Why did he lose the, the, your the, belt the PBC, twice? The, the PBC, also himself. <laughs> wow, let me ask That's you something, what's holding sir. me back. Why do these boxes let these fucking clowns, the PBC, that we can see the BBC are shit. They ain't shit. They're just the cancer of boxing. Simple. We can see it. Why the fuck can't you see it? When you know you can make... 10, should have seen, listen, y'all should have seen the there. size of whatever the fuck that was. That oh. shit, I don't know what the fuck that shit was. Jules, I keep telling you to get bug assault, man. But it, no, I, it was in the house country. Yeah, but you still could have whipped out a bug assault and blasted that thing. It is, is the FBI sending shit into your house, bro. They're all probably. They're all, probably. They're all that robots. Shit, whatever they're that robots. shit was, that was some big old shit. Big old shit, but I got it out. Um, what I was gonna say is, oh, what I say about David, David actually has good qualities for a fighter and and a super middleweight. The thing is, my logic is, um, you're a good specimen, but you haven't been pushed in a very very long time. Like Ronald Gavril pushed him, like he did. It, that was a close fight, the first one. Um, and when you do that for too long, the second you face a little bit of resistance. You crash. The second that somebody could take the shots and they're not going away. Like uh, we were talking about it earlier that David is in a position where he's not used to a guy returning fire or being able to. And that's why I would pick b to beat him. Now, because do you remember? Now, do you remember when I asked you that question? Do you think that there would be a chance in hell of David Millamue knocking out Canelo Alvarez? Hey, you remember dude, me asking what? that? Let me let me show you a beautiful. I don't view. think there's any chance in hell of him knocking out Canelo Alvarez. Judas, okay. let me show you a beautiful but, view. Quickly, quickly, on. good. It's fucking morning over there, bro. Look, look at the beautiful London streets. Wow, oh, it's nice. morning over there, bro. Yeah, that's yeah bro. That's beautiful, dude. This, this, this is crazy, yo. Yeah, look at that. Is that a yachty? Is that a yachty? Oh, yeah, I told you, yeah, Swab. Nice. I told you, Swab sell coke, bro. Man, I'm, I'm a business businessman. That's for you, Swab. Business businessman. Get your money, Swab. Get that shit. That's what we here to do, yo. 
Don't crash, please. So, uh, yeah, so we be careful. Empty, empty road, bro. Yeah, Come yo, on, bro. Don't, empty fucking road. Get in, don't fucking die on my live, bro. Empty road, bro. I ain't gonna no be way. able to monetize the video. I know. <laughs> empty roads. I I said, boys. I, I, yeah, I'm not by y'all, but I, I want Colbert to get slapped now. I'm kind of pissed off he said that. Yeah, he. he, he <laughs> you, you, you don't disrespect uh, somebody who served like that. Real shit, yo. That's, that's don't classic. worry, though. He's going to get the shit. Oh. He gonna get the shit beat out of him, yo. Okay, let let me say this. I understand that not all these fighters, all these fighters we see in in the TV and our laptop, or in our phones, are OT, ATG material. Mm -hmm. They're not gonna have the mindset that they're gonna. They can beat anyone. Mm -hmm. Everyone that is put in front of them. Okay. So when these fighters go to be pro, they know at some point that, okay, I have to be the right people around me because I have to be well match make, make it <laughs> to be in the, to, to, to be someone, mm -hmm. to get paid. So David Benavides is from, he's from Mexico, right? Well, he no, he's Mexican... no, he he was born in America. He was born in America. He has Mexican descent. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. For example, it doesn't have at that time. He didn't have too much chance to sign with, for example, Matron, because Matron yeah. at that time didn't have a really a track in America. That's true. Um, the PVC for all the shit we can give to the PVC, he got. Caleb plan ten million dollars for a kind of uh, yeah. fight. Yeah, but in my opinion, what these guys don't realize because they're still young and they're still active, you're gonna need that respect to be fighting the fights because when you retire, you're gonna go back and see what you did, and the money probably is gonna not gonna be enough. Oh no, the money will be gone, bro. And the, the money, money will be gone. And, and no, I'm not talking about just the money, because the money is gonna, it's gonna leave eventually. You're gonna have to make your career of someone else, something else. But the respect. Look at Floyd Mayweather. He didn't have the respect that he thought he deserved. I'm been acting a little bit funny the last, I don't know, the last five years. It's some, it, it looks like it's something off. If you want to have a real that level of exposure around the world, the whole world, you the you body's back. Go, you need to go back. You need to go back and look the people in the eyes and, and say, dude, I had the fights. I Not only the money, I had the fights that I supposed to have. Well, let's um, let's let, let's say this. Let's say this. These guys are in a bubble to where they don't realize that. And the people that are intended to have their best interests in mind, they don't. No. The managers, you know, if, if your promoter, because the promoter oftentimes has wants things one way and a fighter and his team, you know, they might want things another way. That's usually how it is. Uh, and or, or sometimes that's how it happens. But the managers, what I believe is going on with the managers at the PBC is they're working in tandem with the promoter when they're really supposed to be working for the fighter. That's what I see. That's that's the difference. You, you, you know what I mean? That the reason the manager is working on behalf of the of, of the fighter is because the promoter is working on behalf of the network. That's who he has in mind. That's who they have in mind, the network. What's best for the network? Whereas the manager is supposed to have the fighter in mind and what I see with them is nah they work with the promoter dog even if there's a lot of money on another side of the street they won't let them get it that's where it's unethical that okay you all about the money you all about the money well there's been moments where they offer these guys more money to go somewhere else and they don't go David Benavidez is one of them top rank gave him a six-figure incentive to come over to their side of things they uh, PBC pulled him back. That was four years ago. He's gonna leave. 
They don't Benavidez, see it. Benavidez has got a big reach advantage. Big reach advantage. Yeah. By the way, Caleb sends his regards. Uh, Los Chos P. Los Chingasos. Bro, if David pulls, if David, bro, they got, yo, bro, bro, Benavidez is a little more than six feet tall, bro. I'm just, I'm just saying that dude is six foot two if he ain't six foot three. The me's only five nine. That's what they said. Dude is tiny. Yeah. Thing. Hey, Jules, that super chat's hilarious. <laughs> Tank versus Roly is like a fight with two special needs. It's not like a fight with two special needs because no, they are. Two. He said between two special needs kids. They are special needs kids. That's what Man. He said. You mean like Jimmy versus Timmy? <laughs> <laughs> that was, hey, that was an epic fight, man. <laughs> Cripple fight. Yeah, uh, Lemieux's only 33, but he's shop-worn, bro. That dude has about 46 fights, 46, 47 total. I do has a lot of fights, man. I got a good spot for Leonard Ellaby to jump off from so when the tank loses. I hope they're not going <laughs> to sing the fucking national anthem. Please don't do that. Oh, my God. If tank loses, that's going to be the most hilarious thing in the world. Not, and, and that, again, it's not, I'm not hating on tank, but that would just be so funny. <laughs> that would be great. That would be epic. He's seriously have to go into hiding after that. Like, no, no, real talk. Like, real shit. No, no, no. He can jump up from here. Do they show them. He can jump up from here. <laughs> Let me see. Hold on. Wait, wait, wait. You know, I didn't. Well, I they need to clean that. the fucking windows, man. These windows cleaners. Hey, they, 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 he can jump off from here. Hold on. Let me nice. get that. Let me get that comment off. Let me get that comment off. He can jump off from here. They need to clean the windows. They're so bad. It's been raining as always. I gotta Beautiful. say, I didn't realize wow. that uh, Joel Casamayor was training Roly, man. He, he is. Yeah. That is beautiful, is. Swab. Casamayor is training Roly. I'm bored of it. See every fucking day. He was that's David's that's got like them T Rex arms. You told my David Lemieux. He do got them T Rex arms. Hey Jules, he was in an interview with him, with him and, and his father. They were interviewing him. He was. He was so you like his chances, but do you like his chances? Uh, I I still question his chances, but with 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 Casamayor there, he might. Who knows? He might have something up his sleeve. You never know. Stop holding up the hey. WBC title. He's not a champion. Jeez. Hey, listen, I, I'm going to watch this fight in my dream. Oh, can't wait for you know the best best fight in the era ever ever to happen. I'm going to watch it in my dreams nicely. So I'm going to sleep. Need to wash up, grab some ass, and go and sleep. Have you a good one, everyone. Thank you, Thank you for having me on. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone. See you later. Right. Let's see if, if if we can't see a major upset. The should whole arena. Him? Should we wake him up if it's a first round KO? Bro. <laughs> In all seriousness, I'm not expecting an upset. I'd be ha I'd laugh my ass off if it, but I'm not expecting one. Right, right. Frank and Vitas is 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 a good can kicker. If he can't kick nothing, he kick can. <laughs> Frankenstein, that's funny. He does look like Frankenstein too, doesn't he? Yeah. <laughs> that big ass head, <laughs> bro. He's he draw though. He's he's getting bigger because he's what drawing. Are those, what the heck are those red flags, man? Uh, Bandera Roja. Yeah. I was just gonna say they are what they look like. Oh shit! Jamel just came back with a vengeance, y'all. Of course, go over anyway. Hey, Christopher, been a minute. The boxing world thought you were all but gone. I guess when you were running those last three to four rounds of your last fight, you were practicing on your footwork. By the way, by military service, I'll be big down to win that world title. Mm. Shit. Good, man. I, yeah, Colbert needs to just shut his mouth, man. He, he ain't got Real no shit. real talk about He needs to shut the fuck up. All right, let's see. Round one. Here you go. David's coming in hot. Lemieux yeah, is coming in coming hot. right at him. Damn, he is a lot bigger than, than Lemieux, huh? Yeah. Lemieux I, got stuck in that awkward place to where you can't make middleweight anymore, but you're oh. too small for super middleweight. Lemieux is no good on the back foot, so if he's not coming forward, he's in trouble. How 
How's David on the back foot, though? David's all right. Not great, but all right. Better than Lemieux. Ooh, oh, whoa. Oh, oh. oh. He get he go for it. I'd give him that. Bro, I might believe a, I might believe a theory. <laughs> I believe. <laughs> it's I want to. That was I'm not joking. Some somebody on Twitter is picking Lemieux by a third round knockout. Motherfucker say any old <laughs> You're shit. You're fucking kidding. <laughs> somebody trolling. I'll tell you what, Lemieux's got guts. He's stepping into them shots. Hit the body. Hit the body real nice. What he can't do is wait. He can't wait. If you're gonna if you're gonna pull this off, you need to initiate the exchanges. Well, so far that's what he's been doing. Benavidez has been backing up. Oh, bro, he got Benavidez on the ropes. Yeah. He, Am he I is. seeing this? It's only the first round. Come on now. We gotta calm down. We we gotta yeah, stop. Yeah, let's kill. Let's kill. We gotta stop playing. <laughs> Motherfucker, go hear this and think we bunch of rubes in here. Like, <laughs> not a bad round for David Lemieux, though. To be honest, yeah, not a bad I'll, round for David Lemieux. I'll give it to him. You know, I mean, he, if he, he keeps he, landing, he, I'll give it to him. He put the work in. But he's no good on the back foot, so the second he takes a step back, he's in trouble. But Benavides is just letting him off the hook. Bro, I swear to God, if your theory comes true, bro. Oh! No, to stop Whoa! Me. What? Oh, shit. Yep, it might he was be in trouble. He was in trouble. Yep. I'm behind. Yeah, me too. No, they didn't stop it. That's interesting. They did not stop it. Oh, oh, Jesus oh, oh. Christ! Oh, 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 oh. It's oh. Device, oh, oh, shit. Dude. This ain't gonna last, this ain't last much longer. This he ain't gonna last didn't longer. stop it. The hell? Nope. Nope. Yeah, he's done. <laughs> this ain't gonna last much longer. <laughs> <laughs> he's done. Look at that. He, he didn't even know. Had him walk back to his corner. They had to help him. Bro, he. <laughs> Damn, he's being competitive up until that point, somewhat. Yeah. All right, so I think, I think the fantasy's over. That killed the yeah, dream. Yeah, he came out Damn. good for a couple of, for about half a minute. And then... <laughs> I think it's about there. They're about to pour ice water down his shorts, man. <laughs> need to put some I anvils mean, in his gloves. I wanted to believe, Will, and you fucking sold me a dream. <laughs> fucking asshole. Hey, Joel's a bot's back, man. I got it. But tell me oh. I'm wrong, dude. Look at the, you know, see. Yeah. Yeah, he's done. He got knocked out the ring. Literally? What, just now? Oh, shit. Yeah, yeah. Yep. He, he went through the ropes. Oh, shit. I'm behind. He up. He beat the count. Oh, my, Joel. I don't feel bad. Let me see. This ain't gonna last. Damn! Oh! Sat him on his back pocket, bro. Just he, he can't take much more of this, bro. Oh! So, like I said, the dude's a shop one guy, bro. He doesn't have the sharpness for this assignment. You need to be sharp for for this assignment. It's not that it can't be done, but he just he don't have the ingredients for it. I right. have to agree with you. Damn, damn the heat. He's still scrapping, man. He's trying to make a fight of it. Credit to him. Yeah. But it's like, I mean, credit to him. Don't get me wrong. But you need to be quick for, for what he oh. would need to do. You need to be quick to sneak it up. You need to be fast enough to sneak the left hook in there. And David knows he doesn't have to rush. He knows that he's got this guy right where he wants him. But I wish yeah. he would just end it. Yeah, I want to make sure he puts him in the hospital. Oh. oh, there he goes. He's getting hit. Fight him off, David. Come on, David. Oh, my God. He's actually hitting him. I'm confused. Which David are we rooting for? <laughs> <laughs> the boxer. 
bro. Is that blood all on the side of his shit? Yes, there is. Oh, bro, he looks terrible. Jeez. And he's still fighting back. Come on, corner yeah, man, pull him out. This, bro, man, they need to think about pulling him out, man. Come on. He's actually help out the like son of a bro. bitch. Come on, David, just fucking take him out. Dude. Bro, his face looked like he just fought five. Oh, oh, oh. I think he broke his nose, man. Probably broke his jaw, too. Mm -hmm. He's yeah. fighting back ferociously, though. He's Ooh, fighting. Man. Oh. Yeah, he's actually going after Frankenstein. Yeah, Bro, the, hard on, the hard on Lemieux, man. That's crazy. They're probably going to stop him in the corner. They have to. There's like no, they, gotta no. pull, they need to pull him out, bro. Yeah, man, yeah get out, he's man. done. He's getting he's smashed. Oh, mm. shit. It's only been two rounds. Well, shit, I was kind of right. I said if it goes after three, it'll go to 12. But Bro, if he gets hit like that for 12 rounds, they're going to have to scrape him out the ring with a spatula. No, no, you're right. You're right. But it's definitely gotten to three. I wouldn't be shocked if they stopped it, too. Bro, look, it looked like he hit him with a chair. Oh my God, jeez! He might retire in his corner, bro. That's too much. Maybe they send him out for one more, but yeah, he might retire in his corner. Oh shit! Look at the replay, though. He is actually hitting David pretty good. Yeah, this is like okay. a Rocky movie, bro. Mm-hmm. I want to believe Will, but I want to believe, but hey, Jules, the bot, the bot's back again. Why does this bot oh, always? No. YouTube got to do better, man. He fucking bots. He just don't got the re like. He's just he don't have it for this for this assignment. He he really don't have it. Doesn't seem to have any sponsors either. If he actually had just a little bit more power, I think he would be a lot better. No, nah, it's not the power; it's speed. He, I, I believe, the speed would be the difference. But he doesn't have it. He's not sharp. David Jesus, don't David need a don't third need. round against Goliath. <laughs> Funny, Tim. <laughs> bro, he fucking landed hard through the ropes, man. Yes, he did. Holy shit. Hey, I got I'll hand it to Lemieux, man. He's still in there, man. I mean, like, wow. He's trying. He's trying. And he's trying. That's, That's the nice. other thing, too. He's trying. Cleaned him up. Ooh, good jab, Lemieux. Elbow the son of a bitch. Punch me the dick. Got him on the ropes again. Bro, the him. way his head is snapping back from that shit, whenever he do get hit, it's disturbing. Yeah. Yeah. He's, staying out on, yeah. he's staying outside too much. Oh. Why does David always let him get out of harm's way? Could he just, like, finish it right there? Smother him. Smother him, David. Wow. He's got Frank Mother him, David. Rope. Yep. Good job. Good job, bro. You did good. All right, Harvey. Uh, what do you what do you want him to get? Brain damage? They That's good it? that they stopped it. Yep, they stopped it. Yeah. Whoa. Shit. Oh, yeah, he got caught on that one. I'm behind. I'm behind. Oh, don't worry. Yeah, I see. I see it. I see it. Lemieux looks like he's been in there for 10 rounds. He did. Yeah, that was that. I, I, bro, I, man, I, like, I agree with the Brunch Brothers. He says, why was this sanctioned? It shouldn't have been. Can right. you please put Sawab's favorite word on the screen for Chris the Clown Colbert? I got you yep. right now. I should have asked him to say it. It's funny. It's funny when he says it. There it is. <laughs> hey, there's Michael put, Carbajal. Why don't you put Chris Colbert in the background? In all David fairness, to, but everybody. you know, you know what's irritating, guys. That they're gonna use the highlights from this fight, and and we know there's context, bro. I said it in the buildup. Lemieux is a shot fighter. 
He shot, bro. He shot and shop worn. Yeah, he's 33, yeah. but he has over 40 something fights. He's been stopped more than once. Rubio stopped him. Golovkin stopped him. He I mean, to take a punch, he could barely take a shot. To each their own, but how come David couldn't just get him out of there? He was hitting him practically at will sometimes. <laughs> I mean, my God. Like, what is it? I mean, yeah, I know he just lost by stoppage, but if that ref wouldn't have stopped, he would have kept going. Yeah, he would have got yep. fucking brain damage. He would have mm -hmm. he, he had to get cold slip from, from this stuff. Hey, I just yeah. came back from Mr. T. Shout out, Mr. T. Chris Kobach is a fucking cock. He's a cock. <laughs> <laughs> I'm out. Peace. <laughs> Yeah, Frank and Vitez, boy, man, he can't claim that much credit for beating David Lemieux, man. Come no, I mean, on. of course not, bro. It's just, come on. Look, look, it's not an accident that Avni was initially David's mandatory. The same way it's not an accident that David was David's mandatory. It's like, bro, I see, like, how is it possible? Like, how is how you keep ending up in these kind of fights, bro? This is officially a record padding, man. We're witnessing a record padding. That's Absolutely. what the fuck it is. Yeah. I would – Lemieux should retire, honestly. I mean, I think he should. Be too. That'd be, be too. That'd no, be. honestly, the reason I think he should is because you can't make middleweight healthy anymore, but you're not built to be no super middleweight, bro. You Like, really, you're not. It could be worse depending on the guy. If Morrell probably would have cold slept him. Oh, damn. He hit him with, like, 10 – Unanswered uppercuts. That's insane. All right, gentlemen. I'm about to motherfucking go to sleep. Hey, man. Have it's, a good night. Have I've been night, here everybody. farting. Y'all didn't know I was farting the whole time. I was farting. <laughs> 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 so, 